Happy, happy Monday. We are back for Depp versus Herd Day 12. Emily, did you turn your lights on? Not yet, apparently. I was just looking in the background. I'm like, why is it so boring? For those of you on the replay crew, replay crew, you know that we love you. There will be timestamps down below as we go to the best of our ability so you can check in and see those things. There are some key takeaways from last week. And yes, I will be doing a weekly roundup. Uh, that will be on the Emily Show, my podcast every Wednesday. And I will be doing that for you. I love the weekly roundup. But I figure since it's Monday and we are kicking off on week three of this, week four of this trial, I should just check in and let you know what I'm looking for today and some of my key takeaways from last week. What I'm looking for today is, is this the day that Depp's attorneys say we have no further witnesses? Are we at the end of Johnny Depp's case? I think we are. I think we might get there today. And if we do get there today, is Amber Heard's legal team's first witness, Amber Heard, who is just walking into court now. So as I'm talking over this, I'm going to share um, the screen, Amber Heard is just walking into court today um, in a very interesting suit, giving a huge hug to uh, Umbridge, her attorney. So I'm going to put closed captioning on over there. And we will just keep that up with no sound until the sound comes on in the courtroom and then we'll hear it. So with that, um, I'm looking for does Depp's legal team rest today? We have no further witnesses. Are they done with their case? If they are done with their case, then we will hear most likely her team will make a motion to dismiss based on not enough evidence being proved at trial. That will likely not happen. It will not be um, it will not be granted, but they will make that motion. It's pretty pro forma and standard. And then the question will be, does Heard's legal team call her to the stand? First, Depp's team does not need to call her in this defamation trial because the ACLU confirmed that she not only made those statements, wrote those statements, and that those statements were intended to be about him. I don't know how she's going to back away from that in this defamation per se case, because if she says, I didn't write it about him, she looks like a liar. And the thing that this case is about is, do you believe, or does the jury believe, not us, but we are we are playing along at home. We're, we're in the play at home version of civil trials now, because that's the world we live in, and I love it. But do we believe that Amber Heard's telling the truth? Do we believe she was a victim or do we believe that she has lied? And that is the core of this case. And you got these little moments last week where we saw she lied. She had initially blamed the grumpy on the bed on the dogs. Well, she told the chauffeur that it was a practical joke gone wrong. So we're now seeing these moments where Depp's team can capitalize on them in closing arguments and say, hey, you've seen her lie about this. She's also lying about that because that is their um, that is their purpose. That is their purpose a hundred percent. So I'm going to answer some questions. I'm going to say good morning, y'all. I've got my coffee. I'm coming in from middle Tennessee. Let me know where you're coming in from. I will try my best to say hello to everybody. We've already got over 7,000 law nerds in here. So we're going to be talking about it. Small potato. I know you don't care what she's wearing. Courtroom style is a big deal in civil trials like this because it has to do with jury perception, how the lawyers think things are going. And we know over the weekend now, the jury's not going to know this, but we know that over the weekend, she fired her PR team, her crisis PR team. She is not happy with the way the court of public opinion is going. The court of public opinion has been going very strongly in favor of Johnny Depp. I'm not surprised. His side went first. His story went first. The witnesses most favorable to him went first. I am not surprised. Whether she can swing that back in her favor, I don't know, but it's clear that she is not comfortable sitting in the discomfort of the weight of public opinion um, not going in her way. Did you see this little exchange? This is Ben Chu, lead counsel, saying hello to, I believe this is Jessica, who has been running the tech for Team Herd, and that really pleasant exchange. That's kind of the collegiality that I like to see in here. Um, and then we've got Rottenborn talking to somebody, I don't know this dude's name, and then we've got Umbridge sitting here um, in that white suit jacket, again, not pink. Depp's attorney, and I forget this female attorney's name, she's been a amazing. She's the one who did the direct of Depp. I think that he's talking to the court reporter, um, is wearing pink. This is the kind of collegiality good attorneys show in court, saying hello to those that are in their court. They're there for six weeks. These, the people who work in the court 
are the people who make your life much easier, much smoother. I was always blown away as a civil research attorney before I became a district attorney, how many attorneys would walk into court with this entitled ass, I own the joint attitude and start ordering the court staff around. I'm like, oh, bitch, (laughs) this is not going to go well for you. Since court is supposed to start in just a minute, I'm going to roll the uh, intro and say hello to all of our new friends. Don't forget to do the YouTube likey, subscribey things. I'm going to try to answer some of the questions I did talk about some of them on the podcast, but we got some great questions over in the Lawnard community at lawnardsunite.com. Um, Elon Musk has said he is not testifying. He has made it clear. We know that he was not properly subpoenaed. He can't be compelled to testify. Um, I don't know if Paul Bettany will be testifying. If he is, he might be one of the last witnesses. I don't know what more information they would get from Paul Bettany. I think it could open doors to more damaging testimony than we already have. I don't know if we need that testimony It'll be interesting to see what else we have. So um, are you sharing your screen? Remember, we are professionals here. Yep, WAP, we are professionals. So we are going to get into this. But first, let's roll the intro. Um, Don't forget to like and subscribe. Y'all, we're almost at like 240,000 law nerds up in here. Let's go. Let's go, law nerds. Let's go, let's go. Hey there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker, the badass lawyer and everyone's favorite legal commentator. I'm the host of The Emily Show, and I break down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I should warn you, I'm a big fan of the cursey words. This channel is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not fuckery. Guys, I will say I absolutely missed you last week as well. Um, it looks like the judge is coming into the court. The judge will call the court to order, and then the jury will be coming in. I missed you guys last week. I was at a friend's Good conference, morning. and do we have any preliminary matters before the jury? Okay, sure. Oh, they're going to approach for a quick preliminary matter. And one of the things, especially when I became an entrepreneur, being able to support my friends and my family in their endeavors is one of my core values. So over the weekend, I had hopped on a plane. A friend of mine did a fundraiser. Um, She's running for judge in Los Angeles. And then on Tuesday, hopped on a plane. A friend of mine, April Franks, was running an amazing Epic Woman conference where she supports entrepreneurs, mostly uh, black female entrepreneurs. She has an amazing community. She had some great speakers. So going in to support her and her community and talk YouTube and and make sure that we're all growing together. And that is one of my core values. So I missed you. I was not on vacation, Um, though I get to see friends at conferences. Honey, they are work. They are busy, but it was amazing to be in people with people. So it was great. So with the PR team, again, the negative headlines are not Amber Heard's PR team's issue so much as the legal team's issue. Her legal team is grabbing quite a lot of headlines based on the things that they have been doing. I love that we're just seeing more and more lawyers coming up here. What is happening? I want to know. Why are we all whispering? I want to know. I loved being a part of the the things, the inside things. So with that, it's not the PR team's fault. The legal team is not helping with good press. The legal team has had too many memeable moments. And the way that the legal team comes across in cross-examination has been almost out of line aggressive. And we've seen um, Elaine Umbridge Bredhoff chill the fuck out in other cross-examinations. We saw her chill out when she was crossing Laura Wasser, celebrity divorce attorney, who was like, Elaine, for real, girl. We've seen her question in a different style. So when she's coming in hot, it is a choice. But when you make everything that dramatic, then nothing is. And I think that that's what they're leaning into. And that's part of why we're getting these wild um, moments in court where you've got witnesses clapping back at the defense attorneys that become very memeable. So good morning, Sherry Frost. Today for Super Chats, I am going to do my best to pull up the ones I can as we go. Um, And again, thank you for your generosity. I appreciate it. I will do my best to pull them up as we go. And if I can't, then I will will, um, circle back to them at the breaks as best I can, especially when there are questions. But for saying hello and stuff, I will absolutely be pulling those up as we go. Um, I saw, where did it go? I pulled it up earlier. I saw somebody saying hello to their mom. Chloe Rodriguez's mom. Good morning. Hello. (laughs) 
<laughs> the fact that she said, hello, mother is giving me life. So hello, hello, hello. But I did miss y'all. That's where, um, that's where I was over the last few days, but I'm here this week and we're just, I mean, we're here again. I'm watching to see if Johnny Depp's team is done with their witnesses this morning or today. And if Amber Heard is the first witness that is called by her team. Question, Umbridge kept arguing with the judge on her rulings. Are we objections? Is that allowed? Yes. It made her look so petulant. I mean, also yes. But each judge has their own temperament and each judge has their own way. You can say, uh, Your Honor, this or Your Honor, that, or could Your Honor clarify? This judge has been granting very, very broad rulings. I mean, she has the amount of things that she considers in the hearsay is very interesting. She's been granting very wide latitude on these rulings. I think there are definitely times the judge is not correct in those rulings and the attorneys have right to be like, but your honor, it's this, but she has been consistent. They're calling in the jury now. She has been very consistent with those rulings. But yes, the way that you do that with the judge in front of the jury matters more. Some judges, it you have to approach to talk it out and why you think they should overrule. This judge is very clear. She's like, I've ruled move on. So I don't think it's the best. We'll see what happens as this team gets to direct examination. Um, it's going to definitely be a different world. Emily Law. Yes, I'm using the third person. And yes, that is my legal name. Hello, Emily Law. Reporting for my first live from the Bay, California, Law Nerds Unite. Well, Emily Law, hello. We love that. I love that your legal name is basically my job description. Emily Law. It's like LA Law. We're just doing Emily Law up in here because it is the Emily Show. Ashley, thank you so much for the super chat. The jury looks like they're coming in. I wonder if they're coordinating witnesses. This is a lot of texting going on. Um, I saw her deposition in the UK trial. She lied about the donation and also what the police officers, um, that's perjury though. I wonder if she would say the same in testimony here, no matter what she does here, she's screwed on that because it's going to come up. Did you see how much her lawyers relied on UK testimony? Her lawyers taught the jury that what was said in the UK is very important because they used it for impeachment. So now the juries are like, Ooh, what happened in the UK? So when it comes back to bite their client in the ass, they set up that dynamic. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. All right. We have a seat. Are Maddie asked, witness? does it matter? Next witness. Your Honor, we call uh, Travis McGivern by video link. <clears throat> okay, Travis McGivern. And we are back in session, Mr. McGivern, Can you hear me? Day 12. I'm going to take notes. I have a pen. I All right. I had a pen. Can my you do me a favor and just pen. count to five for me so I can get you to pop up on my big screen okay, here? Okay, perfect. Does it usually matter? It One, can matter. Because jurors four, can start five. making right, determinations. Now can you turn your camera on? early on in the trial. So yes, it can it matter. On. There we go. It can very much yes, matter. Yes, so now I can see first. you. If you could raise your right hand, sir. And they're swearing in Travis McGillan. Do you swear for him to tell the truth under penalty of law? Yes, I do. All right, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Good morning, Mr. McGivern. Good morning. Could you please state your full name for the record? Travis Edward McGivern. And where do you currently live? Los Angeles, California. Where are you testifying from today? Los Angeles, California. What is your current occupation? I am a security professional. And how long have you been a security professional? This might be his last security. We saw security Roughly testify yesterday. 16 years. Or over on 16 Thursday. Years. We saw security at the end of the day. Do you know day. the plaintiff in this case, Johnny Depp? Hello, Mike. Yes, Thank you so much. How do you know Mr. Depp? I've worked for Mr. Depp for a little over nine years. And what's your position for Mr. Depp? Security professional, um, personal protection. When did you first start working for Mr. Depp? March of 2013. And when did you first meet Mr. Depp? <laughs> I love that you guys love the beard. Couldn't I love say it. For sure. Um, probably sometime around then. They are special April, prescription glasses with the tinted lenses. And what do you do as a member of Mr. Depp's security team? The frames are Dolce and Gabbana. 
Um, yes. Residential security, estate security. We are still in Johnny in Depp's LA. case. This is, uh, I believe, his last security guard that has not testified. And I wonder what event will be testifying LA, to what he, he sees. Go anywhere. I'll, I'll take him wherever he wants to go. I have. Um, they did put Ken off on his trial. children before. Um, yeah, just basically ensure the safety and well being of Mr. Depp and his family. And You're are you wizard, currently Travis. employed for Mr. Depp? I am. I love you guys loving him. What other means of employment do you have? Um, so Mr. Depp's travel schedule is pretty regular. So when he's not in town, um, work slows down a little bit. So I have actually in the last six months, just under six months, picked up a full-time job um, working for another client. Who? Oh, we want to know who. They're never going to ask. When you first started we working for Mr. Depp, how often would you see him in person? Hard to say. When when he's in town, I saw him on a daily and or nightly basis. So he was not part basis. of the traveling security um, squad. Obviously, when he's out of town, that, that changes. But um, yeah, when he's in town, pretty much daily. When did you first meet Miss Hurd? <laughs> and this is brilliant. Again, I couldn't give you an exact date, but I would say sometime in 2013, maybe summer 2013. And when you were working for Mr. Depp, how the often did you see Miss Hurd when they posted. were in a relationship? You're also welcome to DM me on Twitter anything that you notice if you in would like to. the beginning, not very often. At one point, they moved to downtown LA to the Eastern Columbia building and became a little more frequent. Everyone sitting at tables with Depp is part of his legal team. Uh, when Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd were staying at the Eastern Columbia building together, how often would you actually be in their apartment with them? That would vary uh, depending on the situation, but I missed you too, Carrie. Um, a few times a week would be my my best estimate. It again, it depended on what was going on, and there'd be nights where I wouldn't see them at all. There'd be nights where where I would. Um, best best estimate would be a few times a week. During that time, did you have occasion to see Mr. Depp and Miss Hurd interacting with each other? Thank you, Romania. I did. Yes. And how often would you estimate? Yes, the Darth Leia hairstyle is back. No, anytime I was in there, they were typically interacting. So I'd say a few, few times a week. I like this attorney for a week. for Team Depp quite a how lot. Would you I like the way she the questions. Interactions between Mr. Depp and Miss Heard. Lois, it is very mm -hmm. different here. Um. Oh, the the. The, the closed captioning still I mean, they were Depp as death. Sometimes they were super loving, super um, happy. And then the next night they could be arguing. And um, initially when we first, uh, when I first started working down at the lofts, the, uh, things were cool. Um, Thank you, Roxy. More than, more than moving forward. Um, things got a little more volatile she is wearing in, pink. the longer they were there. When did you start noticing more arguments between yeah, Mr. That's Depp the and point Mr. of this witness. So I want to say like the end of 2014, they started staying down there pretty regularly. There were a few incidents Possibly. where there were fights. Um, but March, 2015, when, when they came back from Australia was when I really started to notice, notice a change. And how often would you witness arguments or fights during that time? 
<clears throat> from in in March. Yeah, uh, from March and thereafter. So when I came back from Australia, the, the yes, the Joe, it is pretty regular. Um, wouldn't say nightly, but every other night, uh, several times a week, there there would be arguments. And what did you observe in the arguments that you personally witnessed? So it was typically, I would come in, uh, I'd be, I'd get a text from Mr. Depp. I would go to penthouse three, which is where they stayed. Um, either stay by the door uh, as requested or in the kitchen. Um, Ashley, I think so too, the beard is rad. And then, I mean, it was just verbal, verbal arguments, um, yelling. Uh, it was typically Mr. Depp wanting to get out of there. And it's consistent with everything we've heard. So there was the try, trying to convince Ms. Hurd to, to let us leave. And um, yeah, I mean, lots of name calling, lots of. I'm back this week, Missy. Uh, F-bombs, uh, you know. And who was the name calling directed at? So that was typically Ms. Hurd uh, directing her feelings toward Mr. Depp. I will and be here all day. What do you recall Ms. Hurd saying in those instances? Oh dear. Um, oh dear. Oh dear. It would vary. I bet so, Katie, because we haven't gotten I to that yet. Tried to not pay attention. I was just there to get Mr. Depp out of there. But, um, you know, there were times I've heard Miss Heard call him a fucking deadbeat dad. If I can say that, I apologize to the court. If um, I love that he's so respectful. Fucking washed up. Uh, fucking cunt. Oh, good. Um, you name it. Just both ways. I, she she's spewed it. You name it. She's how would you it. describe your own interactions with Miss Heard in the time that you worked for Mr. Dub? Objection relevance. All right. What's the relevance of his interactions? Uh, his interactions when he was involved in the bias. when he was witnessing these altercations. We can ask that question. Okay. Bias. How would you describe your interactions with Miss Heard when you were present during an altercation between her and Mr. Dub? Thank you, Patty. And if you guys are ever wondering part, who is testifying, it's always really pinned by action. our amazing um, mod squad. There were there were a few times where um, I was trying to get Mr. Depp away from the situation, and Miss Heard didn't like my involvement in the situation, um, and she, on one occasion, let me know how she felt. Okay, about, I'll have to go look about that. And what did she say to you in that instance? <clears throat> a, a lot. It was a, a lengthy, um, one-sided conversation. A lengthy um, one-sided conversation. That's generous. My career choice. Oh. Called me a fucking yes man. Oh. Um, and honestly, there were parts of that where she you know she was like how would you, how would you feel if someone was involved in your relationship which I sympathize with um but yeah she she definitely threw some shade on me and and my chosen career I wonder if that's why her team calls now, them all yes men. you mentioned that um, that's her languaging. The arguments between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard increased when they returned from Australia in March 2015. Um, when did you first see Ms. Heard when she returned from Australia? Gather the beard. Gather the power. So I picked Ms. Heard up from the airport on March 9th. Um, Yeah, that was that was the first time I saw her when she got back. 
And who else was with her? Ben King. Gentleman named Ben King. He's a king. We love him. We stand Ben King. Out, I didn't know who he was initially, but uh, later found out he was the house manager, or property estate manager. Provision the, requisition the expert. In Australia. How would you describe Ms. Hurd's demeanor when you picked her up at the airport? She seemed normal. Nothing, nothing out of the ordinary. Um, she was pleasant. She was polite, like like she usually was. Like she usually was. How I'm much sure time her did team's you spend with Miss Heard that day? Um, not a lot, but at least the car ride from LAX to downtown LA to the lofts. Um, Depending on the time of day, that could be a long car ride. Couldn't tell you how long that took, but probably 45 minutes to an hour. Fair. Um, I believe I escorted them or helped them up to Penthouse 3 and was maybe in there for very, very briefly, a minute or two, and then, um, and then I left. So overall, uh, let's, let's estimate an hour. D Mathers, it's a fair question. And how close to you, how close to Miss Heard were you that day? I mean, in the car where I'm driving, she's in the the seat right behind me to my right. So there's a few feet there. I think when I picked him up, I don't remember if I hugged her or not, but I know I'd probably grabbed some luggage. So I was I was within a few feet. And what time of day was it when Ms. Hurd arrived at the airport? Early afternoon. Um, I want to say they landed at around 1 p.m. What, if any, injuries did you observe on Ms. Hurd that day? After a three-day hostage, uh, he doesn't know about the hostage situation. I didn't notice any injuries. So he can't say. When did you first see Mr. Depp when he returned from Australia in March 2015? I don't know, to be honest. Um, I know it was after Miss Hurd came, but I couldn't give you an exact date. And what, if any, injuries did you observe on Mr. Depp when he returned from Australia? So Mr. Depp had his hand, his right hand, um, heavily wrapped. I didn't actually see an injury, but his hand was, um, was wrapped. Now you mentioned that um, the arguments between Mr. Depp and Ms. Hurd increased after they returned from Australia. Um, what arguments do you recall specifically? Sounds like he didn't notice any scratch marks. Um, one in particular stands out. Um, March 23rd. Uh, a couple weeks after they got back, um, there was a an incident in Penthouse Five that this might be the stair incident. And when did you start your shift that day? Eleven p.m. was typically my start time. And where were you on your shift? Ponards are very curious about something. So we, at the loft, there was um, kind of a makeshift command post CP or uh, guard shack or whatever it's called. Um, that was in a storage room connected to Penthouse 5 via a patio. So you'd leave Penthouse 5, go to a patio, and then our CP was connected to that patio. That's typically where we hang out during during our shifts. And what time were you first contacted by Mr. Depp that evening? Again, I can't say precisely, but um, between four and 
probably around 4 a.m., 4.30, maybe. Ooh. Yikes. And what did you do after Mr. Depp contacted you? I guess he was already so at work because he, he was working the he overnight, but that's and, um, early slash late. I was downstairs. I don't remember exactly what I was doing, either getting some air, stretching my legs, not falling asleep, food. Um, but I remember getting the text. I wasn't in the CP when I got the text. Um, he requested Me I meet him at Penthouse 5 and requested that I bring the nurse, his nurse that was working um, at that time with him. What was her name? Debbie Lloyd. This is the nurse we've already heard testified. And so what did you do? Did you um, go get Miss Lloyd? I did. So was she living on site? Miss Lloyd was staying at a hotel. Um, ah. close by probably about a half block away and being that I was already down there I felt uh, four in the morning I wasn't gonna and Mr. Depp wouldn't have wanted me to have her walk by herself um, but I wasn't gonna go get the truck either since I was down there already so I walked over to the hotel I I believe I called the nurse just to make sure she woke up um and then i walked to the hotel and i met her there we walked over together to the eastern columbia building um in the lobby we ran into miss heard she was at the front desk talking to security or concierge i'm not sure who um miss lloyd stayed downstairs very interested to see what happens I proceeded upstairs to meet Mr. Depp at Penthouse 5, as requested. Um, was hoping to get him out of there before Ms. Hurd came back up, um, just why because of past... Sorry, why, sorry, why was that? Yeah, he was trying to answer why he was doing that. Just because past experiences, when they would argue she would try to prevent us from leaving um it's very consistent with point. all the other I mean, testimony she's held the elevator before she's physically tried to keep mr Depp sorry dr b just by grabbing his arm kicked over my light um, sorry for that loud jump to, y'all. to avoid that and what happened when you got upstairs to the penthouse so mr Depp was sitting in front of the, the front door of penthouse five um i agree he had some bags i believe like he was ready to go um i greeted him kind of got a feel for what was going on tried to get him out of there um as we were getting ready to leave miss heard and miss lloyd exited the elevator on the penthouse level Sorry, so they came back up and um, Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard decided they wanted to continue whatever conversation they were having. So I let them into Penthouse 5. Um, he myself, sounds exacerbated Ms. by this Lloyd, whole situation. Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard entered Penthouse 5. I tried to stay out of their conversations as long as they were peaceful. So they were having a... a appropriate relatively peaceful conversation so miss lloyd and i stood outside the door of penthouse five had the door propped open um to make sure we could hear what was going on but kind of giving them their space uh initially i like and the way he testified said initially what happened very after smooth that? very calm very just this so the conversation and then this, and then this. Um, got a little louder, got a little more volatile. So Miss Lloyd and yeah, I like him a lot. Myself entered Penthouse Five, um, just to be around um, to hopefully be able to not necessarily mediate, but just to be there um, to break it up. So he yeah. doesn't want to say to break entered, it up if need be. A little closer to Mr. Depp. And what did you observe when you went back into the penthouse? Thank you, Sarah. 
He doesn't like so this at all. So the argument continued. Um, there were moments of kind of normal conversation, uh, peaceful conversation, but then there were also moments of uh, yelling and anger from, from both of them. Um, and at some point I witnessed Miss Heard throw a Red Bull can. So the loft is three levels. Skipped over that quickly. Um, Mr. Depp was down at the lower level, which is the kitchen area. There's a middle level, which is was turned into and an And you can hear the lawyers typing. Heard. So there is typing the in the background. Upper level was where the bedrooms were, but they were turned into a closets basically for Miss Heard at that time. Her glasses um, have been Miss Heard an odd and on and off situation. Um, Whitney had had come in. They were both on the, the middle level, the office level. Um, and I, I saw Miss Heard throw a Red Bull can from her position um, that struck Mr. Depp in the back. Anything else that you recall? At that point, I moved closer to Mr. Depp. I didn't care um, that I was in the middle of their conversation at that point. I didn't want my client getting hit with anything else. So that's totally fair. I stood right by Mr. Depp. Um, the verbal. Uh, He's picking his words. Look at him. Onslaught. Yeah, the verbal barrage. From, from both of them. Um, fair. Mr. Depp was giving as good as he got at that point. Um, he was he was angry and agitated going to be a key phrase um, at one point miss heard through something else uh, either a purse or some sort of bag or something that she had up there um, I was able to knock it away so it didn't hit him at one point she spit at him um, yeah and then just just a lot of a lot of verbal vitriol from both of them what do you remember Ms. Hurd saying to Mr. Depp on this occasion? There must have been something specific that they're getting at Jeez. that he hasn't said yet. Uh, anything and everything. Um, specifically, there was the, you're fucking washed up. Um, you're a fucking cunt. Uh, which, which he called her as well. Um, I, he's trying to be fair to both again, sides. The, the deadbeat dad shit. Um, I think that's very credible. I think the jury yeah, will. Think I don't so even too. remember what the fight was about, but it was. Um, it was pretty. The f word is my favorite word, and <laughs> it was being thrown around to the point where I was uncomfortable. Oh, Travis! <laughs> so. Boo! We love you. <laughs> <laughs> and how did Mr. Depp respond to Ms. Hurd's behavior? Oh, he was mad. He was upset, um, especially after she tried to spit on him. Um, at one point, too. Ms. Hurd and her sister left um, Penthouse 5. I imagine they went into penthouse four or possibly over to penthouse three. I don't know. They were when all you joining multiple penthouses. Mr. Depp, as one does. Um, went upstairs and rearranged her closet for her. Um, what do you mean by re down rearranged? Probably every rack of clothing and shoes um, through one, at least one down the stairs um yeah he 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 was upset where was miss heard when mr depp rearranged her closet as he said that's good testimony for both of them and we'll talk Can't about why at the sure, break but she was not in penthouse five she was either in four or three and you mentioned miss heard's sister whitney do you recall when she arrived in the evening morning so Whitney wasn't there when we first all walked into Penthouse Five. Um, when Miss Lloyd and I stepped out to give them some space, 
she must have <laughs> excuse me she must have come in at some point because she was in there when we got when we walked back did you see miss heard again that evening after mr depp was in her closet thank you alice community comes first for me a hundred percent i did yeah so she thank must you. have heard what was going on and not been too pleased so she shortly after re-entered um penthouse five as i was trying to get mr depp out of there and what happened at that point it's very consistent with previous testimony about depp trying to leave so her and her sister both came back in um we were on the middle level so her office level of of penthouse five at that point um she was agitated mr depp was agitated uh, i felt it was time to get mr depp out of the situation so i stepped in between miss heard and mr depp um telling mr depp that we were that we were leaving and that it wasn't up to him anymore yeah we're done um, at that point out of the corner of my eye i saw a, a fist and an arm come across my right shoulder and uh i heard and saw a closed fist um contact mr depp and she the left side punched him fist. over his security and guard fist was that girl that was miss heard's fist girl and where was where was Whitney when this occurred? Can't say for sure, but I'm guessing, or my best guess is behind um, Amber. How did Mr. Depp respond when he was punched? Hmm. The initial look on his face. Hmm. Um, hmm. Kind of mirrored mine, uh, kind of a look of shock, shock, like what just happened? Where'd that come from? Um, at that point, uh, I wasn't going to let Mr. Depp get hit anymore. So I moved him down the last flight of stairs to the lower level um, and told him we're leaving it like it wasn't it wasn't up to him anymore. Um, just for his safety. I, I didn't, again, I had let him get hit by a Red Bull can. I let him get punched. My Interesting job how he takes responsibility. to ensure the safety and well-being of my clients. And I felt like I hadn't done that. So um, it was my time to do my job and get him out of there. And so uh, where did you go? You can so see Ms. the Hurden, responsibility. Her sister um, left Penthouse 5. Again, I don't know where they went. I'm assuming they went through Penthouse 4. or either in 4 or 3. Mr. Depp um, was not pleased with me, <laughs> naturally. Um, he went into the bathroom for a couple minutes. Miss Lloyd talked to him. Um, and they came out and agreed that it was time to leave. I wonder if he was so mad as that Travis as was we making were leaving him the leave. Front door, uh, Mr. Depp got right in my face. He was wearing sunglasses, and uh, maybe not sunglasses. He was wearing glasses. Um, pulled them down, pointed to the left side of his face, and told me, "That's your fault." And uh, that's why he was mad. I agreed, um, and then we proceeded to the vehicle and, and we left the loss. What did you see on the left side of Mr. Depp's face? Oh, there should be pictures. Uh, it was, there was already a nice little, a nice little shiner. Um, definitely swollen and red. Uh, like you just got punched in the face? It wasn't black and blue yet, but it was definitely swollen and red. At any point during this in incident, did Mr. Depp throw anything at Miss Heard? No. I mean, he threw a close. At any point, did Mr. Depp there. throw anything at anyone? No. 
at any time during this incident did Mr. Depp physically respond to Ms. Hurd? Hey, Madeline. No. Do you recall uh, Ms. Hurd's birthday party in April of 2016? I do. <laughs> really uh, interesting Mr. McGivern, so far. during the incident we just discussed on March 23rd, um, what did Mr. Depp have on his right hand? So he had the same bandage that he had uh, um, when he arrived from Australia. So this matters. It was heavily wrapped. Um, yeah, a heavily wrapped bandage. I don't know what was underneath, but it was it was definitely wrapped. So I think this is close in time to when Heard says. Do you that recall whether punched... it was a hard or a soft cast? And how does he punch if his right hand's all I wrapped up? I love that he's wiping his beard. Now, moving forward to Ms. Hurd's birthday party in April 2016, um, were you present at that dinner party? I was not. Okay. Um, I started my shift. Brittany, again, I'm going to do this at the break. It's a great question. 11 p.m. The party was going on in Penthouse 5. Um, I don't typically take part in get togethers. <laughs> um, so I don't partake. I think I probably hung out in the CP. Um, shortly after I got there, the party kind of winded down. Um, I believe Mr. Depp got there. He was late. Um, so I think he got there shortly after I started my shift. Um, he went into penthouse five again the party wound down shortly thereafter and then as far as i know mr depp and miss Hurd went back to penthouse three um shortly thereafter did you see mr depp again that evening that morning i did early that morning yeah uh, or the following morning um again i got a text my best guess is around the same time Four. there were so many so many incidences um i they're hard to keep straight but Ouch. um probably around four or five that morning Ouch. requesting my presence in penthouse three and how did what did you do after you received that text message entered went to penthouse three and what did you observe when you went to penthouse three also, there's less objections because she's Again, asking very argument. clear questions, um, very open-ended, direct clear questions. That some phones had been thrown off. This is the phone incident tying back to last week's testimony or something. Um, down to Broadway. Uh, Mr. Depp was again ready to leave to get out of the situation. He had his couple bags over his shoulders. Um, wanted to grab a few valuables that we always used to grab when this happened. Um, some framed letters oh. from uh, either Hunter S. Thompson or Marlon Brando. Um, yeah, and then I, I believe uh, we left. Uh, I think I got him out of the situation again. We did look for the phone briefly, I think, on our way on our way back to West Hollywood. Um, but my main concern was getting him away from the situation. So I didn't find the phone. Um, and then we we proceeded back to back to his suites or properties. Um, what do you recall about Miss Hurd's demeanor he, that evening when he you grabbed saw her? his valuables every time he left? It sounds like because he was afraid she would wreck his shit that he cared about. Nothing out of the ordinary. Nothing From his that, home. I mean, oh. they were they were arguing like usual in those circumstances, but nothing, this was usual. Nothing pops out. This was standard. This was the what norm. if any injuries did you observe on Miss Heard that evening? 
She said she was hit by a phone this night. I didn't notice any injuries. In your time working for Mr. Depp, have you ever seen Mr. Depp physically abuse Ms. Heard? We must be getting to the end of questioning. I have not. Now, you mentioned a couple occasions. How many times have you witnessed Ms. Heard be physically abusive towards Mr. Depp? Uh, obviously, the March 23rd thing in Penthouse 5. Um, a physically abusive. I don't, I don't know how to define that, but I have seen her physically try to prevent him from leaving before. So grabbing, grabbing his arms, standing in front of him, pushing him. Um, so consistent. Yeah, again, I don't know if that's physically abusive, but that I've definitely seen her touch him on multiple occasions. Have you ever observed Mr. Depp use any drugs? So she went hands on a lot. That's what he's saying. I have. And what drugs have you seen Mr. Depp use? Uh, are you talking non-prescription <laughs> drugs? Yes. Are we talking illegal narcotics or marijuana national narcotics and uh, cocaine? How many times have you seen Mr. Depp use marijuana? Too many to count. I mean, daily. <laughs> Look at Johnny Depp's face. And He's like, there's a lot of weed. How many times have you seen Mr. Depp use cocaine? A couple. Two. How would you describe Mr. Depp's demeanor when he's using marijuana? This is why it matters. This is how he acts when he's uh, under the influence matters because they're trying to say. Chill, for lack of a better word. They're trying um, to say that that's mellow. why he was doing all this shit. Uh... Yeah, I, I don't know how to better describe it. He used weed and he was mellow. mellow. Weird. And how would you describe Mr. Weird. Depp's demeanor when you've seen him use cocaine? The same. Um, so I've seen him use it, like actually seen him use it a few times. I've, I've known of him using it other times and I feel like it, it levels him out. Um, yeah, um, I haven't noticed any difference when he, when he's used it. Very consistent. Have very you consistent. observed Mr. Depp consume alcohol? Absolutely. And how many times? Like marijuana, too many to count pretty regularly. And on how many of those occasions did Mr. Depp appear to be drunk? Thank you, Pam. Nitwit, that's what I was thinking too. I'm ADHD. So when he's like, it mellows him out, I'm like, it would relate. Not to the cocaine. I don't know what you mean by drunk, but not, not many. Um, the only time I would say I've seen Mr. Depp drunk was uh, when he would fall asleep on the couch, sitting up with his boots on. Um, other than that, Mr. Depp handles his liquor very well. How would you describe Mr. Depp's demeanor when you've seen him consume alcohol? Handles his liquor well. No, no different than any other time. Again, super, super chill, super mellow. And this is because um, they're going to say he was blackout drunk and didn't remember. That's why his testimony is inconsistent with hers. Have you ever hers, witnessed Ms. Heard so consume drunk, alcohol? He that's why they're asking all these questions. I have. How many times would you estimate? Testimony last week was she drank one to two bottles <laughs> of wine a day. Again, too many to count. Um, she drank fairly regularly. Um, so I, I couldn't even give you a, a guesstimate. On how many of those occasions did you observe Ms. Heard? behaving drunk. And this will matter too for credibility of the parties. Can't say I've, other than the, the incident on March 23rd where I didn't see her drinking, but I, ass 
assume based on her behavior, um, she was drunk. Other than that, I can't say I've ever seen her uh, obviously drunk in my eyes. That's fair. I have no further questions. All right, cross examination, Mr. Rottenborn. Don't come in hot, <laughs> Rotten Bottom. Rottenborn, I don't want to hear it. Don't be a dick to this dude. I will be pissed. Let's see. Good morning, Mr. McGivern. He's a very good witness for both. Good morning, sir. So I you've he's you said you've neutral. worked for Mr. Depp for about nine years, right? Why is he so loud on the mic? Sorry, y'all. Correct. And he's he hasn't been in town recently, so you have another job. Is that what you said? Yes. Sorry, but you still loud. consider yourself an employee of his even today, correct? I do. And You're when a you do man, work right? for Mr. Depp, he pays your salary, right? Not on salary. He pays my my wage, yes. Okay. He pays the money that you make for working for him. Correct. Dun, dun, dun. And you've referred to him a few times during your testimony this morning as your client. He pays you. Right? Yes. So when you're working security for Mr. Depp, it's Mr. Depp and Mr. Depp alone that is your client, correct? That is not correct. Well, in the, the altercation that you testified about with Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp, you referred to, to only Mr. Depp as your client, and it was your job to keep your client safe. Do you remember that? Objection, compound. I'll allow that. Okay. It's compound, but it's understandable. I do. Okay. So at least in that instance, he was your client, not Ms. Hurd, correct? Correct. Now... The evening of March 23rd, 2015, you actually walked into the middle of the argument with Debbie Lloyd, correct? Speaking fast is part of a cross-examination strategy. So I saw those comments. This is a strategy. Yes. So you testified earlier that you were downstairs and Ms. Hurd was downstairs in the lobby and you'd gotten Ms. Lloyd, but that's actually not accurate, is it? To the best of my recollection, that is accurate. In fact, when you and Miss Lloyd entered Penthouse 5, Amber and Mr. Depp were already in there having a verbal argument, correct? I think he's compounding that is time. not correct. May I approach, Ron? All right, yes, sir. What are we refreshing our recollection with? Is it text messages? Is it not? And I think, again, he was very fair in his testimony. Mr. McGivern, do you see um, a document on the screen in front of you entitled Witness Statement of Travis McGivern? I want to see it. Rottenborn compounds uh... time in his cross a lot, so it'll be interesting to see what happens here. I do. Okay. And... You, Haley, he could never. Well, let, let me ask you this. Is that your, is that your address below? Can we redact it if it is? The document's pretty small. Is there any way for me to, oh, there we go. <laughs> yes, it is. That's and it. that's, that's where you currently live? Don't dox no, McGivern. I'm sorry. That is a P.O. box. Good. Okay. Is that yours? It is. Okay. Um, now, this is a witness statement that you prepared on behalf of Mr. Depp uh, in the UK trial, correct? Yeah, the, the statement went away. Oh, there it is. You um, see it? Yes, it is. And who drafted this statement? Myself, along with the lawyer's attorney, general. I don't remember exactly who. Was it Adam Waldman? At that point, I don't believe it was, no. If you go to paragraph five, please. His voice second page, is so much louder on the mic. And, and you understood when you wrote this statement that this was going to be submitted to the court in the UK trial that Mr. Depp brought. 
and that this was your testimony on behalf of Mr. Depp, correct? Yes. And about two thirds of the way through paragraph five, there's a sentence that says, when Ms. Lloyd and I entered his residence, Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp were having a verbal argument. Conflating time. Is that time. correct? Conflating time. Did I read that right? Hello, that is... SK. Yes. So that doesn't say anything about you meeting Ms. Heard in the lobby of the Eastern Columbia building, does it? No, it does not. And that's what we directed. And when you for. entered the penthouse, you can't recall the specifics of what the argument was about, correct? I take that. That's what he said. No, like what they were fighting about? Absolutely. No, I don't. And you don't know anything about what caused the argument in the first place, correct? I do not. But you do remember Mr. Depp being very angry, right? We added a very. I remember both of them being very angry, yes. And you say that he gave as good as he got. I told you that would come back when up. When it came to what they were saying to each other, right? Yes. You say they were both being verbally abusive to one another? Yes. It's a good question. Don't go too much further. That was a good question. You've made points. And you testified that you've made points at some sit. point, Miss Heard, Miss Heard was on the, the, the mezzanine level, right? The the level of her office, or so kind of the middle level of the penthouse. That's correct. And Mr. Depp was on the lower level, correct? When you entered the penthouse. So when Miss Lloyd and I re-entered the penthouse, yes. Notice That's how he were. clarified re -entry. And you weren't preventing Mr. Depp from leaving at any time, correct? Preventing him from leaving? I was encouraging him to leave. Right. And he could have, when he was on that lower level of the penthouse, he could have left at that point, correct? You wouldn't have prevented that. No, I would not. Isn't it true? It's his fault that and, he stayed in But instead, at some point, he walked up to the me mezzanine, and as you say, he rearranged Miss Hurd's closet, right? Well, that wasn't on the mezzanine level. That was on the top level. Um, but yeah, he rearranged the closet. So he traveled up two levels in the penthouse to throw down every rack of clothing that she had, well, right? That's not what he said. I don't know about every rack, but he, he definitely threw down some racks of clothes and shoes. Okay. I, be, I believe you said every rack. So that's just what uh, I was no, asking you No, actually he that. didn't. We've you said listening. he threw a he rack a down rack. the stairs, correct? A rack. Yes. And then at that point he went back downstairs? To the mezzanine level. Also yes. consistent. Now, that wasn't the only time you learned of Mr. Depp um, causing damage in Penthouse 5, correct? Couldn't say for sure. Uh, nothing, nothing's coming to mind. He had, uh, you said he had something on his hand from his injury that he sustained in Australia, right? Yes, his hand was wrapped. Now you weren't in Australia uh, with Mr. Depp and Miss Heard, correct? I was not. And we will see. what he had on his hand could have been a hard cast, correct? Sure. Opening up possibility. I have, I have no idea what was under the wrap. It's a good question. And isn't it true that while he was on the mezzanine level and Miss Heard uh, and and her sister were there, <laughs> that he was reaching for Amber's hair while he was trying to hit her with that cast? Correct. I hate this way of questioning. That is not correct. And you say that you can't say for sure where Whitney was standing on the mezzanine level during this altercation. Correct. That is correct. And it's. It's possible that she was standing in between Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard then, correct? No. Well, you say you between. can't say for sure where she was standing. So she no. could have been standing in between Mr. What? Depp and Ms. Heard, right? No. Here. No, because I stepped in between Ms. Heard and right. Mr. Depp. Because I was standing um, there. So she definitely wasn't standing in between them. 
Well, in fact, you saw Mr. Depp push or shove Whitney Heard, correct? Absolutely not. And it was only after Mr. Depp pushed Whitney that Amber stepped forward and punched him in the face. Isn't that right? That is not correct. Now, moving on to April 2016, not even gonna clarify. you weren't there like, for the party, you said, correct? They're just going to keep going. Interesting. Interesting, interesting. I, uh, I started my shift while the party was going on. But you weren't in with the party goers, you said, right? That's correct. And Maybe you, does. you said it, at some point, Mr. Depp and Ms. Heard went back to Penthouse 3. It's strategic. Um, but you have no idea what Compound. went on between them in Penthouse 3 while you weren't there, correct? Compound. I do not. And you said that you gave uh, security services to Mr. Depp primarily uh, in Los Angeles. Is that right? Sarah, we'll do it at the break because yes. that's a good question. A little bit of travel, but mostly in, in LA. Okay. Where did you travel to? Um, Vegas. Uh, up north, we did a road trip, kind of, they called it their honeymoon. Um, so Napa, San Francisco, Big Sur. California shit, um, like local stuff. San Jose. Not to conflate Nevada uh, with I, California, but local. Those are locally. all with Miss Heard. I've taken oh, with her Depp to China before. Um, Okay. Yeah. And then a bunch of, bunch of local stuff, Palm Springs, Santa Barbara, um, stuff like that. Okay. You weren't on a plane flight from Boston to Los Angeles with Mr. Depp and Amber in May, 2014, correct? I was not. And you weren't at the Hicksville trailer palace in May or June of 2013, correct? With them. Hicksville makes me laugh not. every time. You, uh, you were never in the Bahamas with them, including in August, 2014, correct? I was not. You were not in the Bahamas with them in December of 2015, correct? I need more coffee for this shit too, Travis. I was not. You were not in Tokyo with them in January of 2015, correct? I was not. You were not in the Eastern Columbia building with them on the evening of December 15th, 2015, correct? I don't know. Um... To the best if of your recollection. Let him finish. Yeah, if they were at the lofts, I typically worked every night, but nothing about December 15th is popping into my head. Okay. The beard is the and best. you definitely were not in the Eastern Columbia building with them on the night of May 21st, 2016, were you? I was not. Okay. Um, nothing further. Thank you, Mr. McGill. All right, redirect. No, you're all, right. is this witness, all right, is this witness subject to recall? <laughs> Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right, Mr. Subject McGibbon, you're, you're subject to recall. So uh, just to let you know, uh, you're still subject to the rule on witnesses. So you cannot talk to anybody about your testimony or uh, watch any uh, Do not the proceedings watch in this case. Okay, sir? the Emily D. Baker on YouTube. Understood. Do not All right, thank you. watch us. The rest of y'all can watch us. Thank you. you can share with your friends. They can watch us. Your next witness. But he can't. Um, Mr. Depp calls Jack Wiggum, who should be waiting in the electronic lobby. Got him. Okay, next witness. <laughs> All right, Mr. Wiggum, can you hear me, sir? And we're gonna see Mr. Chu. Could you do me a favor and just count to Doing one to the five for me? examination of Mr. Sure. Wiggum. One, two, three, so the five. we will get right, to this testimony you. in just a moment. Right They're gonna swear him in. I don't swear like the isn't it county true county. style of cross-examination. We'll talk about it at the break you, because it gives those double negatives. Good morning, that Mr. Wiggum. Answer. Would you please state your full name for the record? Ben Chu and Johnny have got the sure, blue uh, thing Jack going. Wiggum. Where do you live, Mr. Wiggum? Glasses. I live in Los Angeles. Where, if at all, did you earn your undergraduate degree? Does it matter? I earned a degree in finance from the University of Florida. In oh, what year, if any, did you graduate from the University of Florida? 1998. Do you have any graduate degrees, Mr. Wiggum? I do. I have a law degree also from the University of Florida uh, and graduated in 2002. 
Mr. Wiggum, what do you currently do for a living? That's the question I needed. I'm currently a, a manager representative for artists. Would you please describe, Mr. Wiggum, for the jury what a manager representative does? So he's a talent manager, yeah? So we, you know, represent writers, directors, actors, Thanks actresses. So. Current uh, agent. Mostly in their pursuit of artistic endeavors. So he does look I primarily like Pedro focus on, on film and television, but, you know, all artistic endeavors. I see all you How does a manager chat? representative get paid? With money. Uh, typically via a commission. What so, industry standard is kind of 10% of whatever the deal is. And Mr. Wiggum, what did you do professionally after you earned your JD at the University of Florida? I was an attorney at uh, a firm called Wild Gospel and Mangies. And then it um, sucked. For approximately three years. <laughs> and then I left. Uh, and then I segued from there to something uh, that was better. A talent agency um, called CAA, Creative Artists. Oh, it was at CAA. They have and a lot of. And what year lawyers. did you start work at CAA? I started there in April of 2004. And Mr. Wiggum, in what capacity Lawyers did make you start working agents. at CAA? I started at the bottom, uh, in the mailroom, uh, shopping mail, and then uh, I want muffins. Became a, an assistant for one of the manager partners, and then in 2007, I believe I was from. I became an agent, and then right around 2014, I think uh, I began co-running the uh, film and talent department there. I cannot, and I'm when actually your dyslexic. So job responsibility shifted to becoming an agent at CAA. Would you please describe briefly for the jury what that entailed? Sure. We were, you know, also looking out for artistic endeavors on behalf of the client. So writers, directors, actors, actresses, but we were also negotiating deals uh, and, you know, really pursuing film, television, producing deals on behalf of the clients. Mr. Wiggum, did there come a time when you left CAA? I did. I, I left in, in August of 2020. What, if anything, did you do professionally after you left CAA in August of 2020? So I co-founded a, a management production company called Range Media Partners. Started my own in shit. August of 2020 and have been working there ever since. What type of company is Range Media Partners? It's a management representation production company. Do you know Johnny Depp? I do. Mr. Wiggum, when did CIA. you first meet Mr. Depp? I, from the I, I actually now. met him very briefly in, from... on the set of Black Mass, which was probably, I don't know, 2014 or 15. And then I met him very briefly at a, one of his music shows. Uh, but more substantively, I, I sat with him, uh, I believe, in the, uh, the fall of 2016. Did there come a time, Mr. Wiggum, when you became Mr. Depp's agent? Yes. When was that? Right, right around October, I believe, fall of 2016. Was that when you were still with CAA? Yes. When you first started with Mr. Depp as his agent, I who, if anyone, assisted you, assisted you? Tomorrow there will be muffins. I had two partners that I worked with Johnny. Uh, one was <laughs> Brian Lord and the other was Christian Carino. Since starting to work with Mr. Depp as and his Christian agent Carino in October 2016, have you had opportunities to observe him interacting with yourself and others? Yes. How would you describe for the jury Mr. Depp's demeanor on those occasions? Objection relevant. All right. What's the relevance? The relevance is how he how he conducts himself professionally, which relates to his reputation, which is which relates issue. to the defamation. Go ahead. I like the way he responds question, to objections. Sure. I like Ben uh, Johnny was always very nice, sweet, in fact, um, you know, artistic, uh, polite, and, you know, very thoughtful, you know, kind of uniquely thoughtful about how are you doing? How's your family? You know, he, he, was, he was just a thoughtful person. He always has been. Did he seem, gen did he seem genuine? Objection leading. Oh, sustained <laughs> objection. <laughs> to what extent, if any, did he seem genuine? There we go. I'm going to object. How, how would he know? 
speculation. I'm not sure what objection that is or a speculation. A speculation. Ah! I believe he can he can testify right. as to that. I'll allow it. Testify as to his impression, Umbridge. His, her, her honor right. says her honor says you may answer that question. Okay. Uh, Very good, Mr. Chu. I found Johnny to be authentic. You know, it was a, a genuine uh, kindness. And Mr. Wiggum, prior to you first becoming Mr. Depp's agent in 2016, October of 2016, who was his agent prior to that? I, I believe was, it was. I was um, just trying to take Tracy a drink of water Jacobs and finish my at, supplements uh, a company called so I can stay healthy. And, and before Umbridge you took over from Tracy non Jacobs as Mr. Depp's agent, what if any? research or due diligence did you do with respect to him? I don't know why this is relevant, but it's going to be a morning. Okay. <laughs> what, yeah. Again, relevance? Your Honor, it goes to reputation, which is this, the core of the I issue. And, I'll, the sustain the, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. Th thank you, Your Honor. That wasn't relevant. Were you aware of Mr. Depp's professional reputation at the time you became his agent in October of 2016? I would say objection leading, and I think it's going to call for hearsay. No, this uh, is relevant this because he is suing for damages and damages to his reputation is like literally the fucking What was your understanding, if any, of Mr. Depp's professional reputation at the time you began representing him as his agent in the fall of 2016? Umbridge needs a muffin. Uh, Johnny's reputation, in my opinion, was very, he was very well regarded and respected by peers uh, in the artistic community. Um, your, uh, Your Honor, I'm, uh, I'm going to object. He, first of all, he says in his opinion, which he's not an expert witness. And second, he's now going into hearsay. No, I'll, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. Yeah, overruled. Sit down. Her, Mr. Wiggum, Her yeah. Honor, you may continue. Uh, Well-regarded, respected, extremely talented, artistic. Are you familiar, Mr. Wiggum, with the distinction between an independent film and a studio film? I, I believe I am. <laughs> what, if any, difference is there between an independent film on one hand and a studio film on the other? So in, in, in layman's terms, I'd say that, you know, a studio film is a bigger budgeted film. It's, it has a All of this matters in place, to so defamation, Disney, his reputation uh, being damaged. Marvel, Universal, these kind of, these are big companies. Uh, they're the they're bigger system. budgeted and bigger fees. Uh, and then independents like we call them indies uh typically are smaller budgeted more artistically minded Chew, heard umbrage and rotten uh, bottom often don't have distribution when they're made starting in october 2016 <laughs> yes what types of opportunities have you pursued on mr depp's behalf uh a, a wide variety you know uh Primarily, I would say, focused on, on film, television, and producing. What, if any, roles did Mr. Depp have in progress as of that time, fall of 2016, going into calendar year 2017? All right, so we, we inherited some deals. It, it was, uh, there was two films, as I remember, that were going to go back to back. Uh, one was City of Lies, the notorious B.I.G. film, and really? the other was Murder on the Orient Express. So those those were filmed almost at the same time, uh, and then and and they had pre-existing deals uh, that we serviced, and then he had Fantastic Beasts, Crimes of Grindelwald, uh, as well, and then we were we were in the process. We ended up finishing the sixth film negotiation on Pirates. And then negotiation for Pirates X, okay. Mr. Wiggum, you mentioned City of Lies. When was that film actually shot? To the best of my memory, it was shot right... Did City of know, Lies ever come out? the very end, mostly the beginning of 2017. What was Mr. Depp's compensation for City of Lies? I believe it was $8 million. And you mentioned Murder on the Orient Express. When was that shot? So it, it was shot at almost the same time. I actually can't remember it, which one went first. They were both shot predominantly, call it January to 
April of 2017. And this is going to get into that damages of dates. defamation. That's why this is all uh, happening. But they were, it was the beginning of 2017. What was Mr. Depp's compensation for murder on the Orient Express? If memory serves me, I think it was $10 million. Uh, was murder a studio film or an independent or what you call an indie film? It was a studio film. It what was, the kids uh, are calling an indie film. Mr. Wiggum, you also mentioned Fa Fantastic Beast 2 Crimes of Grindelwald. When was that film shot? I, I believe that film was shot in the fall of 2017. What was Mr. Depp's compensation for Crimes of Grindelwald? And this comes before the article in 2018. Yeah, That's that, why it that matters. Dated us. I think it was 13.5 million, if I remember correctly. Was Crimes of Grindelwald a studio film or an indie film? We all know the answer to that, Ben Chu. Studio. It was uh, Warner Brothers. And backing up a bit, Mr. Wiggum, uh, what was the first business opportunity you were able to secure for Mr. Depp after he came to you and CAA in the fall of 2016? So I believe it was we 2017 was really it was busy. He, we had a slot that summer, and he wanted to do a smaller film, and it, it was uh, the professor, I believe. How much compensation, if any, did he receive for performing in that smaller film, The Professor? That deal was uh, three and a half million. Was The Professor an independent film, or was it a studio film? It was independent. And Mr. Wiggum, how, if at all, was CAA compensated for closing the deal on the professor? So it, it would have been the normal 10% uh, of the deal. So the deal was three, three and a half million. The commission would be $350,000 to the agency. This is why lawyers. Mr. Wiggum was agents. 2017, a typical year for Mr. Depp in terms of the workload. Uh, for an actor of his caliber and track record. Objection leading. That's foundational. Overruled out loud. It's, yeah, it's foundational. Shush. And yes. What other roles, if any, were you able to secure for Mr. Depp during your tenure at CAA before you went to the He's new company? He's establishing what happened before the article came out to juxtapose uh, it to what happened so after the article called came out. For the so that's what they're uh, trying to set up right now with the foundation. A film called Minamata. It's very easy to follow. When was Waiting for the Barbarian shot? So waiting for the Barbarians was uh, fall of 2018. What, if any, plans did you and Mr. Depp have for 2018, calendar year 2018? Very important had, for the definition. We had a very specific plan for that year because 2017 was busy and he had he had done three studio films and i remember him wanting to take time off to rest and be with his kids for first half of the year and then he wanted to go on a uh, the music tour which always just made him really happy and so that was the summer of 2018 and then and then we had the slot for two, for the fall of 2018 and uh that's where we spent a lot of time thinking about what that movie was going to be and waiting for the barbarians was kind of a little gift because it was based on a jm kutzi novel and johnny's you know very well read and knew knew the literature the, the underlying book and the, and mark rylance was in the film and it was just like a dream actor that he always wanted to work with what was mr depp paying for waiting Scott. for the barbarians one million dollars. And I apologize if you've already said this so was waiting for the barbarians an independent film or a studio film. Uh, it was an indie independent. Mr. Wiggum, you also mentioned the film Minimata. When was that film shot? That that was the very beginning of 2019. So I think January start was Minimata an indie film or a studio film? It was uh, independent. Thank you, Crazy L. How much was Mr. Depp 
ultimately paid for Minamata. I'm very proud of my TED talk. So his, I'm glad you shared his it. Fee, his fee became, it was $3 million. What, if any, role did Mr. Depp play in Pirates of the Caribbean 5? He Captain played uh, Jack Captain Sparrow. And Jack Sparrow. Was he paid an actor's fee for that film? Uh, uh, technically, it was before my tenure. Uh, so, uh, but yes, I would assume he was. Mr. Wiggum, would you please explain for the jury what are residual or back end rights? I think the easiest way to explain a back end is, is it's an ownership stake on behalf of the artist. Uh, it's like an NFT for movies. Movie <laughs> and typically is only granted to stars of a certain stature. And in addition to the fee, Mr. Depp, the upfront fee that Mr. Depp was paid for Fantastic Beasts 5, which I know preceded you, uh, what, if any, did understand, what, if any, understanding do you have of whether Mr. Depp had any back-end rights for Pirates 5? Objection, Your Honor. Foundation, foundation. He said that deal was uh, at, at the other agency. This is a foundation. Know, he He's fine. trying to establish the foundation. Your Honor, so you may answer the question. Yeah, you, so you initially said Fantastic Beast. I think you meant Pirates 5. Uh, oh, I, I apologize. Pirates, I, I did mean yeah. for Pirates 5, uh, what, if any, back end did Mr. Depp have for Pirates 5? Pirates 5. Uh, I don't know what it was. I know that he had one. There's the foundation. I don't know. To, to what extent, if any, did Mr. Depp ever have a deal to perform in Pirates 6? So when we started representing him, I remember Brian Lord and myself finishing a deal that had started at the previous agency. Objection, Your Honor. May we approach? The... Okay. Hold on a minute. Ooh. So they're approaching because she thinks there's something there that he's going to get into that they have an issue with. It's the appropriate thing to do instead of arguing it out in front of a jury. It's got to be really awkward for Jack Wiggum, though. He's just like, I'm just going to sit here and chill on screen. Um, we know now that Umbridge is going to be doing the cross-examination of this witness. I don't know what she's trying to get into. I don't know what she's upset that she thinks he's trying to get into. You can tell she's agitated about something. She's got the, you know, the head going where she's very flustered. I'm going to answer a few super chats as we're getting into this. I really enjoyed the first witness. Um, I was starting to talk about Rottenborn's style of cross, and I'll probably talk about it more throughout the day. But the isn't it true that leaves this double negative that's very hard for a jury to parse. Like, what does a yes mean? What does a no mean? I don't think it's an effective style of cross, and I find it a little bit lazy. I got to be honest. Isn't it true that you said blah, blah, blah? For the interruption, yes. Mr. Wiggins. Yes, it's true. Uh, yes, it's not you true. You may answer the question, which I believe is, we to what lost extent, the question. Uh, if any, did Mr. Depp have ever have a deal to perform in Pirates 6? Let's hear what Umbridge didn't want us to know. So we, we finished the deal and then we closed the deal at 22 and a half million for that film is my memory. Which studio, which studio was involved in the pirate series, including pirate six. So that was uh, Disney. Thank you. Must love Java. Was Disney, the studio involved in all of the pirates movies. Welcome Samantha. Yes. What role uh, was Mr. Depp to play in pirate six? Captain Jack Sparrow. What? Shut the fuck up that it's speculative what role he had when Captain you're asking his fucking agent. Stop was it. Was the 22.5 million to be paid to Mr. Depp by Disney oh. or by some other entity? Disney. And when was that 22.5 million to be paid uh, to Mr. Depp? Absolutely, Sister Babylon. It would be paid when he shoots it. We call it principal photography. So when the film shoots. Who was the producer of the Pirates franchise? Jerry Bruckheimer. Does Mr. Bruckheimer work for Disney? No. In 2017, to what extent, if any, was Mr. Like, Bruckheimer no. supportive of Mr. Depp remaining in the I'm Pirates Jerry franchise? Jerry Bruckheimer. Objection, Your Honor, calls for hearing. I'll, I'll sustain objection. Thank you, Your Honor. That was a foundational question. It would be if putting aside his role in the Pirates films. Did Mr. Depp have any other affiliations with Disney in 2017? 
Yes. What were those affiliations? Yes, what were those? I'm curious. He, if I remember in the spring, you know, he, he went down to Disneyland and, and put on the Captain Jack Sparrow outfit and uh, wardrobe and, and went into the ride. Disney, he and Disney had worked out a fun little thing where he was going to take the place of the automated, you know, I Captain Jack that. Sparrow on the, on the Pirates ride. And so he would kind of surprise people as they were going Aaron, along there. And so no unforgivable curses. <laughs> In 2000, in May of 2017, we, uh, he went to uh, Disney Shanghai to help open the Pirates of the Caribbean ride there. Uh, what, if anything, did those affiliations signify about the status of Mr. Depp's relationship with Disney as of that? She's time? objecting. Uh, objection, Your Honor. Uh, I'll just, I'll just yeah, state objection. Next question. question. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, to what extent, if any, did Mr. Depp socialize with anyone? at Disney in 2017, to the extent you know. Objection, Your Honor. I'll allow it to the extent he knows. Do you Welcome know whether Mr. Uh, Depp socialized with Disney during 2017, yes or no? Objection on the foundation and Pearson. I do. He's I, asking the foundational he question. Foundation to how, he knows. I, 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 how do you He's know trying. that Mr. Depp uh, socialized with Disney in calendar year 2017? Because I was there. Who, um, foundation. would you please describe for the jury what you mean when you said you were there when Mr. Depp socialized with Disney? We had a dinner in spring of 2017 with myself, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer, Johnny, and Sean Bailey, uh, who was running. That would be fascinating. The film, you know, was running, was president of Disney. How did the dinner conclude? Great. I mean, very. Very nice. It was, a, it was a great dinner. As of early December 2018, so we're now in December of 2018, uh, what, if anything, was your understanding of the status of whether Mr. Depp would actually appear in Pirate 6? Objection on a call for hearsay. Right, no, it doesn't. It, it, he was the agent negotiating it. Mr. Wiggum, did there come a That's time dumb. when you saw an op-ed that purportedly written by Amber Heard that appeared in the Washington Post. This is all going to damage from the from the yes. defamation. Mr. Wiggum, I would like to show you, please, uh, what was entered previously into evidence as Plaintiff's Exhibit 1. Uh, Mr. Gibson, would you please pull up Plaintiff's Exhibit 1? And Your Honor, uh, may we please publish this to the jury as it's been previously Oh, it's it is. Thank you. He's like already um, done. It's absolutely his Mr. job. Mr. Wiggum, to know that. have you ever seen this document before? All this trial yes. will take all the time. What is it? Three more weeks, I think. Possibly. It's, I more. believe it's the uh, opinionated op ed uh, the in the opinionated Washington Post that Ms. Heard uh, wrote. Mr. Wiggum, when did you first op see Ms. Heard's op ed in the Washington Post? It would have. It would have been right. Contemporaneous when it came out. The second the PR and Tom, if rep you would sent please it to move me. ahead to, I believe, the second page in Plaintiff's Exhibit One, um, and drawing your attention specifically to the third paragraph of the op-ed, Ms. Heard writes, "Quote: Two years ago, I became a public figure representing like domestic abuse. Get it? And I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women for women who speak out." Unquote. What, if anything, what, if any, understanding do you have of that reference? That it was regarding Johnny and uh, their relationship. Directing your attention, uh, Tom, if we could just move back up to the first page of Exhibit 1. Uh, directing your attention to the title of the article, quote, Amber Heard, colon, I spoke up against sexual violence, unquote. What, if any, understanding do you have of that reference? Objection, Your Honor. It's irrelevant what his understanding is. Uh, I'll, I'll allow it. It goes to damage. It's a defamation suit, that, Elaine. That was uh, that was rather shocking, I remember, because it was the first time I'd heard an allegation of sexual abuse. And against whom was the allegation of sexual abuse? Objection, Your Honor. How would he know? I'll sustain the objection. Next question. No, what did you think? 
what Mr. Wiggum, directing your attention to Don't the fifth paragraph of Plaintiff's Exhibit 1, Ms. Hurd writes, quote, he could have kept going I had the rare vantage point of seeing in real time how institutions protect men accused of abuse, unquote. This goes to, to what, does what that was refer? known in the industry. Uh, I'll sustain the objection. Next question. He needs to ask it uh, Mr. Gibson, if you what would was please your take understanding? down Plaintiff's Exhibit 1. What? No, don't just give it up. Ask, what was your understanding? What was your interpretation? Mr. Wiggum, how, if at all, was Ms. Hurd's op-ed different from other articles about the couple's relationship? Um, that Your Honor, calls for hearsay foundation. It right. calls for opinion. Uh, Mr. Wiggum, had you seen other articles in the course of your duties as Mr. Depp's agent about Amber Heard and Johnny Depp? Objection, Your Honor, still. Yes. Uh, foundation. Out loud. Thank you. He would already said yes. Um, how, if at all, was the op-ed different from other she articles should have had him had restate his answer Depp of yes because they were talking over each other? It, you know, it was a first-person account coming from the victim. Uh, it's extremely impactful. Impactful in a, in a good or bad way. For, on, you know, with respect to Johnny, it, it was it was catastrophic because it was coming from you, you know uh, a first person account. Because it, it came from, from her, a yep. journalist. It was not from someone observing. It was from someone saying, "This happened to me." Yep. Mr. Wiggum, between December 18, 2018, the date of answer. the op-ed, and October 2020, it's clean. Did Mr. Depp perform in any studio films? Sorry, could you could you just repeat the dates? Between December 18th, 2018, which is the date that Ms. Hurd's op-ed appeared, and October 2020, to what extent, if any, did Mr. Depp perform in any studio films? Zero. No studio films. How, if at all, did Ms. Hurd's op-ed impact the Mr. Depp's ability to land roles in studio films between December 2018 She's and October object. 2020? Objection, Your Honor, calls for hearsay foundation and expert. I'll sustain that. Objection, Your Honor, this yeah. testimony is really bad for Are us. Are you near the end, Mr. Chu? I just want to make sure because it's coming up on a morning break. Okay. I, I'm a, I have probably five minutes. Okay, that's good. Go ahead. Let Mr. Chu keep going. Uh, we like what you. What effect, if any, did the op-ed have on the release of Minamata, the indie film you mentioned. She's going to object again. She just overruled your fucking objections. Stop it. Stop it. This judge wants to get to the morning break. She's already overruled that objection. You can't just object because this testimony is damaging to you. You're slowing down the court and she's annoyed. He didn't even get his answer into the last question he objected to because Ben Chu started asking a new question. He should have just allowed the old question to be asked. This all goes to the damage in the defamation from his current agent. After this article came out, what was the impact to Johnny's career and to his work? It was devastating. Look how pissed she is. She lost her objection. She's like, you knew you're going to lose this objection. This is what this witness is for. They have firsthand knowledge of the what damage that happened, was done. Mr. Wiggum, That's the point. After the op-ed, but before October 2020, with respect to Minimata. So the, the op-ed came out in December, and it was, it was right as we were going on Christmas break, and uh, our Minimata was supposed to start in January, and I, I remember it was very, very difficult to keep Minimata together. The, the financing became shaky. The the budget had to come down. Johnny's fee came down in order to save the movie. Tom, if you would please pull up plaintiff's exhibit 584. Oh, so Tom is We're there, not Jessica. Asking to publish it because it does not come in. Um, this is an email chain with the subject line, quote, uh, Johnny Depp's Jack Sparrow won't return. I object to him reading All right. even from that. To the jury for why that's fine Your that's Honor. not a legal foundation um mr wiggum do you recognize they've this already read it in also this is I, oh we banged yes, now that i'm looking at it hey what is the date of this email chain? uh i think it's december 20th december 20th of what year sir all right uh december 20th of 2018 
I want to see the Mr. Wiggum, Mr. Wiggum, directing your attention to the middle email message on plaintiff's exhibit 584. Did you receive this message from Christian Carino in or about December 20th, 2018 at 326 p.m.? Your Honor, I'm going to object because it's a hearsay document. He's asking questions from the hearsay right, document. They're hearsay I'll documents. I love, love that question. Let's see where we go. We're sending foundation. Your Honor said you may answer that question. Yes, I, he got, I see, you know, I see what he's asking me. Would you please explain to the jury what the message was about? Objection, Your Honor, hearsay. It's his statement. Hearsay. He's asking him to no. essentially say what we'll approach for a moment. The judge is like, I wanted to take my motherfucking morning break and y'all are fighting over hearsay documents. Oh my God, Camille Vasquez is like, this is so dumb. This is coming in. You know it's coming in. Stop fighting it, Elaine. This is coming in. It just makes... It makes it look like you want to hide it. And when you fight so hard to keep something out and then it comes in, the whole jury's like, oh, bitch, what is it? Like the whole jury goes, ooh, ooh, you wanted this out? Like this objection, this objecting to these types of questions that are coming in anyway, just piques the jury's curiosity. They're just going to be more interested in whatever happens next. And let's see what the judge ruled because we're going to see if he Thomas, starts. if you could please take that down. Um, well, I guess he lost that one. And we'll see if it comes up next. So now we all want to know, right? We're all left lingering. We're dangling, wanting to know what's in the email. Mr. Wiggum, did there come dangling. a time after Ms. Hurd's publication of the op-ed on December 18, 2018, but before October 2020, that you learned more about Disney's plans about whether it would cast Mr. Depp in Pirate 6? Objection, hearsay. All right. It's I'm foundational. Just he, he... Okay, I'll allow, allow that. Yeah, it's foundational. Did he learn? Yes. Then how did he learn? When did that happen? In 2019. What yeah. happened? Okay. Go ahead. Probably would have been like January. Next, next question. What okay. What happened when? in 2019 with respect to Disney? Your learning about Disney's plans. Uh, whether to use Mr. Depp in Pirate 6. Objection, hearsay. Uh, what, what happened? So, yes. Yeah, what happened? I'll allow what happened. Go ahead. It became clear they were going in a different direction. When did you learn that Disney was going in a different direction and no longer planned to use Mr. Depp in Pirate 6? Is that industry, it's not you, it's me, going in a different direction? Early 2019. Who is Margot Robbie? She's a fantastic actress. Why is it relevant? Uh, she's a client. I love it. CAA. What, if anything, did you learn about the role Margot Robbie would be playing in Pirate 6? Margot's going to be in Pirate 6? Uh, I'll overrule the objection. Yeah, he's the agent. I, I learned that they were developing a Pirates project for her to star in. Really? After you learned Can't they that put her in Disney Aquaman? was going <laughs> in a different direction in early 2019 and no longer planned to use Mr. Depp. Yes, that's maybe did shady. You, to what extent did you reach out to Jerry Bruckheimer or Sean Bailey? Hey, hearsay. But it's not. It's foundation. It's it does when. Not, Your Honor. It doesn't call you, for Honor. hearsay. It's when. A lot. Did you reach out to Mr. Bruckheimer and Mr. Bailey jointly or separately? Separately. What, if anything, was the result of your outreach to Mr. Bruckheimer and Mr. Bailey? That's not hearsay. That's what happened. It, for it doesn't. It calls for what happened. What was the I'm result? I'm just asking what the result was. No, it's not still hearsay, Elaine. All right, I'll sustain the objection. Your Honor, objection. it's foundational. Don't give it up, Chu. Ask another way. After your outreach to Mr. Bailey and or strike that, was your outreach to Mr. Bruckheimer and Mr. Bailey successful? Objection leading. I'll allow it. It's foundation. No. And the court wants to get to break. I successfully made contact with them, but I was not successful in rescuing pirates for That's Johnny. what he wanted. 
that's the when was the last time you discussed Mr. Depp's role in Pirate Six with Jerry Bruckheimer, Sean Bailey, or anyone else at Disney? I'm going to object, Your Honor, on hearsay. Yeah, I, overruled. Yeah, we know you are. It's not hearsay. 2019, I believe. In addition to Pirate Six, did Mr. Depp lose other films between December 2018 and October 2020 because of Ms. Hurd's op-ed? Objection. I'll sustain the objection. That calls for speculation. He's going to have to go film by film. Look at her. Look at the face. Look at the face. In, a, in addition face. to Pirate Six, did Mr. Depp lose any other films between December 2018 and October 20th. I'm ready to. Objection, Your Honor. First of uh, all, uh, uh, I don't, think I don't like this testimony. Second of all, it's she's, a she's now contradicting uh, the witness's uh, testimony, oh, yeah, which is no, no, inappropriate. Question, Both of you. Both, Both of you. Ruled. Let's go. Shut Let's up. Go going to break. Question. Sorry, I was getting stuck on my ears. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted yeah. to pop after, up and down too. After the op ed, it was impossible to get him ding, ding, ding. a studio film, which is what we normally would have been focused on in that time period. I gotta write that down. Mr. Wiggum, to what extent did COVID, or strike that, to what extent, if any, did COVID, did COVID <laughs> impact Mr. Depp's <laughs> opportunities COVID. prior to October, 2020? I, I think it had an effect on, on Johnny, like, uh, like other actors to some degree. Um, but we, we were still doing business, especially on behalf of, you know, bigger stars that greenlit films. And so what was happening was we would, we would close deals or, you know, put together a movie and then just set the start date for whenever people could get He's together. He's end rounding the COVID argument the that it wasn't the op-ed that Mr. it was Wiggum, COVID. In your many interactions argument. with Mr. Good Depp, questioning. have you ever seen him angry? Objection, Your Honor. It's a meeting. It's uh, foundational. In your it's many interactions, thank you, Your Honor. In, in your many interactions with Mr. Depp, uh, to what extent, if any, have you ever seen him lose his temper? I it would be the same objection. But... To what extent, if any, has Mr. Depp ever raised his voice in your presence? No, he never has. Mr. Wiggum, to what extent have you ever seen Mr. Depp engage in any violence? Never. Mr. Wiggum, other than Ms. Hurd, are you aware of any other woman who has ever accused Mr. Depp of physical Call abuse? Objection, leading foundation. Uh, uh, oh, she's sustain the She's going to sustain that, yeah. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Wiggum. All right. Um, I'll pass the witness. All right, Mr. Wiggum, we'll do cross-examination in about 15 minutes. Break. I'm going to take a 15-minute morning recess, okay, sir? All right, ladies and gentlemen, okay. we'll go ahead and take our morning recess. Uh, do not discuss the case with anybody and don't do any outside research, okay? So we're going to leave the court feet up until the jury's out of the courtroom. Um, this was Mr. Wiggum, what I'll do is put you in the lobby and then really I'll, important you testimony. won't see anything in about 15 minutes. I'll bring it back, okay? We're going to yeet you. Just sit there. All right, thank Just you. sit and wait. We're going to yeet you for a minute. We're going to go to some super chats. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to tweet that quote out in a minute. The jury's walking out. We're going to go to Super Chats. We're going to talk a little bit about Elaine's um, trying to block some of this testimony. She's fighting for her case. Point, we'll just come back at noon, okay? All right, All right, thank you. All right, so 15-minute break. Um, we're going to talk about that cross-examination, and we're going to watch as everybody leaves as I start to talk. Um, I like seeing the way people interact when we are going through... <sighs> And they go right to the seal. I like seeing how people interact. So there are over 25,000 of you here. Hi, law nerds. Good to see you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We just binged. We should probably celebrate that, right? We just binged at 240,000 law nerds up on this channel. So why don't we go ahead and celebrate that bing real quick? I heard Dr. Beats opening my door and I was like, what are, what are you looking for? We haven't even, we're barely at the morning break. We've got at least another hour before we get to the afternoon break. Oh, it binged. Move your head. Ah! So let us get to what was going on on cross a little bit. It always is a strategic 
balance between how you do cross-examination and how you highlight how interesting something is to the jury. The more you fight to keep something out, if it's going to come in, the jury's going to be like, ooh, this is important. Or, or they might think, ooh, this is bad for you. Like you're fighting for us not to hear it. And their little spidey senses are going to be like, all like, ooh, what's going on? And that is exactly what was happening with Johnny Depp's agent. Johnny Depp's agent is going to the reputational damage and the impact that this op-ed had on Depp's career. And I think Ben Chu did a great job of, of cornering the time so that there isn't a COVID argument. It's what happened between, you know, this article coming out at the very end of 2018, 2019 into 2020 when movies became a little harder to make due to COVID, or as he said at one point, COVID. But it really is getting around the argument or at least blocking the argument. It's kind of like when you play connect Four, and sometimes you're playing to build your own line. And sometimes you're playing to block somebody else from building their line. Um, so this is really him building to block the line of argument that look, the reason he wasn't getting movies, COVID people weren't getting movies. It made it very clear. No, this isn't a COVID issue. This is an issue that the um, damage was done because of the op-ed and why the op-ed was more impactful and the fact that he wasn't getting any studio films after that. It absolutely matters. It absolutely goes to um, it goes to the damage here in this hearsay or hearsay in this defamation case because the damage matters. It is a defamation case. The statements had to be damaging. The amount of damage that was done, the financial, will come later if Johnny Depp is found to win. If they find Amber Heard liable for defamation, then the financial bit will happen after that determination of liability. How come we only saw a direct examination of divorce Laura? Divert. Lord, divorce lawyer Laura Wasser. Say that 10 times fast. Only the cross. We saw a video deposition of Laura Wasser. I don't know why we didn't see any more of it. So we had only seen Bredhoff's questioning of her. It might have been because that's what they agreed on. It might be because of witness scheduling and they're going to come back to it later. I don't know. It hasn't been disclosed, but I. It might be that that's all the information they wanted to get in was the questioning by Elaine Bredhoff in that deposition. So I'm not sure. We might find out if they rest and don't play any more of it, then we'll know. Does it usually matter who goes first in court? Maddie AX? Yes, it does. And in acknowledgement that it matters, our court system in the U.S. is set up so that the person who has the burden of proof, the person who has to prove shit is the one who goes first and they're the one who goes last. So generally you will see a case in chief, then you will see the next party's case, and then you will get a rebuttal. I don't know if they'll get a rebuttal here, if they'll be able to bring a few rebuttal witnesses, but I think they're anticipating that they can because they are holding some of these witnesses for, um, they're not dismissing them, they're not releasing them. So they're holding them on recall, meaning the witness could be recalled to the stand. That would only happen in the rebuttal case. So just like you have direct examination, cross-examination, and then redirect examination, you also have the case in chief, then you get the opponent's case, Amber Heard's case, and then you generally get a rebuttal witness or some rebuttal witnesses if needed. It's not always done, but it is a possibility. It's same with closing arguments. You get closing from Depp, then closing from Heard, then closing again from Depp. The fact that Depp is the one that sued matters because it puts you not only in the position to have the burden, but you get to talk to the jury twice on closing. You get the opportunity to have a rebuttal case. It matters. Positioning in these things matter. So yes, it matters very much. I don't think she'll swing the jury or public. Milani Pallet, the recordings of her admitting abuse and assuming no one will believe him, she's done. It might be, but the jury can still say both of them are done. Um, they're broad, they've broadened the definition of abuse and they're going to continue to do that to say verbal abuse is abuse. And we've had the psychologists say verbal abuse is abuse. We've had, you know, the, the, you know, even this morning, Travis McGivern saying, yes, they were verbally abusing each other. So if the jury takes on that definition of abuse is her op-ed a lie. And that's, I think why they were pointing out the heading that said sexual violence again today, because they're going to say, look, even if you find that there was back and forth abuse does the sexual violence line go to Johnny Depp? And if it does, where, where do we see that? Have you heard about the Twitter issue with Johnny and his lawyer? No lawyer has his account suspended and Johnny also, I hadn't heard about that. Totally clueless. I'll go look at it later. Um, the jury's not going to know about it. And I was traveling. So I have not followed a ton of that. I was truly prepping for the podcast episode most of the day yesterday. 
Um, I also took a nap after I got home from travel. Emily, did you see the clip where the female officer stated Amber was not a domestic abuse victim? I did see that. And the determination for a criminal prosecution or for an arrest from the police officers can be different than how a jury dis- defines abuse in a civil case. But yes, they're going to bring it up on closing and say, look, all these officers said there's no abuse. But what the defense is going to argue, what Amber Heard's team is going to argue, is that that is a very narrow criminal definition of abuse, but that is not the only definition of abuse. The nuance take hello from Central Emily. Hello. I'm so glad you're here with us this morning, Emily. I'm here all day. Have a report that's due today and need your commentary in the background to get me through. You can do it. The nuance take. Finish your report. Yay. Hello, Andy. Thank you. No PR team could fix Grumpy on the bed. I mean, and then blaming it on the dogs. And I don't, again, what's happening in court, a PR team can't fix. The media, you know, should have some integrity and be reporting on what they're seeing coming out of court. And in the first half of this trial, it's Johnny Depp's side. He should be looking better in the court of public opinion than Amber Heard. Her story hasn't been presented yet. So it would be almost disingenuous if the news is like, but this is going to be presented. You don't know yet. It hasn't come out. The headlines might switch as the Heard's team takes Um, the stage, but we don't know yet. Um, Emily, could you close for Amber Heard using all the bingo bingo words? Uh, Turd, Amica cream, peen, casso, and muffins. Also, do you think Rotten Bourne's firm managers last week, um, firm's merger last week and sharing this defense case with Umbridge's firm in Amber Heard's detriment, go Lonards? I have no idea. I didn't know Rotten Bourne's firm had a merger last week. I think that they needed multiple firms on this. I don't know why these are the attorneys that she chose, but um, it seems that Elaine Bredhoff has a good reputation in the area. Um, And we've seen her be collegial with the judge. We've seen collegial moments. And then we've seen these cross-examinations that are just kind of abrasive. So I don't know how what's going on with the lawyers. Generally, when lawyers are in trial, nothing comes in. Like literally, it's like, uh, I need food. I need water. I need sleep. I need to work. And that's it. Like nothing else happens. You, everything kind of shuts down when you're in trial. So I don't know how much impact any of that would have. Uh, Tasha said, do you think the attorneys are paying attention to how the public is responding? Yes. If not, the PR team should be things like the makeup and adjusting their strategies. I think they probably have someone on their team paying attention to filter out the important and the not important. But yes, I absolutely think it matters. Um, Man Ray said, found your channel last week, already a stand. Well, welcome and thank you. A lot of you have found it um, recently. Hello, Crystal. Hello from Cambria, Australia. Good to always good to see the international crew. It's it's such a fascinating trial. We're so deeply invested. Liz, also in Australia, got a huge day technically today, yet here I am. <laughs> get some sleep. This will be here on the replay crew. Thank you for the best commentary, mom. You're welcome. I appreciate it. I am totally going to, I will, I will be YouTube lawyer, mom. I'm here for it. Can the jury award things other than money? If I were on the jury, I would include a box of muffins in the judgment. The jury doesn't get to be shady like that. They can award punitive damages and compensatory damages. They can only award money. They can't be like, you need to apologize publicly. They can think it, but they can't force it to happen. Emily, love your unbiased take on the lawsuits. I try in this world of embellishments and fake news. You are someone I can trust. You're welcome. Thank you for your time and effort. I mean, I'm, we're going to talk about what's happening in court, what the jury's seeing and how I think they're going to respond to it. So there's going to be, we're going to be talking about Johnny Depp a lot. And then we're going to start talking about Amber Heard. The hard thing for Heard's case is we're going to be juxtaposing it to what Johnny Depp said. That's the power of going first. So we are going to be talking um, back and forth with that. Ariana said, welcome back. Thanks for recommending Legal Bites. Loved watching them last week. Thank you so much. Legal Bites has a panel. So all the the law tubers that are covering the trial, we all do it in kind of a different way. And y'all get to pick um, what works best for you and when and how. And there's room for everybody. And we all have different experience. And I come at this really from a trial attorney perspective because that is what I did. So when I'm yelling objections before they're yelling objections, it's because that's what I did for a living. And that I am very much in that mindset right now. What about tech guy for JD? Surely they will call him. I don't know. We'll see. We're going to see what else they call. I mean, I don't, I don't know if they're going to do it and have any other witnesses after this. I don't know really what is left. This is one of the most important witnesses for Depp along with the ACLU. Um, Are lawyers on opposing sides mean to each other? It depends. Or friendly in the hall when in passing. The Hale family, it really, really depends. 
Um, in criminal law, it tends to work a little bit differently because the amount of lawyers is smaller. And if you burn someone or are really just, if you really can't get along with someone, it can make your life awful and work. And I'll tell some of those stories in our members only live stream this month. Um, if, if that's interesting, but they generally try to get along, but sometimes in cases they just cannot get along and can be very distant and cold. We've seen some collegial exchanges in this case. Um, and we've seen some collegial exchanges with the bench. Generally, you can be doing your job in court, objecting to stuff and not make it personal. It also will depend on the tenor of the emails, how difficult scheduling was back and forth. But professional attorneys can kind of fight for their clients in court. That's their job, their advocates, and still be civil to one another outside of court. Does it always happen? No, it doesn't. Um, OG, I talked about why Depp lost the UK case in other coverage it's a different standard of law. It's a different fact finder, and it's a different question. The different question in that case was, was there enough to substantiate the son making the claims they've made? It's different than Heard saying it herself, because if the son believed Heard and that was reasonable, that's different than if Heard knew herself that she was lying. So it's a very different question. And again, one fact finder instead of a jury. And in this case, the jury that will be deciding the case will go down to five and they will decide unanimously. Do you think Hurd's team can pull this around? We'll see. We're going to, that's what we're watching for. How are they going to address some of these uh, misstatements or lies? How are they going to address the UK testimony? What's cross-examination going to look like? I want to see how Depp's attorneys perform on cross-examination. Are they going to have this same go for the jugular style or is it going to be firm when needed, but otherwise the same pacing of questioning they've done? We'll see. Skylar, could Depp's team be waiting until Amber's case to raise more of a grumpy about Amber's team's refusal to turn over the phone? Could be. Um, they could be addressing it behind the scenes on Fridays. There's no testimony in court, but the attorneys are still working on Fridays and some of that could have been addressed. We just haven't seen it yet. Um, is the jury selected during secluded during the whole time? No, they're not sequestered. They're not taken away from their homes and living in hotels, but they are instructed to not engage in any media or coverage of this case, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Amy said, I missed you. I watched all the daily streams. Well, welcome. I am back. I know it's, I was only planning on covering Depp's testimony and Heard's testimony. And now we're all invested and we started from the bottom and now we're here. Like we're just we're all, I feel like we're all just invested. I'm invested. You're invested. We're invested. We're here. Am I seeing this? Amber's day 13 suit looks similar to Depp's day 12 suit. That's what it looks like. We'll have to go to, I will have to go to the internet and look for comparisons because a, it's a lot has happened for me since, <laughs> since uh, Thursday last week, but yes, I'll go look. Um, Peter, <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, uh, glad you're back. Thank you. Can you talk about what they do on Fridays? Something about arguing motions. Can the uh, the judge said on Thursday that they had 20. They argue motions. They go through the evidence that's going to be coming up. They go through the depositions and the objections to them. They do the legal work this, that keeps this case moving on Fridays. P over here, XPR for firm sued for wrongful termination. I don't think so. They probably have clauses in their arguments. And I think that her uh, ex-crisis PR team is probably just as bad to be done. Can Heard's team arguing so much about the reality of abuse hurt their argument that the op-ed wasn't about Depp? Um, possibly, but I think the ACLU testimony, I mean, I feel like that shit's right out of the horse already because the ACLU's testimony made it very clear that the article was about Depp. Like very, very clear. I don't think they can argue around that in, I mean, they can try, but I think it would come off as disingenuous. I believe Amber asking for more millions from Johnny Depp was another form of abuse. She knew um, he would fold and just not argue. And we heard that from the CPA last week. It's a long, long time paralegal in Michigan. Glad you're back. Glad I am here, Patty Sasser. It's good to be back. Thank you guys. I'm going to try to get to as many questions as I can. Um, question, will they call a plastic surgeon? Amber Heard had, has botched, botched cheek implants, which require constant filler, which can explain the upper cheek bruises. I don't know. Will they let her lie? Doctor on rebuttal to use in case in chief. It, it depends on what she says. It depends on cross-examination and it depends, but they can bring rebuttal witnesses at the end. So it really, really just depends. I don't know. I don't know anything about her cheek implants. Truly. Good morning. New t-shirt idea. Objection, your honor. My question calls for fuckery. Not facts. I'm out of here. Alejandro. <laughs> Alejandro was definitely out of there. Um, is there an art to when you have a witness testify? Corey, 
Great question. I would love to tell you. Yes. Um, you're telling a story and where you put the different chapters in the book absolutely matters. You want the jury to be able to build it in their mind. Sometimes you want to use witness credibility to bolster other or witness testimony and credibility to bolster other witness testimony. So you're building them on each other because when you bring, you bring in the, um, forensic psychologist and she bolsters a lot of what Johnny Depp has to say, the jury can go, Oh, see, she's saying this, but I remember hearing this audio of this and it starts to connect the dots in their mind. So helping them connect the dots and bringing the witnesses in, in that order matters. So when you have the LAPD testify matters, but which order those three go in, I don't know if it matters so much. I think it mattered to have the video at the last one so that people would listen to the other two. But yes, there is an art to that, but scheduling witnesses can be very difficult and sometimes things just go out of order, but the jury can lose the story if you have to go out of order too much. So yes, it definitely matters. It is definitely strategized. It is something that's discussed because again, think of them like chapters in a book. If you put the chapter in the wrong place, you're like, what the fuck is going on with this story? You're like, you've got a weird time jump and it doesn't make sense. Thank you so much, Holly Parker. I love the purple too. I appreciate it. Um, Gandalf security, none shall pass moon dragon. It was interesting testimony that Depp was upset because he got punched by herd and security didn't stop it. It was very, very interesting testimony to me. And it seemed that Travis McGivern worked closely with herd. And when he was talking about all the traveling he did, he was traveling with her. And that was a very interesting testimony. Um, that was very interesting testimony. I thought this morning as a CPA corporate financial auditor, I was absolutely captivated watching the accountant testify last week. Yes. And the coverage of her non-donations. Yes. It, I hope the jury saw how impactful that testimony was. Some of us that love the more technical side of this were like, oh, I don't know. It'll come back around on cross of Amber Heard because they're going to say, you went on this talk show. You said this. You said you donated. But you didn't. That's all going to come up. And the thing is, once they've caught her in a couple lies, I don't see anything that Johnny Depp's been caught lying about. Do you? Um, and that's going to matter. Who's lying here is the heart of the entire freaking case. Um, how did she fire her PR team? I have no idea. Probably calling them saying what the fuck. And then saying, I'm, I'm not working with you anymore. Um, she's allowed to not read watch. She can do anything. She can do the things she's not under oath right now. She's not testifying. She can do the things. And her legal team is probably talking to her about it too. There's no doubt. Amber Heard is watching exactly how she's being covered in this case. Um, Johnny Depp seems to hire good people and value them. He does. He seems to like having interesting people around him. Like I would have a chat with Alejandro. I think he's great. I would, all of the security guys were fascinating to me. I would want Ben, ben King to sit down at dinner and tell me his life story. Like all the people that have come in for Depp seemed fascinating. Um, what is the purpose of taking notes from Amber Heard or Johnny Depp or the purpose for the plaintiffs? Things that they think are interesting, things that they want to remember. And it also helps keep people engaged in, I mean, I'm taking notes because I want to cover it, but it also helps keep me engaged in what's going on. And some of that might be um, the purpose for them too, is to stay engaged with what's going on. Um, so she's ready. She's ready to go on cross and we're going to hear more of it. I'm, I, uh, this cross is going to be interesting, isn't it? I know it's privilege, but to see these notes and post-its she's writing, I mean, I would love right. to see what Mr. she's Wood having to say. You hear me okay? This trial on your coverage yes, is redirecting All my right. travel stress. Thank you. Well, this you're welcome. This first question should pop up there. He'll come right. up then. Yeah, okay. cross-examination. Cross-examination. Mr. Right. Wiggum, you testified that you closed a deal welcome. for Mr. Depp for Pirate 6 with him acting as Jack Sparrow. Do you recall that testimony? You closed a deal, sir. Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Wiggum, could you do me a favor and just count from one to five for me so you, I can get you on my big screens here? Sure. One, two, this is going to be interesting. Four, five. Not getting this. There you Viral go. Flower. Okay, Can thank you, you say sir. hi to my best friend it. Sal? Hi, Sal. You're amazing. But in fact, Mr. Wiggum, it's excited. not true that Mr. Hi, Depp Sal. ever had a contract with Disney for Pirate Six. Isn't that correct? The isn'ts are hard for me. Can you explain that question? Yeah. Could you ask position? a better question? Have you ever seen a contract? that Oof. provides for Mr. Depp she to sounds play patronizing. Pirate 6. She doesn't mean to be, but she, she sounds patronizing. I, to the best of my knowledge, my memory, myself and my partner closed an, an optional picture deal for the amount of an money optional. of what that picture would be for Johnny. 
and you would you would make sure to have that in writing, wouldn't you? Oh, so patronizing. You know, that would normally go through legal counsel in terms of the codification of it. Do you have any <laughs> explanation for why there exists nothing, no piece of paper, nothing suggesting that Mr. Depp ever had a deal with Disney for Pirate 6? Objection, Absumes lack of facts, foundation, not in evidence. compound. Assumes uh, facts, not in evidence. So uh, I often close when I was an agent. We would work on many deals where I actually wouldn't see contracts. They were verbal in nature. And then, you know, especially on, on optional pictures, just so there was an understanding of what the money would be. So do you have an explanation why there is not even like a piece a of paper, date? not an email, not a text, not a piece, not a document, nothing that suggests that Mr. Depp is going to be in Pirate 6 as Jack Sparrow? Objection, asked and answered. I, I don't believe evidence. it was. So overruled. Uh -huh. It's a good line of questioning. Uh, it, I mean, if, if you're asking me my opinion, it wouldn't necessarily be alarming because that would be a conversation usually to understand Disney's going to want to know, are we on the same uh, page? Are we on the same uh, page about what the money's going to be? And most of that conversation, if I remember correctly, was also with one of Johnny's lawyers. Okay. And, and so sense. you, you had, so Johnny's lawyer was discussing this, but there's no document. Do you have an explanation for that? He just did. Well, you may know better than me if there is a document, but that, that was Jake Bloom, you know, at the time, I believe, if memory serves me correct. All right. But you, it, would it be fair to say that you have never seen a document that provides that Mr. Depp was going to be in Pirate 6? It, it would be fair to say that it was consistent with a lot of the conversations that I would have on behalf of Big Stars, where it was verbal and there was an understanding Sadie, of... That's why I what call the, her Umbridge. What the deal was going to be. Mr. Wiggum, if you could please answer my question. He did. Objection, harassment. He did answer the question. <laughs> I'll allow you to ask your question. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Judy. Can, you, can you repeat the question? Sorry. Yeah, Judy, I've lost you it and you're back. yelling. Oh, Thank you. she asked the court reporter to read it back because she forgot what she asked. So now the court reporter has to look back and read back the question and we'll hear it in just All a moment. Right. Was going to be in Pirate 6. It, it, it would be fair to say that I have not seen a document on Pirates. Now, just so you know. I don't, I, Mr. Wiggum, I don't Mr. give a Wiggum, shit about your I don't, I don't need you to give me extra. I just want you to answer mine. Just answer I the just question. want <laughs> to know, have you ever seen a document that says Mr. Depp is going to be in Pirate 6? I, I only, to, to fully answer the question though, I think there's, uh, that's that's, that's no. That's an easy answer. yes or no. Have you seen a document? He needs to just yeah, answer. Technically, I, I perhaps have because it connects to all the other pirates' films. It's just a modification of a new document. So I, I have not seen twenty two point five million written on a page. You're correct about that. Okay. He's trying to now, narrow the answer, you, and she's in trying fact, to broaden uh, had the answer. discussions back in two thousand sixteen. <laughs> and 2017 with Mr. Bailey, Sean Bailey, you talked about him a little bit ago, right? Yeah. And, and, and you also had discussions with Jerry Bruckheimer in 2016 and 2017, correct? Yes. About Mr. Depp potentially being in Pirate Six, correct? I agree, Jeff or Jen. And then you, and then you had discussions in 2018 with Mr. Easy. Bailey, and he was quite non-committal about whether Mr. Depp would be in Pirate 6, correct? It's already compound as fuck. Objection hearsay? Compound. Okay. okay. Given that he was able to... I, uh, I'll state I, as I, hearsay. I, I, is hearsay. Okay. Motion right. to strike. So you so you determined, Mr. Wiggum, that by the fall of 2018, it was very likely that Mr. Depp was not going to be in Pirate 6. Is that correct? Interesting. It's a two-pronged answer from my perspective, because there was really two 
individuals involved in that decision. I would say Jerry Bruckheimer and Sean Bailey. Jerry Bruckheimer in the fall of 2018 really wanted Johnny in that next film. And Sean Hello to the dinner party. On committal, as you said. And Mr. Bruckheimer made it clear to you that Mr. Bailey was the one who gets to decide because he's Disney, right? Ultimately, and he also wanted to be the tip of the spear to really try to convince Sean. Okay. Now, do you recall? Bruckheimer wanted to convince Bailey. Don't walk away from the mic. This witness isn't in court. He can't hear you. Where are you going? She's just wandering around down there. Oh, Lordy. Do you don't recall forget having your things. deposition taken on January 20, 2021? Okay. Yes, ma'am. With you. Okay. You <laughs> that, up, Michelle. that was a lovely experience, wasn't it, sir? I'm going to ask you to turn ah! to page 44. And Mr. Wiggum, you were under oath at the time of this deposition, correct? She's so hard to listen to. Correct? Yeah. Yes, ma'am. Line 10. Oh. This is page 44, line 10. The question, do you recall approximately when in 2018 you inferred from Mr. your discussion with Mr. Bailey that the likelihood of Mr. Depp being in Pirate 6 was not high or was going away? And your answer at that time was, if memory serves me, the latter part of 2018, maybe. Question, when you say latter, is that any time from August to December or what are you thinking? Answer, I would say fall you know, maybe, you know, October, November, December in that area. Do you recall giving that testimony under oath at that time? I, I do now that I see it, yes. Okay. He recalls that testimony. That'll be asked about on redirect there though. There were quite a few things going on earlier in 2018 that might have had a bit of an a, a, a impact on Mr. Depp's reputation. Would you agree? That's vague. If you, it might help if you refresh your recollection. Sure, sure. But and before I go there, She's though, so I think you said that the reason it was so catastrophic for Mr. Depp for the op ed was because it was a first person account of Johnny, right? Do you remember saying that? Yes. Okay. Wasn't it a first person account when Ms. Heard filed for the TRO in 2016? compound but it's fair so that that would have predated any relationship i had to johnny so i, I had no knowledge of that okay so you don't know whether it was catastrophic then it, he was still I, getting I, roles if you're asking me my opinion on on something i don't know i can form an opinion right now uh it's a he was still getting document roles. and probably a little different than an op-ed in the washington post um, but I would agree it's not a, now that I'm forming an opinion, that it's not a great headline for sure. When you read the op-ed, did you read it online or did you read it in the actual post paper? I don't remember. Well, let's pull up plaintiff's exhibit two. Okay, pull up plaintiff's exhibit two. Does this refresh your recollection? It should be the mobile version. Oh no, not the mobile version. Very hard for me to see. Is that is that just the can, paper? Can we? We're going to try to scroll in a little bit more. Again, just if you can help me. I, is that the paper? <laughs> yes. The yeah. Yes, that's the Washington tell. Post. What are you showing me? So, uh, what's the question? Sorry. Do you re does this help refresh your recollection of whether you saw it in print or whether you saw it online? It does not. But I'll tell you that I did not typically pick up the Washington Post. You know. Okay. I and so that's while what we're we sitting here, if, that's if the you point. can, just for a second, uh, you're saying that then two years ago I became oops, I better not do that. <laughs> Look at that one. Then two years ago, Whoops. I became a public figure representing domestic abuse. Look, a human that's moment. That's this first person from Ms. Heard that's catastrophic for Mr. Depp. Is that your testimony? No, that's not what he said. That's not what he said. He said the whole op-ed, which includes My the sexual violence headline. That it, 
reads like a victim statement from someone involved and the recipient and it became a, a yes a bit of a death nail catastrophic thing for mr depp in the hollywood community all right well let's go to let's pull up defendants exhibit 99 99 why does she say it like that now there was in fact an article published in the sun newspaper by dan wooten the editor-in-chief on april 27 2018 do you recall that they're trying to get to the damage of other things than Does the that, that refreshes your recollection that's why we're here and in fact yes. this article calls Mr. Depp a wife beater, does it not? Objection hearsay. I, I, I'll allow it for the It is hearsay, but also uh, you know what I can't I can't see the print even with these glasses, but uh I can't right. see the print. Just stop well, answering there if you I'll can't see it. Word for it. Don't do that. Don't take her word for anything. Well the the title here is how can JK Rowling be genuinely happy casting wife beater Johnny Depp in the new Fantastic Beast film. Objection. Do you see that? I allow that. Did you see it? Is the thing. Yes. Okay. You're in, I'd like to move the admission of this exhibit. I, I think mm -mm. at this point, it's not mm -mm. offered to prove the truth of the matter asserted, but mm -mm. it's going to mm -mm. offer it. He's testified uh -uh. to comparisons uh -uh. of other articles. Nope, 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 he, he's, nope, nope, He's nope, testifying nope, 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 to nope. the impact of the op-ed. I think it's in fairness, we should be able to put this nope. in. Stop and be trying to make fetch happen. They're going to approach. It's, it's, it's not offered here. to prove the it's truth of the matter asserted. It's sustain the objection. Okay. Well, let's go to... He can form an opinion about the whether that page. article was as damaging. Let's go to the fourth page. Ask him so that it has A5, I think, is what I'm trying to get to. Oh, my God. So it says paragraph seven. You guys are like, does she have to speak like this? No, she doesn't. This is a choice. So do you recall that it says in here? Um, Objection hearsay, Your Honor. You're on, She's just you're trying on. to backdoor your ruling. She is trying to backdoor your ruling. Yes, Ben Chu. Get it. Get it. Get it. They have approached. Stop trying to make Fetch happen. They want that UK article in, and here's why. The UK article came out in April 2018 calling Depp a wife beater. So they are trying to say, and they are trying to make the argument, which they need to make, that it was not, in fact, Amber Heard's op-ed that did the thing, but it was this uh, Sun UK article that did the damage. The Sun UK article had that headline up for less than 24 hours when I covered that case. The headline on the online version of Amber Heard's op-ed is still up to this day. So did the Sun UK um, article that was mostly about JK Rowling do the same damage as the op-ed is what they're trying to get to, to say, see, ladies and gentlemen, the op-ed didn't do the damage. This Sun UK article did the damage. And she is very much trying to make fetch happen. It's not going to happen. So let's see. Um, who hurt Umbridge? She is trying to protect her client. Mr. Wiggum. But it makes it seem like they're losing in the, the way she's trying to do it. The article also had pictures, did it not? Uh, he doesn't recall. know. Do you recall whether it had a picture of Ms. Hurd? Jackson hearsay, Your Honor. Yep. I, I love that. Because he do said it doesn't do work. Recall. <laughs> Thank you, Ashley. Can we go that, to... That's what I heard, too. When she said 99, all I heard was nine page? times. It's kind of the same vibe as the principal from Ferris Bueller's. I'm showing you the picture right now. Does that refresh your recollection? Your Honor, uh, hearsay, lack of foundation. Yeah, I'll allow it. If he, it, if he it, knows. It doesn't speak to my... And that's a big point, Bonnie. Of when I read it or how I read it, but... I see the photo. Yes, He's like, it doesn't right. refresh my recollection. And in fact, it shows bruises on it, doesn't it? Objection. On face. Objection, lack of foundation. It doesn't refresh his recollection. Overruled. She's trying to back route the ruling. That would be what I see, yes. Okay. Now, Mr. Depp filed a lawsuit against the Sun newspaper and against Dan Wooten for this article, correct? How does he know? Does he know? I believe so. June 13, 2018. He's not going to know that. 
Let's pull up uh, 1599, defendants 1599. How is it going to refresh his recollection if he doesn't know? Does this refresh your recollection? Objection hearsay, Your Honor. It's used to refresh, so it's I'm, not hearsay. Uh, just for refreshing recollection, I'll allow. It's used to refresh. He doesn't know because he doesn't. He didn't pay attention to uh, whether it was filed or not. I, I, just so I understand the question, you're asking, does it refresh a memory that Johnny filed against the son? Yes, and Dan Wooten. On June 13, 2018. Uh, she wants that information in really badly, so sure. she keeps She's saying it. Okay. Over and over. It, yeah. All right. And he did so in the UK, in the High Court of Justice, correct? She's like, I don't know. I believe so. You, oh. you would know better than I. Okay. And if we can just turn to page nine. And do you recall that Mr. Depp alleged that that article had caused him serious harm to his personal this and professional reputation? Objection, hearsay, calls for speculation. I'll allow the question. Thank you. No, I don't recall. I'm going to ask you to take a look at paragraph 11. If he doesn't recall, he doesn't recall. Okay. Thank you. I'm gonna... Your Honor, I, is there a way to even make that screen bigger on mine? I wish I was... Had better glasses they, and more technological stuff. They can make it a little bigger, but I think that's about as far as it can go. I'm going to try to highlight it here so that that might help you a little bit. Let me switch. It's all Mallory. Over. And the thing is, he's so, already done a deposition with her. Do you recall her. that Mr. He Depp knows. alleged that the he article by in the Sun newspaper by Dan Wooten had caused serious harm to the claimant's personal and professional reputation? It's again, it's hearsay. It's calling for hearsay. You're asking me, I, I don't recall it. I was not involved in that case at all. Uh, I'm able to read what's in front of me. Right. But you don't recall it, and you don't recall if that had any impact on, on Disney asked in 2018. Answered. Objection asked and answer. I'll sustain the objection. Next yep. question. All right. Do you recall that Mr. Depp also alleged that he was caused significant distress and embarrassment? by the publication of that article. I'm sure that's true, but it doesn't lessen the impact of this one. No, that, I don't recall that. Okay. I, I, I see that because I just was not involved in that case. He I, didn't pay attention because right. it didn't matter My as much as this one did. That was, it was a, a tabloid, so, and the, the lawyers- There were it is. All right, Michelle, you can take that down. It was Thank a tabloid. You. Now, there was That's a trial the in the UK. Was there not on Mr. Depp's Ooh, claims no. of libel Stop against trying to make Dan happen. Wooten and the son? She's trying to get this ruling in. I believe so. And it was in July of 2020, was it not? I don't remember the date, actually. All right, and it lasted three weeks. Do you recall that? I don't, but I'll take your word for it. Do you recall there being an enormous amount of publicity surrounding that trial? Objection calls for speculation, uh, lack of foundation. He said he did. Thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Wiggum, you said you did. Recall that? Asked and answered. <laughs> Let her finish it. This is what redirect is I, for. I remember there being press around it, yes, ma'am. Okay, and in fact, uh, do you recall that Mr. Depp gave testimony for four days? She just wants the jury to hear her say this stuff. Not he doesn't remember. I don't. Do you recall that Ms. Hurd gave testimony for four days? I I don't recall any specific. He didn't pay attention. Specific memory because it didn't matter. Testified for how long or any any. And that's the redirect. Details within the case. Do you recall there being many many witnesses testifying at that case? on that case. It was before. I think I'd revert to my answer just now. Okay. And the press that surrounded that case, do you recall it being, uh, focusing on things like Mr. Depp's drug and alcohol use? S same answer. Do you recall there being the video, the kitchen video being shown repeatedly? Objection. Your Honor, may we approach? Sure. He said he didn't remember any of this. She just wants the jury to hear her say all of this. 
She's going to try to get into stuff she can't get into. She should just ask the question she wants to ask, which was more damaging. And that is going to come up and redirect. And he's going to say, I think, based on his other testimony, that the Sun UK was not as damaging because it's a gossip columnist in a tabloid and people don't treat it with the same weight. And the focus of the article was J.K. Rowling and what J.K. Rowling was doing, not Johnny Depp. Like, how is J.K. Rowling okay with this? Fuck J.K. That was kind of the 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 weight of that article. It's very different than as he described the op-ed, more of a victim impact statement in a, I guess you would say more reputable or more traditional I think my last question news was, outlet. do you recall there being a lot of publicity surrounding Mr. Depp's That wasn't your last question. Use? The judge overruled you. That was not your last question. I think I answered that, oh, that right. That's right. I was on the video, the kitchen video. Do you recall there being the, the kitchen video being played pretty repeatedly in the press? He didn't watch it. He doesn't know. No, I don't. Do you recall a lot of pictures of Ms. Hurd reflecting bruises, a cuts, lot. injuries? He's like, nope. I, I think uh, just to be clear, I, I don't recall anything that was going on within the case. I was always consumed with next film and TV opportunities and that was being handled by the lawyers. Do you, my memory. do you recall, I just have a couple more to ask you on this. Do you recall there being great, allegations delightful. of at least Goody. 14 incidents of domestic violence against <sighs> Ms. Heard in that trial? I do not with specificity, same answer. Now, could we bring up exhibit number one again? She Plaintiff? wants to make fetch happen. She's not going to make fetch happen. It's interesting to see the reactions. Now, Mr. Wiggum, do you know who wrote Amber Heard, I spoke up against sexual violence and faced our culture's wrath this has to change? Well, the byline says Amber Heard right there. You're talking about the title? Yes. Uh, I wouldn't say that. I, to me, I, I would have assumed it was Ms. Heard. You assumed, but you don't know, do you? Okay. I do not. Okay. And were you aware that there were also three pleaded incidents of sexual violence in the UK trial? Oh. Against Ms. Heard by Mr. Depp? No, ma'am. Okay. Now, your testimony They're is- They're going to try to make that happen too. Your testimony is that since some point in 2020, uh, Mr. Depp has not had any uh, more movie opportunities. Is that correct? Wasn't exactly what he said. He said studio movies. Since, sorry. He said Repeat studio movies. Date. When is the last time Mr. Depp had a movie opportunity? Studio. He said studio. The last film that he shot was Minamata, to the best of my memory. All right. And in fact, do you know whether the... Uh, the the article that was in the UK, the ensuing lawsuit that was brought by Mr. Depp, and the ensuing trial and all the publicity, do you know whether that had any impact on Mr. Depp's career? Objection compound. Uh, all right, I'll sustain the objection. Do you know whether the collection of all of those items I just listed had an impact on Mr. Depp's career. If, remind me of the dates that you're asking about. So, so the answer I, I take it is no, you don't know, correct? I, I'm, I'm just trying to make sure I give you a, a correct answer so I understand the question. You referenced after 2020. Okay, the, what you're saying? the, the article was April of 2018. The lawsuit was June of 2018. The trial was July of 2020. What opportunities has Mr. Depp had since July 2020? Since July 2020, 
he has not uh, done a film. Thank you. I have no further questions. All right, redirect. Thankfully, we're done with Cross. It's gonna it's gonna be lunchtime soon in the court, probably after this redirect. Good afternoon again, Mr. Wiggum. Uh, do you recall Ms. Bredehoft asked you uh, questions about whether you ever side. actually saw a document uh, containing the twenty-two and a half million dollar deal for Mr. Depp for Pirate Six? Do you recall that? I do. This is the most and important you recall, part of redirect. When you were I think. trying to answer her question, you said you needed a little more context. Do you recall that? Yes. And would you please now provide the jury that context so they can context, have a fuller please. understanding of what your what your testimony is? So often on a franchise movie, when you're dealing with big stars and you're talking about future optional pictures, uh, you engage at the high level, uh, meaning the president or the, the top of the studio to get an understanding of what that deal is going to, going to be. They then get papered, typically, when I say papered, it amended because it's, it's based on the same contract, usually that's been in existence. And it would get, sometimes we don't see paperwork or get paperwork until the film is happening. Industry standard. And, and Mr. Wiggum, on a similar line, uh, Ms. Bredehoft asked you some questions about whether after this deal was done, it was uh, starting to trend badly with respect to Disney and not so, and, and, what, and still well with respect to Mr. Bruckheimer in the fall of 2018. Do you remember that testimony? I do. When was it? that Disney made the final decision as to whether Mr. Depp would be in Pirate 6. What, she wants to object? I'll sustain the objection. It, I'll sustain the objection. No, it was question. to when. Ask, ask, mm, it was again. Mr. Wiggum, it, it may have been trending badly as of that time, but Disney had not gone in, in the other direction, correct? No. So the, the overruled all that. You may, you may continue. The email you showed me earlier was two days after the op-ed, and and I was saying that Disney had never said that Johnny would not be in the film as of that date. Overall, right. and my it, it was my testimony is the exact same as the deposition, which is it was trending badly in the late fall on behalf of Disney, but I was, but Jerry Brockheimer and I were lobbying to make it happen. And so we had hope and it became clear to me in early 2019 that it was over. Thank you very much. Thank very you very much, much, Mr. Wiggum. No further questions. All right. Thank you. Is this witness subject to recall? Yes, Your Honor. Meaning All right, Mr. Wiggum, since you're subject to recall, you're still subject to the rule on witnesses, so you cannot discuss your testimony with anybody and you will cannot we get watch lunch? any of the trial. Okay, sir? Will we get lunch or will okay. we get right, another you're free witness? for today. Thank you. Right. Will we get lunch? Thank you. Thank you. Will we get another witness? All right, your next witness. Another witness. Your Honor, before we call the next witness, may we approach briefly for okay, a moment? Okay, sure. Okay. Um, I think what we took from that witness is his opinion that the op-ed was damaging and that's what killed pirates though. The pirates movie, it sounds like was a little bit on the hook. We already knew there were creative differences between Sean Bailey at Disney and Johnny Depp. We've heard testimony of that, but it, the way that um, bridge was trying to fight it out, I think would wake the jury up. We definitely got some information about the UK stuff going on, and we'll see what happens with that. She's probably not involved in this next witness. This lawyer is. So this lawyer is going to be calling the next witness. This is probably the lawyer doing cross. But you've got all of the, you know, kind of the lead counsels up here to have a conversation with the judge. Let's get some more super chats before we get into this next witness. New subscriber, been awesome watching your breakdown and commentary of the whole case. Keep up the great work. Well, thank you. I just call it like I see it. It's kind of fun. Um, by kind of, I mean a fuck ton of fun. I really enjoy doing this with y'all. Emily from Northern Ireland for a super chat. Welcome. Thank you. Love your content. Fan of the cursey words. I loved that quote. Fuck is my favorite word. We might need merch that says the F word is my favorite. Mm -hmm questions is it possible they're trying to show no matter how angry he was he never got physical with her yes even after she spat at him yes 
he hit the um he hit the the cabinet doors and he threw clothes and he got physical with things not people and that's kind of the way they're trying to go um good how you doing sir well i'm sure see from whitney at some point i didn't hear his name you can sit down sir so we'll hopefully get that in just a moment no we are still on johnny depp's case this is johnny depp's lawyer calling this witness state your name good afternoon mr marks uh good afternoon is it richard marks state your full name for the record Richard Edward Marks. And Mr. Marks, where do you live? I live in Hollywood. Could you tell oh, us a little bit live. about your educational background, sir? I'm I'm a product of the um, <laughs> public school system in Los Angeles, <laughs> uh, and I went to uh, UCLA undergraduate. Go Bruins! And I'm a graduate of the uh, UCLA School of Law. When did you graduate Go from Bruins. UCLA School of Law? I graduated in uh, 1973, <laughs> and I've been an officer Sorry, of the courts I don't, uh, since then, almost I want to see somebody try to cross this man that's been a work? lawyer since 1973. Uh, I work at uh, my own law firm, Richard Marks and Associates. What is Richard Marks and Associates? Uh, it is um, a transactional entertainment uh, law firm. And we represent individuals, uh, writers, directors, actors, books, uh, but uh, authors, but mainly we represent uh, producers who are developing a, a product, if you will, to very be savvy with the jury, and then exploited. Looking at them on to explain television features, streaming, sense. things like that. When you say a transactional law firm, what do you mean by that? Uh, what I do is make deals. They're transactions. I'm a deal guy. So my whole practice Stuck. all these decades has been about getting to yes. How do you make a deal? And then how do you get it documented so people sign it and then are able, it's clear enough that it can be administered uh, and people can know what to do after you've made He's the deal. He's very comfortable talking to the jury and explaining what types, types of clients do you work like with? well as i said um uh i, I work with all <laughs> kinds of clients but the, well, the my bigger clients and the bulk of my practice is representing producers uh, who produce they develop and they he produce totally, content for exploitation he totally sounds like jack Nicholson. are there any particular clients that you can identify yeah i've been working for a long time uh with um uh, uh, ITV, uh, which is a, a, a huge British company with worldwide uh, reach in uh, entertainment. I'm with ITV. They produce uh, The Voice, Love Island. And right now, I've done all the uh, development legal work on a miniseries that's about to shoot in uh, France. I just want to know. England, starring Michael Douglas as Benjamin Franklin. It's based on a novel that we optioned. I helped them option years ago. Then scripts were written for the eight hours. Then Michael Douglas was engaged. The director was engaged. And I do all those contracts. And that's ITV. Um, another one of my uh, uh, big clients is Village Roadshow. They're an Australian company. Um, they, they partner with Warner Brothers and they produce movies like Matrix, uh, Aquaman, yeah. Scooby Doo. He said Aquaman. Uh, right now, I didn't have I'm that on my bingo card. On a television series for them doing the legal production and and before that it was development, but the production legal work on a reboot of the old uh, College Bowl uh, show, where two colleges come together with teams and answer questions, and and here they're going to win scholarships. And the hosts are uh, Peyton Manning and Eli Manning. So that's currently what I'm working on for Village Wait, Roadshow. Peyton Manning and Elon Manning Any having other clients? Eli Manning having. And, uh, I would their say own my, my third uh, big client is uh, a company called uh, Media Rights MRC, uh, and they they produce movies and, and TV shows. Recently, I've I've done a lot of work for them. Uh, they are finishing up a a, a mini series. <laughs> Yes, I'm doing the legal work. The on authority building Apple, plus the grift, starring Billy Crudup. Uh, we, we just finished a, a miniseries for them called Terminal List with Chris Pratt, 
uh, that's for Amazon. Uh, and, and we recently finished um, a, a mini series doing the legal deal making uh, for MRC um, on, a, on a show uh, called The Shrink Next Door, which is aired. Uh, it um, does it star Dr. Uh, Curry starred Will Ferrell, Dr. And, Curry, uh, Paul Rudd, Dr. Curry. And then I, I you know, I can't leave out, uh, uh, my longest client, which is the producers of, uh, Bosch, uh, for, uh, Amazon. <laughs> Let me tell you who else uh, I work with. <laughs> it's gotta be nine, 10 years ago when we w went into Amazon, they had never produced a series. I just want to hear him talk. And we negotiated a deal. This is probably for, irrelevant, but I don't care. Michael Conley's book series, uh, and uh, we cast uh, Titus Welliver as Bosch. They wouldn't order a series; they would only order a pilot. And now, uh, <laughs> now the they're next like, "Why?" Days, <laughs> what I call the eighth season, but which is the first season of the spinoff, will uh, be available on IMDb TV instead of Wait. on Amazon, but Amazon owns IMDb TV. IMDb has uh, a TV? And, um, and we're in right now writing the, uh, the ninth season. So I've had this long run with this um, uh, one particular uh, series. Can you tell the jury a little bit about the types of deals that you work on for these clients? Well, it, when you think of, um, of, a, of a, a series or a motion picture, uh, and you see the credits, there's hundreds of, of credits there. And every one of those people, you have to make a deal with them and you have to paper it so that they, they sign it and you know what to pay them and what, what is there a guild involved, a union, uh, you know, what are their services? And um, what I do is all of that soup to nuts uh, uh, many times. Sometimes I work with in-house counsel or other attorneys and we split up the work, but basically, uh, you know, you want to produce a, a movie or a show, you, you might option a book. I do that deal. You might hire a writer. Uh, then you, you might get a hundreds director, of people. Then, then a line producer, mm -hmm. a UPM, a first uh, AD. Then you start hiring your cast. Then you start making location deals. Paper, uh, it's kind of lawyer talk. You need the contracts. That's what he means by paper. Getting releases for photos you might show or for he people totally said who might soup end to nuts. up on camera. Uh, and then when you're done shooting, you're making deals for uh, merchandising and deals with distributors. And uh, he's making the all the deals. Days it was might have been for a DVD or for merchandising, a doll. Uh, and so it's really what I do is make deals and all deals. Uh, I've been doing it for almost 50 years, but they're all the same. They have elements of time, money, credit rights, and perks deals. And I have approached deals that way so that I've made the myself relevant when I started an out entertainment lawyer. There were three networks and big studios. And the attorney said, well, I'm a TV lawyer or I'm a feature lawyer. I just said, I'm a transactional lawyer. I make and deals. so I've been able to adapt and make deals with Netflix, Quibi, YouTube. <laughs> uh, Not Quibi. Uh, you know, you name it. I've, I've made deals. I mean, I recently made a deal with uh, Hellman's Mayonnaise for an <laughs> actress who is going to be an influencer for them on the web. Wait, a, you know, mayonnaise I, is giving out deals for this actress, but that's I volunteer the way I tribute. look at deals. I I'm a deal deals. maker <laughs> and that's my practice. I'm a deal maker. Mr. I, Mr. He's Marks, delightful. You testified that you um, have been working in the entertainment industry almost 50 years. How did you get started in the entertainment industry? Yeah, tell us your life story. Uh, I'm not even hungry anymore. I'm in the entertainment industry by being born in Hollywood. <laughs> and it's our, uh, it's our in town Where are you industry. From? Are you, you from will. the South Bay? And uh, I've always been Valley? interested in it. And uh, when I went to UCLA, I took uh, all the film classes there were. Did you go to Didi Reese uh, Cookies? And when I went to UCLA Law School, it was by design because number one, there's only a few entertainment law schools. The, the the big law school, so UCLA was a public school. UCLA not being a free. big law school. I went That's to UCLA Law School because if you want to practice entertainment law in Hollywood. 
you need to go to law school Though in the area. You go to UCLA or USC. Those are the the schools where you kind of create your contacts. It's and grown your, a little bit more, network. but yes. Uh, and at UCLA, they had some of the best professors who taught entertainment law related subjects. So True. I took copyright, trademark, uh, entertainment contracts, if you will. I took everything entertainment related. <laughs> I too. Um, I'm ready. And, and that's how I kind of built the foundation for then my after law school career. What did you do after you graduated from law school? Well, I, um, I wanted to do entertainment transaction law, but, but I wanted to make money. I realized I could earn a little bit more money if I went into <laughs> entertainment litigation, uh, suing over copyrights yep. and trademarks. Yep. And so I took uh, the highest paying job out of, <laughs> that I could get out of law school in, was, that, that uh, tracks. Uh, in 1973. And I, I did IP litigation, disputes Ugh. over copyrights, uh, trademarks, uh, disputes over rights, things like that. And I was well, a low level. Some of those cases can litigator, be fun. Um, Go see my video about Ringo. Uh, this kind of work. certainly not sitting at the, you know, uh, examining witnesses, except it might be in a deposition. And, and I, and I did that, uh, for about, it was my first year out of law school. What did you do after that? I did examining witnesses my first year out of well, law school. After that, I, I kind of made a decision. Well, that, ladies and gentlemen, uh, that sucks. Being a litigator was blows. Me, <laughs> uh, that I wanted to make deals. That I wanted my career to be about getting yes. to yes. Yeah. Uh, and that involved a lot of uh, uh, you know conflict sometimes. But the goal was to get to yes, so that um, both parties could work together. Because the goal was working together and creating the TV show, not making the deal he loves the what he does had to step away so that you closed the deal and then people could live with that deal and um so i went to a a, a transactional law firm and um uh i was there a couple of years and and i made deals what kind of projects did you work on when you transitioned into that uh deal making role well this is um you know uh mid 1970s and this law firm yes he did he is uh, a practicing uh, attorney for six years hot, if, so, if you yep. will and some of my classmates were there that's how i got the job i had to take a cut and pay to go there that's what happens uh, and um i i'll never forget i'm the second chair attorney in a big conference room at fox and we're trying to close a deal <laughs> Our, our young amazing. client George Lucas. <laughs> our young client George Lucas. Shut the fuck Wars, up! <laughs> a, a Western space movie. Oh, Fox space did not Cowboys! Give us the budget or the salary he wanted. And this is the God's honest truth. We said, okay, give us the merchandising. And what? famously, they gave us the merchandising because they didn't think there was value there. Oh, shit. Uh, and that's how much our business has changed. Uh, while I was at, uh, He's a at great my first transaction, Jimmy looks fascinated. Firm, we Shut also up, worked Star Wars. for a client. His name is Sylvester Stallone. He, his claim to fame is that he was a, uh, character actor, but he had written a script that all the major stars wanted to play. They wanted to play the role Rocky. And he said, I will not sell this script unless I play Rocky. Huh? And no one was happy about that. And the deal we made was uh, he got to play the role, but it was a very low budget and he hardly had a dressing room. He hardly had any perks. What? He wasn't happy about it, but we were able to make up for that in the deals for Rocky two, three. And, and, and that's the type of deals it was. We, at that entertainment transactional firm, we weren't representing. Um, he had to do with papering uh, these deals. Companies, if you will, we were representing we're just not there yet. artists. Uh, uh, writers, directors, talent, like, um, uh, you know, individuals, Thanks, we weren't representing the, the companies I do now, like ITV or Village Roadshow. Yeah. How long were you at that law firm? This is brilliant. I was at that firm, uh, for, um, a couple of years. What did you do after that? After that, I made a decision. Oh yeah. He's definitely giving that, us his resume uh, for sure. Uh, I, I, 
but I'm fascinated. I wanted to go in house where the full time business I was. I said that long, but something like that since 1973. A, you know, except for six years. It was very tied to production and. Uh, and, and I was, I wanted to move away from law firms at that moment. And, and my first in-house job was for, uh, the Ziegler discount agency, uh, I'm so glad your presentation which was well done. one of the premier yeah. literary agencies in town. We, we represented writers and books and estates of books. And at that time, uh, in late yeah, he 70s, he's going to tell us 80s, that he's a big deal guy. He wanted to hire a writer, but he wants the book, jury to be uh, interested in his story. Book. There were three places you went. Uh, you went to Swifty, which he's kind of famous, Swifty Lazar's Oscar parties, or you went to yes, uh, Swanee, HL Swanson, or you went to Ziggy. And I worked for Ziggy. Ziggy, did I you work I for any for other companies I love in in house capacity as a deal maker? Oh yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> everybody, you know, everybody. I worked for everybody. With Ziggy. Uh, uh, what the fuck is Ziggy? Ziggy doesn't even have a last name. I'm dying. The book, The Princess Bride. We we <gasps> we did a lot of uh, stop. We worked it. for William Goldman. <laughs> that was his book and his screenplay, and uh, you know it was a fabulous experience. But uh, that Tell us firm more. was bought by. Um, uh, We're traumatized ICM, from cross examination agency. earlier. We want to hear I moved happy, to happy, feel good stories. That's what I where I, I next went, and at Paramount, I um, uh, was the uh, attorney on the series Cheers and the series Family Ties, which was uh, we the, know what it is break for the the young son Michael J. Fox, um, and the then jury I did the something young. because I have never. Um, uh, said i'm just a tv lawyer so he left I'm a in deal house. maker i get to yes and it's sort of unheard of uh, this is but I called getting to yes network 12 television doing the deals for Cheers and family times i moved to f features at paramount uh because you can earn a little more money in features I didn't uh, know that. and i was married and uh i i had a child and um and in features uh, i was assigned to do the development and production work for a producer who's in this case, Jerry Bruckheimer. Ah, uh, that's why he's here. Uh, and, um, and I also uh, served, uh, they had an overall deal with Eddie Murphy. So I, I did his, the legal work on his films, like Beverly Hills Cop, uh, Coming to America, things like that. His and book I, has to be Paramount. titled Getting to uh, Yes. About four years. Like it has to be. It Where has to be. Paramount? Is that Dasani? Uh, Dasani. I, I get this get him opportunity some Fiji. to head up business and legal affairs in the feature division for Jerry Weintraub's studio. Jerry was famous hey. at the time for Karate Kid. I've been to Ocean's Jerry Weintraub's house. And it's fascinating. He represented That's his story. Uh, you know, Elvis and Frank Sinatra and music and John Denver. And is really good friends but with like Brad This Pitt was and his shit. motion picture company. And uh, and I uh, was in features, and um, uh, at, we we made a film <laughs> called Troop Beverly Hills, which was oh my god, I love Troop Long. Beverly Hills. I'm just gonna fan. Uh, I'm just gonna fan. We girl. made uh, another film, The Big Blue. We acquired a film library. He was positioning himself to be a major company until he went bankrupt, uh, yep. and that was one of his only failures. Where'd you go after that? Weintraub is also a big UCLA uh, after, guy. Um, uh, Jerry Weintraub, I went to uh, Disney and I filled in for he a, has a year building or a, a for dental the building at UCLA. And features who was on maternity leave and taking a family leave. And so I uh, headed Feel up better, uh, legal on films like uh, Dick Tracy, Madonna was in that, uh, uh, Rocketeer, another live action film. But what I really remember about my time at Disney is they were revamping the. Um, I don't know, but we're going to find out because he worked with Aquaman. A different kind of Disney animated film, and part of it, in the old days, Disney animated films, um, the um, <laughs> the voices weren't advertised. They weren't the stars <laughs> of the movie. Disney was the star, or Dumbo was the star, but the voices were hardly known, and. We broke that mold, and it was the the first huh. deal 
where we but the voice actors got paid credited real money to someone to do a voice it was a deal I made uh, with um, uh, uh, Robin Williams to voice uh, Aladdin and it changed the whole history of Disney and feature animation I worked on uh, Beauty and the Beast because uh, Genie's and, fucking iconic and it was a it was a tremendous experience uh, to to be involved with them Wow. After you worked at Disney. Did you continue to fill in-house uh, deal-making roles? Yeah, I continued my in-house uh, road, even in the world that I could see was consolidating and it was going to be more and more difficult to stay in-house. Um, after Disney, I went to a company called Media Home Entertainment and they um, put up money for films and for their investment, they got... Jen the vhs cassette rights amazing so the media home entertainment was one of the producers amazing. investors in the nightmare on elm street series and blue velvet and what they got was the right to sell uh video cassettes they also nope. he's going to name drop everything and sold the jane fonda videos or the nfl videos uh and it was a it was a great business except the studios realized are we crazy? Why are we letting another company sell video? We should we could keep do that, that in yep. house. And so I was uh, not only had a legal, but I was on the board of directors and we sold the company to, to Fox. Yeah, the jury's so going to be could fascinated take in the by assets this. assets and eliminate a, a, a competitor. Consolidate. Where'd you go after that? Um, after Media Home Entertainment, I went to a company called Kushner Lock. It was very, it, it was at a time in the business there were hundreds of independent producing companies because the networks couldn't produce for themselves. There were laws preventing it. Huh. Uh, and Kushner Lock, we produced um, Pinocchio with Jonathan Taylor Thomas. We produced a small movie called Freeway. It was Reese Witherspoon's, one of her first roles. Uh, uh, and it was, um, you know, I was there for eight years. It was a, a good long run, uh, until, uh, they, um, as all those independent companies ultimately did, not all, most, they went, they, they went bankrupt after eight years. What did you do after that? Uh, now you can see I'm still chasing the in-house, uh, uh, world. Uh, I went to a company, Nelvana. They were a, a, um, a Canadian animation company, but they had this big office in LA. I headed up business and legal. Uh, we manufactured, um, made, produced, uh, uh, animated uh, television series like Care Bears and, and merchandising also. Uh, Babar, uh, Big Bear, Barbar? Little Bear. Babar? Uh, all sorts of uh, animated uh, subjects uh, and merchandising deals and cartoons, if you will. And um, uh, then that Canadian company closed the LA office, moved back to Canada. I didn't want to move back to Canada. And so my last in-house situation, I went to uh, Universal Network Television and I this did business so and legal affairs on uh, just shoot me a uh, television series, a uh, uh, series uh, starring Josh Brolin called Mr. Sterling. It was kind of patterned on Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Um, and at the same time I was at uh, uh, Universal Network Television, I, um, I consulted uh, with uh, Nickelodeon Features and um, I'm like leaning physically I, leaning um, forward. I bet the jury uh, I, is too. I, I am very I interested. Sort of build out their their feature. Uh, uh, I want to know what he products. did. But I want to know why he's here. We're not they there were yet. They on the Paramount I'm lot. So I've been at Paramount for is a while. Is it Aquaman? Time. Is it and the Bruckheimer deal? On films such as SpongeBob, the animated film. Uh, <laughs> and then <laughs> when, die. when he did SpongeBob and Star Wars, and NBC came in and bought Universal. That you know, ended my, my job at Universal. And I made the decision I would go back and be a, a, a lawyer at a law firm. What types of work were you doing when you went back to the law firms? When I went back to the law firm, I, um, wow. I did, uh, 
a lot of, uh, you know, I worked on their clients. Wow, wow, uh, wow. And uh, I, I helped a, a financier, like I know these Robert stories. Silverman, in effect, buy the American Idol brand. I worked with um, a Barry Gordy's company, it, trying to turn some of his world into theatrical plays. Uh, I worked with the Nat King Cole estate, uh, trying to, to do things. Uh, so it was a lot of reality. I remember uh, I worked with Walt, J. Walter Thompson, uh, and they, um, they were, uh, in effect, creating advertising opportunity branding. And then the one that sticks to my mind is I, I helped, you know, George Foreman market things so that the foreman grill a deal to he did the foreman the grill the thing called the george foreman grill and <laughs> and it was a it was a it's a good practice what from star wars Mr. he's Mark, like the thing that, that sticks in my mind is the foreman grill Richard shut Marks the fuck up when did you start that firm <laughs> well i love this guy after the firm i just told you about was called greenberg traurig uh it's a large international firm yeah i moved heard of it. to uh, a firm called the point media in um i'm dying over 2006 here. I'm dying. and i was there for 14 years uh doing much the same work that i do now and then in 2020 right at the start of the pandemic i went out on my own and formed richard marks and associates over the course of your career um the what fact if any that changes he is still working is in wild the space in the entertainment industry the, what changes cha what changed from 1973 well, to now streaming rights Let's start Before with Before I rates. got involved in the business, most deals for writers were uh, how much money per week and how many weeks. When when I got into the business, it was already more yes, complicated. Hazel, but through my Rosengart's decades, firm, all that's happened is it's gotten that's more and Rosengart's more complicated. Firm. Still the essential elements. For everybody's time, following money, Brittany. Credit, uh, uh, perks, we know Rosengart's uh, firm. Money, uh, uh, whatever. But it's gotten more complicated. You had to deal with merchandising. You had to deal with sequels. You had to deal with all sorts of derivative works. Have you ever worked games, with Ryan Kavanaugh? <laughs> you name it. Uh, you know, publicity, promotion. It all expanded so that making a deal that I'm might sure have been, he knows Tom you know, simple it's a 30 small... years before now was a, a major production. And uh, uh you know lawyers became integral you couldn't get it do a deal do without, without someone lawyers. who yep. was gonna dive into the the boilerplate and make sure that it was right we don't know why he's here yet but yeah, it could I'm be the aquaman a little bit i don't know if you would a like a good time for lunch for lunch if you could approach us for a moment mr marks will you be right here waiting for me wherever you go whatever i, I i'm off tune on that I will be right. It's been a while here waiting for you, but I know exactly what you're talking about, but yes, he will be right there waiting to paper you or get you paper on your deals. So they're trying to figure out when is a break for lunch. The judge is talking about scheduling. I think, um, sir, is there anything you don't do? Love him. This guy's absolutely freaking fascinating, but I think they're probably going to break for lunch. It's just now one o'clock in the courtroom on the East. <laughs> I mean, we, Your Honor, before we take lunch, plaintiff would move in um, Mr. Marks as an expert in the entertainment industry. Yes, there we go. All right, any objection? All right, so move. That's All why right, he's ladies here. Ladies and gentlemen, we'll go ahead and take our hour. That's why the resume. Uh, please do not talk to me, anybody and don't do any outside research. We'll see you back in an hour, okay? Thank you. Mr. Marks, if you could just stay there for a second, sir. Let the jury leave. This guy basically represented... Um, all of pop culture since 1973. I just want him to keep talking. His resume is part of the reason he's been moved in as an expert. That's why they're not objecting to why is this relevant. It's relevant because they're going to be getting into um, probably how this op-ed impacted Johnny Depp. Sir, since you're in the middle of your testimony, you cannot talk to anybody about your testimony at this time, including any lawyers or Mr. Depp. Okay, sir? All right. All right. We'll be back. Then we'll be back at, let's make it two o'clock. Okay. All right, thank you. I don't know if I'm going to break the stream today um, for lunch because we've got a lot of super chats and questions to get through, and I'm going to try to get through those. So we will see. We might just keep it rolling today. Um, but mods, if you guys need, please make sure you take breaks for you and for lunch and for the things. I might just have lunch come in and eat um, as we get into the rest of this guy's expert testimony. 
Foreman Grill. Emily, thank you for the coverage. I've been so excited for your return today. Best channel on YouTube. Thank you so much. We have 27,000 law nerds in here. We were up to 28, um, but it is lunchtime. If you guys need to, if you guys need to do the things, do the things. I'm going to go ahead and get to all the questions and the super chats that we can get to. Elaine, objection. Your Honor, this witness is too outstanding. Judge overruled. Take a seat, Elaine. Elaine, sit. Uh, he's going to be very, very interesting to listen to after lunch. He is an expert in the entertainment industry. I'm very excited to hear what he has to say, but it's probably going to go to the damages. It seems that that's where they're building the story. They had the last witness before him was the agent talking about his opinion of how this article damaged Johnny Depp. But this witness is going to be able to talk deeply, deeply about the deals in the industry and how they're made. He is the deal maker. He is the rainmaker. I wonder if he had a part in Amber Heard getting Aquaman because we he talked about the Aquaman picture. But I wonder how much he'll talk about why Depp is unemployable. But he was just name dropping the, you know, space cowboys, um, space wizards, all the things with Star Wars. I loved it. From Star Wars to the SpongeBob movie to the George Foreman grill, this dude has done the deal. I love it. I'm fascinated by it. And I love hearing lawyers because I'm one of them. I'm a lawyer that went a more traditional route and then went a less traditional route. Hello, less traditional route. And I just love hearing, like, I went into litigation. It wasn't for me. I wanted to make the deals. I wanted to work on getting people to yes. And it seems like if he came to you and was like, look, this is what we got. We'll give you this, but we want merchandising. You'd probably want to be able to get to a deal with him. I'd want to be able to say yes to him, right? He seems like somebody that you'd really want to work with. And yes, he name dropped the firm that Britney Spears' attorney, Matthew Rosengart, worked for, who we all like so well. Um, so let's get through some super chats and some questions. Go ahead and put question in the chat. I try to switch between both and make sure that you don't have to super chat to get a question answered, but I do as much as I can. So um, is his son Richard Marks? I think different spelling, right? But I don't know. I, I have no idea. Google, that would be fascinating. Wouldn't that be fascinating? Wouldn't that be fascinating? It would be so good. Um, Jackie, thank you so much. Had to join your channel. Thank you. We have members only live streams. There's two ways to do that. You can do it here or over at lawnerdsunite.com. We have member only live streams and members only podcasts and things like that. So you can choose what works best for you. I will say a big thank you to Dr. B. Um, they have been so, so patient, <laughs> but also when I get done, um, at the end of the day, I try to get off of the internet. It's hard. Cause I still want to keep talking about this. Can you guys believe that? You're like, Emily's done. She still wants to keep talking. Y yes. <laughs> yes. What we see here together is wild. And I still want to talk about it. So when I get done, I tend to be like, Ooh, I want to keep talking. So Emily, you're like the big sis. I always wanted cheers on being back. Thank you here from H3. So glad I am welcome foot soldier. Glad you are here. Let's get through these. I wonder if Amber is making that um, bizarre sucked face with the day's eyes she's had all week. She has, to be to be fair to her, there's nothing she can do with her face in court that's going to go well for her. Everyone's watching to see what she does. And her neutral expression does pull down and has a little of an RBF vibe. And there's nothing she can do to get around that. If she's sitting in court smiling, people are going to be like, what the fuck is wrong with her? She's smiling. If she's sitting in court taking notes, they're like, why is she taking notes? She has no winning. No matter how she arranges her face in court, she's not going to win. Your broadcast has become the best part of my day. Thank you, Merchie Gaming Highlights. I worry that after this, people are going to be like, why don't we stream every day? And, and we're going to have to talk about <laughs> talk about what our programming going forward looks like. Because y'all are going to be like, we want Emily every day. And I'm going to be like, I don't know how we're going to do that. We'll figure it out. Um, gather the beard, gather the power. Ashley Norton, that beard was literally the greatest thing. And I loved when he was doing his like, he was like, we're going to just arrange the beard. It was so good. I enjoyed him very much. Travis was great. Emla and Travis are happy with cursey words. Makes me happy. Good eye, Travis. I hope second client is Lily Rose, trusted pro for her BF, LOL. Uh, who knows? We'll see. But it was, he's like... <laughs> I love the F-bombs. I tweeted it out. I was like, I love this man. That's like the F word's my favorite word. We need merch. Um, Alex Ola R said that was a blow. And I don't mean Amber Heard punching Johnny Depp. I mean, it was his testimony really was wild. The thrifting channel. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you guys so much. Is it typical for someone in Amber Heard's position to take so many notes? Rachel D. Yes. I've seen, depending on the type of case, I've seen people take quite a lot of notes because there's especially, 
I don't want to, I don't want to talk about personality types, but also in fraud cases, defendants tend to be more highly engaged when you have cases that are just one incident, like a, a shooting or a robbery. It's just one incident. It's pretty narrow in time. The defendant normally remembers what's going on. This is a wide ranging case over multiple dates and multiple instances and multiple witnesses. And I think those are notes for her, but I also think they might be notes to point out things to her attorneys, things she wants to remember, and possibly things she wants to bring up when she testifies. And I hope the depth's attorneys will ask her that, but it's not unusual for someone to take so many notes. Brittany said, do witnesses have to agree to testify? Nope. Can they decline to do so? Well, they can try, but if they're properly subpoenaed, they can be forced to come in or be held in contempt of court if you refuse to testify. And we've seen this going on with um, Alex Jones. I don't cover that a lot here, but he was refusing to appear for deposition. The court's like, fine, I'm going to fine you hundreds of thousands of dollars every day you fail to show. Cool. You're in contempt. And the judge can also I mean, in the most extreme cases, throw you in jail for contempt of court and be like, you're going to go in jail until you testify. But a properly subpoenaed witness can be forced to come to court and testify. The only way they can't be forced to testify is if it's a matter that covers the Fifth Amendment where their own rights can be um, intruded upon or trampled upon. And then they can't be required to testify within those small confines, but they still have to come up, get on the stand and plead the fit. They can't just peace out. If they're not subpoenaed, they cannot be compelled to come to court, but they can agree to do so. So even if one of the managers or lawyers wasn't subpoenaed, they can still say, okay, yes, I agree to come testify. Even though you haven't properly served me, I will do it. I um, didn't realize he was in a suit. <laughs> the Travis McGivern, yeah, the beard definitely covered a lot of it. Oh, LB, it's so good to see you. LB is great, you guys. He owns Popcorn World, the most incredible popcorn. And we have um, stuff in the description box for it. It's Lisa. Thank you so much. I, I'm bummed when I miss some of the super chats going on when I want to say hi to people. I feel like Amber Heard's lawyers aren't objecting because they don't want to be booted like her PR team. Um, we definitely saw the objections pick up with testimony that I think mattered more to them. With some of these witnesses, they're going to say what they're going to say. It doesn't really hurt anyone to, you know, it might hurt them more to object more, if that makes sense. Um, they call me Merm. He's a great witness employed by Depp, but it's obvious he's trying his best to give fair and complete accounts of what he saw. I thought so too. I thought Travis was very fair and he was trying to say, you know, to be fair, Amber was screaming, but to be fair, Johnny was also screaming. And he also gave context for Johnny gives as good as he got. And that's something that we are going to see um, circle back round with the gives as good as he got, because it really is um, something that, Amber Heard said in one of those arguments, and it's something that is a theme that his, her team is going to um, kind of hit on because of how important it is to this case. All his security and friends have been super consistent for the most part. Yes, everyone's been consistent. The consistent part is like Johnny tries to get away, Amber tries to chase him down, and she will physically stop him from trying to remove himself. That's been tremendously consistent this entire time. I feel Amber's face is more crabby than the past. I I don't I don't really know. I have not been on on kind of cranky watch, but she's definitely been stoic this whole trial. Gina said Amber appears so isolated, not a fan at all, but I can't help but have sympathy. It's okay to have sympathy. These are humans going through something that's very awful in the public eye. Um, and it, it's okay to have some, some empathy for them to be like, this will suck, but also the circumstance has been created and here we are. Isa said my ex with ADHD always said taking amphetamine made him, um, made him what his friends were sober well, they became like him guessing Coke does the same. I mean, that's why some of the ADHD substances are regulated, um, regulated substances, but yes, they tend to bring, bring down and kind of regulate. I am not suggesting cocaine for ADHD, by the way, if you want to medicate, medicate, if you don't, don't, it is your life. Um, he's a good witness, fair to both calm, gave unflattering for both. Um, and has other income. I like he is in a suit on video. He takes it seriously. I thought he was a great witness too. I think they didn't ask him if he was a yes man. They, you know, he talked about Amber Heard um, degrading his choice of profession and saying, imagine how it would feel if somebody else was involved in your relationship. And, you know, security's job is to break up physical fights. I don't think they would have been involved in the relationship if they were just yelling at each other. But at some point, security had to realize, and I wish somebody had asked, at what point did you realize that you needed to be around when these fights were happening because they were going to get physical? Is it when his finger was severed? Was it before that? When it was when he got paint thrown in his face? Was it before that? Why did you, when did you know you needed to be around because you needed to remove him from the situation? What was that first instance? And I didn't hear any of that testimony. 
Um, is this style of cross successful? And I think we this came in when we were talking about Rotten Bourne's cross. Isn't it true? It's so confusing to the jury. Is a yes a yes or is a yes it's not true? Because isn't it true leaves open if I say yes. Isn't it true that the sky is green? Yes, it's not true that the sky is green. I hate the isn't it true answers because I think what the answer that's desired is no, the sky is not green, but then that's saying it is not true that the sky is green. So then it's technically a yes. These double negative um, style of cross is really ineffective, but also it gives good lawyers room to argue and it can be confusing to the witness and the jury. I just don't like them. Is it your testimony? Better. Is it true that better? But isn't it X, Y, Z? I hate. I hate. And that's a stylistic preference, but I think it's confusing. How did Amber get involved with the ACLU? I think it was with her really large donation. Um, according to the ACLU testimony, I think that's kind of what brought her into the fold. Not just saying it's a quid pro quo. I'm going to donate three plus million dollars to you and you're going to make me an ambassador, but it seems like that's what happened. Um, why do they keep with the same incorrect scenario after a witness says it's incorrect? Because I think they're trying to point out to the jury that this witness isn't telling the truth and that their version of events is correct. And he just keeps going. He doesn't follow up on anything. He just keeps going, which is very strange to me. Criminal lawyers like follow up. Oh, it's not true. Okay. Then what happened? Okay. Then this, but then you have to start asking more open-ended questions and you might get an answer that you really don't want. Um, that godly light hitting Johnny Depp is everything. The light was definitely pouring in the courthouse this morning. We've seen that pretty consistently every morning. Um, Romeo's heart. Can Amber get in trouble with the court for the PR thing? No. How does she know what she's getting bad press if she's not supposed to be looking at social media. She's allowed to look at whatever she wants until she's testifying. So no, she won't get in trouble with the court. It's completely kind of irrelevant to what the court is. Emily, ask your husband to buy some 7-Eleven muffins. I can't afford Hollywood muffins. <laughs> ask your husband to, uh, to brag to cats that I bought them for you. Sandy O'Brien, I will absolutely ask Dr. B to buy some muffins and to brag to the cats that um, you bought muffins. I will. Absolutely. Probably Starbucks muffins. Uh, the blueberry ones are pretty good. Can we send 10,000 muffins to Umbridge's office? Please don't. She would probably take it as some kind of a threat or harassment. <laughs> Though I can see the train of thought. You can Photoshop Umbridge surrounded by muffins. That would be hilarious, but don't send her physical muffins. I can't wait to see. I mean, we'll definitely see what Amber Heard does on testimony. I don't know if we will be done today with Depp's testimony. This witness is an expert, so it's going to take some time. But we might be done with this case this afternoon if this is their last witness. It seems logical that this could be their last witness because it's going to go to damage. Amelia said, I heard Amber Heard Fire replaced her PR team because of negative image in the media. Your thoughts? Her lawyers are doing that more than her PR firm is. The story's in Johnny Depp's hand. It's why he sued. And her case in chief is the time to undo that. It's not her PR firm's fault. Um, Elaine Breithoff, unprofessional. Her attitude when her OC objects is rude and the cherry on top, her objections are ridiculous. She doesn't know what she's doing. And to know that she's licensed in VA, she has apparently a very good reputation in Virginia. Um, the way she objects is annoying. Her demeanor is annoying, but we've also seen her have pleasant interactions. I don't like the style of how she does her job. Um, I think she does know what she's doing, though. I think she is the smartest lawyer on that team. I don't like her stylistic choices of how she executes, but I do think she's smart, and I do think she generally can work this judge with the talking objections and not the legal ground objections, and she's gotten comfortable doing so. Uh, she annoys the fuck out of me, but I also think she's one of the smarter lawyers on that team. Aurelia, good morning. Question, wouldn't it be illegal for Disney to fire Johnny Depp based on Amber Heard's allegations? No. Um, if so, I don't think... Disney is going to admit it if that's why. Happy Monday. They generally have morality and publicity type clauses in those contracts if they were already signed, but it sounds like there was not an inked paper deal yet for pirates. It was still in the um, top level negotiation. And I think we'll hear more about that with this witness because they had already done kind of the um, exploratory deal and not locked down a number, but they hadn't amended the other pirates deals. But I hope this witness gets more into that. Um, happy at heart. If you had a law firm and Amber hired you to represent her, do you think you could win her case or is this a lost cause? I don't think legally it's a lost cause. I would, I don't like doing this type of law. So that would never be my situation, but I do think they have grounds to stand and say, this is not defamatory. What, what does abuse mean? Um, they are going to struggle mightily in the likability. And if they prove that she's 
if Depp's team proves that she's a liar four out of five times, the definition of abuse might not even matter to the jury. They're like, I don't care how broad you try to make abuse. She lied in this. She lied in this. She lied in this. She's a lying liar that lies and we're done. That's the prerogative of the jury. Um, but would I take it? No, I civil litigate. No, I don't want to do civil litigation. At least, I mean, this matters to them. But this case impacts the two of them in their careers going forward of um, famous Hollywood actors. It impacts them. Criminal law felt to me like it didn't just impact the people that I was um, prosecuting. It didn't just impact the people who were victims of crime, but it impacts the health and safety of the community as a whole. And so it felt more like a calling for me. But I also find that explaining the law so we all understand feels like it has more impact than just fighting over people's money, which is a lot of what civil litigation is. I'm here for watching it. I don't want to do it. Give me umbrage over Rottenborn and Heard's other male attorney. The way they say correct offends my ears. All I hear is correct. They really are just like, correct. Isn't it true? Correct. And it's like, what are you asking? Are you asking, is it not true? Are you asking, is it true? Ugh. Logan said, my temper could not handle being a lawyer. I'd be ready to drop kick on bridge into the atmosphere. It's part of what them having, <laughs> they have to arrange their faces too, so that the jury doesn't see their annoyance. They might be amused by it at this point, but over the mic, it's so, her voice grates my ears, but also it's good for their case. If she's grading the jury as much as she's like grading us, it's great for their case. Go ahead. The jury's going to stop listening. Like I want to remove myself. I would like to disengage with this conversation every time she starts cross. And if the jury's shutting down their brains because they feel like they're being yelled at, that's really good for Johnny Depp's team. Because any points she makes, and she has made valid points on cross, any points she makes get lost in her style. Whimsical. Objection, Your Honor. He's proving reputational and monetary damages and destroying my case. Please make him stop. <sighs> there, Elaine, I fixed it for you. <laughs> Yes, you did. Infamous hearsay papers strike again. I can't believe she called them hearsay papers because really the papers aren't hearsay. The content can be hearsay. She's lost all, almost every single objection today. She did, but she can also throw the person answering the questions off their game. And she can also make Ben Chu lose his place. So he misses a question or two, which might be critical to their case. Um, thank you so much, you guys, for the super chats and the compliments. Emily, love you. Question. Thank you. Once the trial begins, can the lawyer bring in any outside info that may come up during the trial if it's relevant, if it's foundational, and if they have evidence of it? Can they review info from outside sources? Yes, the lawyers can do it. Excuse me, the lawyers can do whatever. It's the witnesses and the jury who can't do research. Damn, Elaine is super triggered by this testimony. But your honor, it's bad for us. This is really bad for us. Somebody tell Elaine it's not workout time. It was. She was working the objection, like the standing objections. California didn't do standing objections. I see the point of it. It indicates to everybody to kind of stop and not talk over because there's an objection, but also. Um, Kitty Von Katz said the judge is pissed. You can tell her exasperation in her voice. Yeah, she's sustaining umbrage just to get into break. She was she was annoyed that Umbridge was trying to end route some of those rulings. Objection. I didn't witness the witness witnessing this. <laughs> Objection, Your Honor. I don't like what he's saying. Uh, Floofy Gaming said her starting to stand up looks like a kid who is super excited to do something. They've been told to wait their turn despite needing to do it now. I mean, me. <laughs> I've been there. Um, Jade said, how badly do you think these um, constant objections will affect Amber Heard's defense? If it annoys the jury, then it can, then the point of the objections get lost. If I was on the jury, I'd be hella annoyed. Yeah, but they might also be fascinated. So could Umbridge and the rest of the Amber Heard team objecting to relevant stuff just because it's bad for their case cause the jury to pay more attention? Yes. Um, and backfire? Yes. Hope that makes sense. It does. So glad you're back. I'm glad I'm back too. But yes, it can backfire. Can the judge tell the lawyer off? If so, how? Um, yes, they can. That, that doesn't seem to be this judge's personality, but at sidebar, they could say, counsel, stop. When I rule on my objections, you're done. They can unhinge and yell at them, which we saw in the Rittenhouse case with the judge yelling, don't get brazen with me from the bench. If you want to see an attorney get dressed down, the DA in the Rittenhouse case got dressed down by the judge. Sometimes judges will go into chambers to yell. Sometimes they'll yell in front of the jury. Most often they do it outside the presence of the jury, but normally it seems like this judge would address it at sidebar and say, counsel, you're, you're trying to, you're trying to get around my objections. You need to stop. Or they'll just say it's sustained. That's my ruling and, and give them the notice to stop or say counsel enough, 
or call counsel up to sidebar or call, call counsel into chambers. There's lots of ways that a judge can tell if a lawyer. Yep. I'll tell those stories on a members only live stream one day. Um, some of them I've already told some of the members know I'm an attorney. Uh, we don't have civil jury, but wouldn't the jury feel like Amber Heard's team's trying to hide the truth with all these objections? Um, they could, the jury could absolutely feel that way. It's why objections have to be strategic and not just cause you can like, just cause you can doesn't mean that you should. I'm watching you live while at the gym. Yes. Keeping me sane during cardio. Get that cardio little miss furry. I'm, um, I'm just doing this. <laughs> Christy, thank you so much for the compliment. We are, we are doing the work together. I missed being here last week too. You're welcome y'all. I, I appreciate you saying you guys are like, it's not the same. I mean, I do commentary from my perspective. Why does Elaine give off the same energy on objections as if someone kicked her dog every single time? It, it really does. And again, when you try to make everything important, it makes nothing important. This is a great question, Hannah. Lunch, uh, we got about 20 more minutes. So is everyone heated discussion between spouses potentially DV? No, it's not. It's not at all. Um, but again, the more they keep trying to make fetch happen, the harder it's going to be, right? So the more they keep trying to broaden that definition, it could absolutely backfire on them. Um, the umbrage stare is golden. Uh, it's pretty funny watching, watching them get into it in the afternoon and just her being like looking at counsel with the, with a whole ass puss on her face. It was very, very interesting to see. Um, did they specify what kind of muffins were provided? No, I hope it was lemon and poppy saved me too. They're the best kind. I mean, y'all making me want to go to Costco and get those giant lemon poppy seed muffins. They're so good. But no, they never specify what kind of muffins they were. I did talk about the muffins in the weekly roundup um, for next week. I see you guys saying it's time for a bing. So uh, maybe, maybe it is. Maybe it is. We'll see. Um, Marcus said, regardless of trial outcome after the laundry that's been aired, uh, realistically, neither party will get good roles going forward. It's very, very possible, Marcus. Since the beginning of this case, I've said it seems like this is mutually assured destruction, which is, um, which is, as the lawyers, I'm sure they're like, are you sure you want to do this? And Depp's like, fuck yes, I want to do this. And Heard's like, can we please settle? Like, we don't want to do this at all. And he's like, you, you threw the shot across the bat with that op-ed and it is just mutually assured destruction. And I think that's, I think that's where we're at. Well, Umbridge's frequent objections distract the jury. They could, but they could also make the jury perk up and be like, ooh, this is important. She doesn't want us to know. T. Like when I hear objections like that, I'm like, T, T, T. That's, I want to know. The more you're objecting, the more curious I am, truthfully. Thank you. We're going to, I mean, I think we're going to bing again because I just saw you guys in the chat talking about it. Death, my BFF and I are glad you are back on. May you please say hi to Sky. It will make her smile and make her day. We love you and want to thank you. Sky, hello again. Good to see you. Your best friend, Death, um, wishes to say hello. Hello. I love that you guys tagged me on Instagram. The last time I said hi, it was great. I love seeing that. And if you guys don't follow me on social, you're welcome to. I'm at the Emily D. Baker everywhere. Thank you, Margarita, so much. I'm glad to be back. What do you think of some of the judges' decisions? <laughs> Thank you for another day of coverage. The judge is very broad in some of her rulings. You know what's so interesting? When the judge sustains stuff, sometimes she's like, you know, sustained, but the attorneys never follow up and ask to strike the testimony. So there will be like a hearsay objection. The witness will say something. The judge will sustain the objection, meaning she's allowing the objection, meaning she's denying the answer to the question. But none of the attorneys follow up and go motion to strike. So the evidence, the testimony, because that's all that's evidence is the testimony. The testimony remains on the record. So what the fuck is the point anyway, other than you just wanting to like object so it looks like you're doing something for your client? Move to strike the fucking answer, but they've left all those answers on the record. Every time an objection has been sustained, meaning it's granted and, and the testimony shouldn't come in, every single time that somebody's answered, nobody's moved to strike it. It's very strange to me. Like, what are y'all doing, civil attorneys? You, I think they're just used to depositions where that stuff gets struck later, but you're in court, like now's the time. I can't decide if Umbridge reminds me more of Trump when she speaks or jams super religious conservative mother in Detroit, Rex City. I, I don't know. She, she reminds me of Umbridge, which is why I called her Umbridge. Cause it just, it grates the same way as, as being like told off. Does Elaine using any objection to get testimony out here, say foundation speculation, toss them out all. Um, 
sometimes the questions do call for all those things. So it's better to give all the grounds and see what the judge picks. I would do that too. How do they stop the jury sneak peeking media? Um, they rely on juror integrity. They're under oath. And when it comes out, it normally comes out. Like you, it'll come out when the jurors talk and then they'll get reported and then they'll get removed. Um, but they, they advise them to most jurors take their jobs pretty seriously. I sense this might be his last witness. I do too. Leave that hanging there. Look, jury, here's the damages. So go with everything else you've heard. I think so too. And then if they follow that up with Amber testifying, it'll just be like, won't it be? It'll just be, it, it'll just be a day. Saying this hearsay case instead of defamation case made me laugh out loud. The word has been haunting me. I mean, <laughs> yep, yep. Um, Nikki said, why won't they talk about Johnny losing Fantastic Beast 3? I wonder if Fantastic Beast is harder to tie to this op-ed and more tied to what went on in the UK. Because I think he lost Fantastic Beast after that case was lost, where the timing on Pirates was so close in time that I think they don't want to open the door to be like, see other things damaged him. See the ruling in the UK case damaged him. The ruling in the UK case came far after this, um, this op-ed. So they need to tie things close in time to this op-ed. That's my thoughts. Um, Brittany said, have you taken a step back and just thought about how crazy this all is? Yes. Looking at these uber rich people's lives, it shows money doesn't make you happy. Absolutely, Brittany. And it's, I mean, I, when I was on the plane, I've been on a lot of planes lately. When I was on the plane yesterday, I was thinking about like the the whole dark side of fame that we're getting from this trial and how fascinating it is, like almost in a kind of uh, grim fascination. Like it's just, it's sad, but it's also fascinating. And Johnny Depp testifying that his island's the only place he can really be him because he's become so famous. He's disruptive everywhere he goes. He can't just go um, go sit down and eat somewhere and have a glass of wine and a book and be out in public because it's too disruptive and unsafe for him and potentially those around him. It that's it, he has to live in a bubble because he's Johnny Depp and that's a sad thing. It's it's just really fascinating to watch. And then your home life should be joyous. You've got everything you need. You've got all the money in the world. You can do anything you want. What what's there to be stressed about at home? Clearly lots. And it's just sad. How would you change the questions that keep getting objected to? Um, you can tweak the languaging. Sometimes it's just the judge's uh, predilections. I will try to do that in real time if we get some slower questions where I can do that in time. Oh, my neck is tired. Can the judge ask Amber's defense to stop objecting to everything? No. Greetings from the Netherlands. The judge can say, I've ruled, I've ruled, and kind of give indications, but no, she can't say stop objecting. It's their job to object. Does Amber having an expert witness set up? I think so. I've looked at the witness list, but it's just confusing. I can, I haven't gone through the witness list in a few weeks, but as we start her case, I can go through and look, but I believe she has some medical experts. I'm sure she'll have an expert to damages. And Elaine promised a few experts in the opening. Do you believe reactive abuse was happening rather than mutual abuse? Uh, I don't have an opinion yet, Drew B. I, I think whatever was going on was very toxic. I want to see Amber's side. Um, but yes, it could, it could be reactive. How the jury's going to define what abuse is, is going to be interesting. Casey, let's get to 300 K by the end of this trial. I mean, I'm here for it. We're at 240. I mean, let's go, let's go. You guys don't forget to like, and subscribe and do the hi, Dr. B. How are you? I don't think I'm going to break for lunch today. Cause we only have a half hour left and I've got like 169 comments left, but can I let you know, um, when court comes back so I can eat when testimony's on? You have to go get what? It didn't come. Can you put together a plate of snackins for me first? Yes, please. And water. Thank you. Wait, this one too. I've gone through like three things of water. Thank you, Dr. B. <laughs> Can Johnny's lawyers use the abuse definition of sexual physical only due to what's alleged in the op-ed? I'm interested to see what the jury instruction will say, but I think that Amber Heard's team will try to use the definition that we saw from Dr. Curry. It's like, is this abusive? Is this abusive? Is this abusive? And try to really broaden the nef definition of abuse. Do scattered questions imply a lack of ability on the attorney's behalf? It can be a strategy or more likely due to lack of structured evidence. It can be a strategy to try to catch the witness off guard. It's much easier to tell a story linearly than it is to jump around in time, especially if you are not being truthful. If you're being truthful, jumping around in time is like, wait, what'd you say again? If you're not being truthful, jumping around in time can mess you up. So it might be a strategy. What kind of strategy is Amber firing her PR team? A reactive one? I don't think it's a strategy. I think it's a reaction out of anger. 
I think she's looking for someone to blame other than herself. Personal opinion. Will they have someone testify about the cycle of abuse? I think so. Um, that fear of a violent, vindictive partner can leave someone with no defense but words. I don't know. I mean, we saw Dr. Curry. We've seen Johnny Depp's testimony. I don't think we're going to get another expert other than this one from Depp's team. I think they will probably use, I think they will try to use Hurd's experts against her on cross-examination and broaden those definitions and talk about it then because it might be more powerful in cross-examination. Can the judge sanction or take actions against Umbridge for these ridiculous objections? Nope. Um, she hasn't been, really been warned to knock it off. So no, there's nothing to really do at this point with that. It's just annoying to us. I think Elon is going to try to win Amber Heard's case using Twitter. <laughs> He'll control the narrative outside court to sway public opinion. Sussex, I don't think he's thrilled. I mean, we saw that testimony that she was just holding time and she never loved him. He seemed actually pretty heartbroken after it. So he might just be pissed. Mutual abuse is a myth. There are uh, multiple articles on it. I can say, weeping. I can send a go absolutely welcome to send um, a link. We will see what happens. The mutual abuse statements going to come in more in the medical experts for Amber Heard. We should celebrate that thing. Is it normal to object to every comment? Sometimes I've watched many cases and have never heard it this often. It depends on the testimony, but because they haven't been doing it in this case so much, I think it's going to indicate that that testimony was particularly damaging and it's going to pique the jury's curiosity, but we binged y'all. It's time to celebrate. Oh, it binged. Move your head. Thanks, y'all. The Bing, by the way, I'll let the law nerds in the chat describe the Bing and where the Bing came from and why we started the Bing, but that's from the 100K Bing. And I can't believe it. That was like, we hit 100K last May. I can't believe that we're here um, with this. TMZ is saying Amber Heard will only be an Aquaman 2 for less than 10 minutes. I don't doubt that at all. I wonder how much they re-edited that film. Question, do Amber Heard and Johnny Depp get equal time for witnesses? Yes. How is time divided in the six weeks? They each get about three weeks. I feel we are uh, deep in and still on Johnny's. We are. We're in the beginning of week four. But remember, some of that time was used by Johnny Depp's or by Amber Heard's team for the cross-examination of Johnny Depp. So their cross-examination um, absolutely is time kept against them. So that's where we're at. Giggly Robot, holy cow, girl, you hit 200K. Yeah, it wasn't that long ago at all. So yes, we did. Um, and thank you to everyone finding the chat. I mean, there's still... 26,000 of you in here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Let's get to some more of these Twitter, that one that Elon Musk bought. We'll see what Twitter, we'll see what Twitter does with this case for sure. Colleen, your hair is fabulous. Thank you, Sarah. Um, what was your reaction to the psychiatrist cross? I talk about that next week's Emily show. I think there were some good points made. I think some of the good points made got lost under muffin bullshit. What makes me nervous is that we public have been connecting the dots on things like Milani palette, but unless it's said in court, the jury doesn't know those things. Absolutely may. And how important it is in the court of law versus how important it is in the court of public opinion is going to vary. Depending on how Heard testifies, the Milani palette might not be a big deal or it might. We're just going to have to wait and see. It's why we're also like literally today, I found myself continually like moving my chair forward going like this. I'm like, bro, tell me more about Star Wars and the deals that you made as I block my the super chats. I was fascinated. And I think we're all going to be riveted when Amber Heard testifies too, whether we agree or don't notice JD lawyers only thank the judge for saving them when she sustains the objection against them, maybe trying to create a correlation. I mean, maybe so thank you, babe. I appreciate it. Hey, can, uh, can, oh, hold on. I got to ask, I got to ask my husband in, can we, can I get some cheez -Its too? cheez -Its. Thank you. In addition, in addition to all of this, Thanks for lunch, honey. We got a lot to do today. We busy. I'll, I'll when testimony starts back up, I'll probably take a, a quick, I'll pop off screen real quick and, and go use the restroom and then start to eat. But for now, we're going to talk through lunch and we're just going to, we're just going to roll with it. All right. Um, I don't know. Maybe they do say thank you, but I think they were also indicating to the witness that the witness could go ahead and answer. Um, so. I'm just letting, I'm letting, I'm letting my, my producer know that if she needs to take a break, Miguelina, if you need to take a break too, don't worry, we're good. Have you worked celebrity cases in LA? Yes, I have as a DA. And some of those stories are in our members only live chats, but I was, um, I worked 
closely with the attorney that was doing all the low hand stuff and worked on that, ended up working on that quite a bit. I've also had celebrities that were uh, victims. You know, I've been in courthouses where other celebrities were prosecuted. I've had witnesses that were celebrities. I've had people who pop up on juries that are various levels of famous in the area, things like that, sports stars, DUIs and things. Um, can she really claim that her TRO was about physical and all the situations she has come up with over the UK trial are all physical. They might still try to broaden the definition. They might, they might try it. Um, so yep. They might try it. Um, is this the first time we've heard there was a Disney deal for pirate six that was taken back? I think it's the first time we knew there was a figure attached to it, that 25 million figure. Yes. But what defines a deal? Does it have to be inked? And I think that's what this witness is going to get to. Hello, Matt Bond. Thank you for saying good day. My spiffy legal mumbo jumbo talkie friend. It's nice to see you. That might need to be changed too. Thanks, honey. I don't know. I really, really, really just wanted some cheese its So thank you. I also really, really, really want a Waterloo, but the fizzy water is not always great when doing the Lego mumbo jumbo talkie talkie things all day long. Listening to you as I do my torts homework. Thanks for being an inspiration to young women in law. You're welcome. I mean, may we all find our inner L Woods. It was you who came through the door. Um, torts is fascinating. And I'm sure watching all of this as you're studying for torts. I mean, I would have been so riveted if we had had anything this entertaining when I was in law school. Riveted. Will Amber Heard be on the stand today or this week? This week, yes. Today, not sure. Will she be their first witness is my question. She kind of has to be, I think. But um, we'll see. Thanks for the play-by-play, Law Mom. You're welcome. Joined the Patreon. Thank you, everybody. Do the likey, subscribe things. Absolutely. The Lawnard community on Patreon is lawnardsunite.com. And that's where we have our um, access to members only live stream, the behind the scenes, um, I have thoughts podcast and stuff like that. So that's all there. And then there's some different benefits here on the main channel. If you are at the law nerd tier, you get those, um, icons and the special emojis and the members only live streams and stuff. Um, Umbridge and gang seem to reiterate the witnesses statement back to them incorrectly. And then when the witness calls them out, will this influence the jury? It might, it seems disingenuous to be like, your testimony is this and then try to catch them in it. Like if you've, here's the thing. If you've got a fucking point, make your fucking point. But if you don't have a point and you're just twisting people's words, it seems like you don't really have a point. Like if you're trying to have this gotcha moment by saying you testified this, and then they're like, actually, that's not exactly what I said. It seems like you actually have nothing else to stand on. And I think it can be damaging. Um, Dina said, you're the goat of legal commentary. Thank you so much. Thank you from Thank you so much from a law nerd in Pittsburgh. You are welcome. I can't wait till our custom emojis can be in uh, the program I use, StreamYard, so we can show them. That would be fantastic. Will Depp call a makeup artist to show how bruises can be faked? No, they're going to use her makeup artist against her on cross-examination, I'm sure. I'm sure that's what their plan is. That's what my plan would be. Umbridge seems extra pissy today, waiting for her to yell, I will have order. I mean, that's exactly what I'm waiting for. I will have order i've been using that gif way too much of my private text messages um so i've been i've been using it quite a lot kimberly hello amber heard female lawyer is actually pretty good she is not a dumb lawyer i don't like her strategy she is a smart lawyer her tactics are not my favorite um, we'll bring up the very likelihood of Amber's uh, bruises being Botox filler bruising and cosmetic procedures, possibly. She would have had hella bruising lacerations imprints from all the rings Johnny wears. I'm sure they will bring that up. And I'm sure they will bring that up. I mean, I don't think I've seen him pictured without those rings in I don't know how long. How do you survive law school with ADHD and dyslexia? Um, I didn't sleep much, which probably wasn't good. I'm a fellow neurodivergent gal who's considering law in Canada, but I don't know if I can. You can. You can. Or if I will actually enjoy the practice with my neurodivergent brain. That's the bigger question. There are lots of things to do in law that aren't traditional practice, though. And we're seeing one of them here. He's like, I'm the deal guy. I never wanted to be the deal guy, but I'm fascinated by his stories. There is lots you can do with a law degree. But learning how you work to learn how to make it work for you is critical. Um, has the jury been told about how stimulants affect someone with ADHD differently? No, it's all been secondhand accounts of people witnessing their own interaction with Johnny Depp. Can the lawyers look outside at info while the trial's going on and bring it up in court? They have to have the proper legal foundation to bring it up in court, but yes, they can. 
Um, Colleen Nicole, your hair is fabulous. Do you think it looks bad on Amber's team when Elaine so aggressively objects and sometimes even argues with the judge? I, I mean, I think it can. It depends on how the jury's reacting to it. And this jury's been pretty stoic from all the reporting we've seen from the lovely Chanley Painter from Court TV coming out. Um, of course, she's watching the jury and it really says they've been pretty stoic. Even when we get titters and laughters from the audience, which also could impact the jury, the jury's been pretty stone-faced. Are there constant objections from heard lawyers hurting their case? It's very irritating on foundational questions. It is, and it just depends on how the jury reads it. It might feel like they don't, if you're objecting to everything, how much do you really have on your case? Like, what are you so worried about? What are you so afraid of? If you've got witness after witness after witness, what are you worried about? Let them prove their case. You prove yours. Lori said, Emily Columbus, Ohio here. Hello. What about the rings he wears? So frustrating to see her lawyers constantly objecting. Loved Dr. Curry. The rings will absolutely come up. The rings will absolutely come up probably on a redirect. Um, Julie said, new sub here. Thank you for the content. You are welcome. Thank you for being here. When do you think Johnny Depp will rest? Probably today. Um, I think this is, I, I think this might be their last witness, but we'll see. Um, I think it very easily could be their last witness. I think at ending on an expert regarding the monetary damages is a strong place to end. So I think maybe today we'll get to, Your Honor, we have no further witnesses. Who won't those be great, great words to hear? Um, why are Amber and Umbridge get so much personal time talking before the judge came in? Um, I don't really understand the question, but it's not unusual for, I mean, them to be, they should be in the courtroom ready to go before the judge walks in. And if they have more time, it's not unusual that the clients and their attorneys will be talking. Um, Claudia said, glad you're back. Never leave your children again. <laughs> we don't like our babysitters. Uh, you think Amber heard mirrors Johnny Depp's outfits to harass sympathy built the day before or harness sympathy built the day before. I don't know what it is. I don't know what the, the thought process is there, but it's, it's an odd thing that I'm clocking. Like I'm tracking it. Viral said, can you say hi to my best friend, Sal? Yes. I think we did that earlier too. We we're saying it twice. Hi, best friend, Sal. Thank you so much. Um, I'm genuinely excited to see if Amber can hold her composure. I think on direct exam will be one thing on cross exam will be another, and we will see what happens. I can't wait to see which of Johnny Depp's lawyers do the cross examination of Amber Heard. Will it be Camille Vasquez? Will it be Ben Chu? Which lawyer is assigned to Depp? And I think it might be Camille Vasquez because she is one of their very strong lawyers and she didn't do Johnny Depp's testimony. Each of these lawyers is going to have kind of a bigger witness assigned to them. And I would love to see it. It also fries me every time we hear Umbridge call Camille Vasquez, Camille Vasquez. And maybe it's because I grew up in Southern California. So Hispanic last names are something that I actually can pronounce. There's so many that I can't. And so I realize it's completely hypocritical for me to be like, it annoys me that you can't say Vasquez, but also I pronounce last names wrong all the time, but it really does just sit with me. I'm like, you say Vasquez. I've heard you say Vasquez. And then you go back to Vasquez and it just hurts my ears. Love your channel learning so much. You're welcome. Um, does her attitude affect the jury's opinions? It can, um, it can, juries can be very turned off and then they just stop listening. It's like teachers. You don't like you stop listening to, um, style matters. I don't know how successful that style has been for her in the past. I bet she's spoken to a few manager. Lexi, can you imagine bringing the wrong meal to Umbridge's table at a restaurant? I mean, does, she, does she act like this? Like out on the street? I, I, I'd be fascinated to know objection. You're loud and you're spitting on me. <laughs> Um, Murchie said, I'm not even the one being questioned and I feel like I'm in trouble. I know. I feel like Umber just yelling at all of us. I'm like, stop yelling at me. I didn't turn in my homework. Like it, it really is just triggering childhood trauma for me. Like I didn't turn in my homework. It really, really does. Um, I just really feel like her attorney is not doing her any favors by being like this. Yeah. I mean, when, when you're essentially being accused of being a shrill spoiled teenage like angry woman who was abusive to your uh intimate partner and your spouse i feel like having an attorney that comes across as very shrill is probably problematic for you um and that's a that's a strategy that they should have thought of sorry i'm like all of a sudden deeply unhappy with my mic positioning and had to change it probably because the pawnards were in here while i was gone bumping up against it because i can tell they love it Fred comes in here and rubs his face all over it. She is super patronizing. It'll be wild to see. I don't think she's doing the cross of this witness, but it'd be wild to see if she was. 
Amber Heard kept blaming her lawyer for forcing her to file the TRO. Did she waive privilege when she did that? Um, will we hear from Spectre? I don't know if we'll hear from Spectre. She was blaming everybody. She blamed Johnny Depp's team. You forced me to do it. You did this. You did this. But blaming the lawyers is always a solid strategy. That's what you pay them for. It's they made me do it. Does it seem like Umbridge is really grasping at straws? It might seem that way to the jury. It really might. There are some things she needed to object to, but there's some things that I think when you try to make everything a big deal, nothing is. So it's just, it's her tone that I think does so much damage um, potentially to her. I think the judge needs to reprimand the lawyer of Amber Heard. I don't think so. They got in the one argumentative and the judge said, yes, the lawyer should be able to read the room, but also it is her job to be a zealous advocate. I loathe this attorney and the jury might too. I cannot wait to hear on Burgess, to never hear on Burgess voice again. It's one thing we'll all be glad for when this trial's over. She gets in there and we all feel like we're being scolded. I'm sure the jury feels the same way. Um, does the legal team know how the media perceives them? I'm sure that they do. They probably don't give a fuck. This is their strategy. They shouldn't change strategy midway, but this is their strategy. Dewana said, I feel like I'm in trouble with my mom. I understand that feeling. Found you last week. Love your voice and commentary. Thank you. I know it's not a legal document, but I think most people associate pirates with Johnny. Also, as a BTS army, I'm living for all the purple. I'm so glad. I mean, purple's kind of our thing over here, too. Is it possible the jury finds Elaine so annoying she loses them? Yes, it is possible. It's something she has to consider. Love watching you watching from Dubai. Thank you, Apple Zam. Um, is there a benefit to matching the opposite side's temperament? Can be. Example, Depp's team is so calm, it makes her team look over the top in comparison. And isn't that what Depp's team's trying to convey to this jury? Look, we're just here. Everyone who testified that they worked with Depp was like, he's lovely. He's kind. He's calm. He's sweet. If he's drunk, he's kind of mellow. If he's high, he's kind of mellow. If he's on coke, he's kind of mellow. If he's upset, he yells. He will slam cabinets and throw clothes, but then he goes to a room and slams himself in and plays the guitar. Like that's really what we've seen over and over and over. The legal teams are almost just playing out what the jury's been told that this relationship was like. Johnny Depp wants to get away and is kind of a mellow dude and Amber Heard is shrill and screaming. And that's what the lawyers are fucking playing out over and over and over again. The lack of self-awareness for me is wild. But we could see it switch. If Depp's team takes on this tactic in their cross, I'm going to be yelling about their cross too. We will see. So yes, it can. It can. It can bring that comparison very much to the forefront of the jury. I need anxiety meds when Elaine cross examines. Girl, girl. 25K Lonard's watching and only 6K likes. Hit the like button. You guys are welcome to go ahead and smash, smash that like button. And we've got about, let's see, we've got about 10 more minutes till court resumes. So I'm going to get through as many as I can. We're going to speed around a little bit. We're going to speed run like dream, but in the real way. They are using the paper because the online headline is so much more inflammatory. Yes, to minimize the impact. Yes. The, the differences in the two headlines matters. And they're trying to bring in as much about the UK case as they can, which will be interesting. How do they decide when it is an innocent hearsay doesn't seem consistent? It hasn't been super consistent. Um, we'll get into a little lesson on hearsay, but it's offering something for the truth of the matter when it's said by someone else. If somebody says something that's offered for the truth, that person needs to testify. So if it's like, I was told by so-and-so that Johnny Depp was getting $25 million for this film, and it's being offered to prove he was getting $25 million for the film, that's hearsay. If it's being offered to prove, so therefore I did this, or therefore I caused this to be done, it's not being offered for the truth. It's being offered for, to explain another purpose or to explain someone's action. Hearsay is, hearsay is like half of what you spend <laughs> part of your first year of law school on. Hearsay objections matter. Um, hearsay, hearsay exemptions are like all of what I remember from my testing in my 1L. Emily, can a witness request Umbridge to stop being so rude, condescending, aggressive? I mean, they can try to. She really grates on my nerves. It, I would have a hard time being spoken to like that. Um, it depends on the witness. It can be like, have I done something to you? But the judge might say, answer the question, because you're really not allowed to clap back like that. Her tone makes me remember her. Can you explain it in real people terms line? As a lay person not familiar with how lawyers speak and tone in trials, she sounds incredibly condescending towards Depp's witnesses. Yeah. She does. Question. Did you work against many lawyers like this defense? Not a ton. Drinking water um, out of the same pretty pink studded Starbucks cup tumbler today. Um, there were some. Not all, but there were some. Because when you lose people in a criminal trial, it can be really damaging. So there were some. Um, Edie Falco to play Umbridge in the movie. 
there was going to be a movie, isn't there? I get that Umbridge is doing her job, but is it really necessary to be rude and condescending? No. Wouldn't that work against her with a jury? Absolutely can. Can Amber Heard take the stand and plead the fifth? No, she's not pending any criminal investigation and there's not a possibility of that. So no, she cannot. Why has the judge not reprimanded her for her attitude and condescending tone? It hasn't really crossed the line. It's probably crossed the line for the jury. But also when somebody, if that's the strategy you want to take, you do you. And the judge doesn't want to seem like she's overstepping the bounds in front of the jury either. So if this is the road she's going to take until it's absolutely argumentative and tone, that's not tone, that's repeatedly asking the same question or fighting with the witness, the judge isn't going to step in and save them on that. I feel if I was on this jury, I would be put off by this cross. It feels aggressive and kind of shady. I would have a hard time not feeling the same way about Amber. And therein lies the potential for damage. Will Umbridge's bullying reflect badly on Amber? Possibly. Thank you for the stream. You're welcome. I'm in bed with COVID and you're helping me get through. We're here. Well, hey, we've got a whole day together. I mean, there is nothing better on TV than this trial right now. I'll tell you what. Do you remember? All I can think of is member berries from SP. Um, it seems like Umbridge just has an agenda to push and it wouldn't matter who was on the stand to answer her questions. It kind of does, but she does have an agenda to push. She's a zealous advocate for Amber Heard. That is her agenda, as it should be. How can they compare these two articles? One is the op-ed from Johnny Depp's ex-wife. One is a gossip column. They're comparing apples to grumpies. And that is Johnny Depp's team's job to point out, for sure. I'm a nurse, not a lawyer, but from watching and listening to you, I've started being able to say objection compound before the lawyers do. Look, when we're asking for two things that you have to answer before it's possible, like, is it true you got in your car this morning at 8.15 a.m. and went to Starbucks and ordered a, you know, a salted caramel cold brew and a chocolate croissant? It's like, well, what if it wasn't at 8.15? The whole thing's not true, but part of it's not true. And that's the problem with the compound question. Did you get in your car? Did you go to Starbucks? Was it 8.15 in the morning? Did you order this and that? Yes, but not today. So all of that would be no. Do scattered questions imply like, oh, we already talked about that. I think this is a double. Um, I think it can be a tactic. Maybe Umbridge should bring some muffins. Somebody should bring some fucking muffins to this jury. Um, CJ, as a talent agent, Umbridge's lack of understanding of the industry is making me cringe so hard. I don't know if it's a lack of understanding or if it's intentional. I'm not sure if it's disingenuously unintentional or intentional. Um, he sounds like Brad Garrett. Well, there's there's another opinion on how he sounds. Question, why are they not bringing up Johnny Depp losing the third Harry Potter film? That's as big as Pirates. I think we talked about it earlier. A, he might still get paid for it. I've seen that in the chat. B, that was after the ruling in the UK, and they need to focus on what happens close in time to this op-ed. What I need to know is, does it bing when you're not live? And if so, do you get as excited as you do live? Yes. When I hear it, I do. I love your reactions when it bangs. I do. And yes, it does. It, it bings whenever the channel switches over another thousand subscribers, it bings. And I've heard it bing when I'm in the other room and I'm like, Ooh. sometimes I'll walk in and be like, Ooh, bing. so it's definitely been binging much faster lately, but yes, I, um, I'm always, look, the more law nerds, the better. We all value the facts. We want to hear what's going on. We want to understand the law. That's a good thing for all of us. Ask him if Amber Heard still has the job on Aquaman. God, I hope so. Uh, thank you for all you do. You're welcome. I hope this ends well for Depp. I think no matter what happens in the court of law, I think the court of public opinion is swayed. I don't know if there's any undoing that. I don't know if it will impact his future ability to work. I'm interested to see what this lawyer says. So um, hugs from Croatia. Croatia is beautiful. My brother got to go to Croatia to play water polo. The photos were stunning and it is somewhere I very much hope to visit. Almost 7 p.m. Well, that was a few hours ago, so I'm sure it's later now. <laughs> this guy feels like he has mobster energy fueled um, in a legal direction. I mean... His agent definitely kind of had that vibe. I enjoyed him. Um, this is going to be so fun to watch her cross with this one. Cannot wait. It was definitely an experience. Um, knowing proof of physical evidence is the key. Why do you think Amber purposely kept her face hidden from the entire view the entire time she was in the elevator with James Franco? I mean, we know it's her, but it'll be interesting to see when that video comes up. IMDb has a free streaming channel app on Roku and smart devices. I didn't need, I didn't know that. Try it. You'll love it. I'm hooked. I will. I had no idea. Will they call Amber as a witness while they're still in Johnny's case? I don't think so. Well, we're starting to get noise from the courtroom, which means they're going to be coming back from break. Um, thank you. Thank you. We rode all the way through lunch today. Yes, he's an expert witness. They just qualified him right at the end. Um, I think I could sell some Mayo craft hit me up. I mean, right? 
Let's do it. I want food deals. Starbucks. Starbucks is like, no, fuck you in the cursey words. That is not on brand for us. Um, my all caps is a total oops. I know I get excited when all caps too. I just can't read it very well because I'm dyslexic and the all caps makes it really hard for me to break up words. Um, I didn't know they were on. Sorry, Emily, no worries. I was just saying that I like this guy. My first time ever timed out. Um, no need to apologize. That's Nightbot. Nightbot is a bot and it helps me so I can read the questions. Mayo commercial in the film is what you say if some person in the streets ask, what are you shooting? That's hilarious. Mayo commercial in the film is what you say if some random person in the street asks, what are you shooting? A mayonnaise commercial. I love it. Um, JD picks good personalities to do business with. He does. I think he really fasc is fascinated by people. I think he likes their stories. I think he wants to know people. Um, that doesn't surprise me. He seems more introverted and that he's like, ooh, tell me about you. And then he just wants to know people. Getting the feels that he's going to be a great witness, I think perhaps we'll Elaine will take a break from her buns of steel exercise routine. I mean, he's an expert, so a lot more is going to get asked. And we didn't see a ton of objections to the um, medical expert, Dr. Curry. So I'm not surprised. I love um, I love contracts. I adore contracts in my heart. I mean, he definitely was like, I'm the deal guy. Give me the paper. Umbridge, Your Honor, I object. Judge. And why is that Umbridge? Because it's devastating to my case. Judge overruled literally everyone. Good call. But your honor, I don't like what he's saying. <laughs> Popping the mic because you had to pee. Was I? I like hearing the hot mic moments in court. So as long as there's audio, I'm going to listen. Are there boundaries or rules for what can be brought into this trial from the UK trial? Yeah, there have been previous rulings. They're trying to get the article about the U. They're trying to get the article in that was the basis of the UK trial, and they haven't been able to get it in yet. They keep trying, but it's hearsay. And the ruling in that case is hearsay, and it doesn't reflect this case. It's different standards, different witnesses. It's very, very different. So we'll see. They're trying, though. They're trying to force Depp's team to open the door. Oh, they killed the audio in court. I'm bummed. We'll see who knows the Muffin Man, um, Matt Bond. He was just using this as an excuse to advertise his upcoming projects, baller move. I mean, he definitely took a moment, but he's an expert, so you have to go through the resume. All right, when this, when the audio picks back up, I'll pull this up. I want to pick this guy's brain. I'm so interested. I'll skip lunch for this. I want to hear him too. This man is responsible for everyone's childhood. Accurate. The only thing he hasn't mentioned is Goonies. True. I wonder if he worked on Goonies. Um, sorry, I know I keep asking, but can plaintiffs bring other evidence into the case after they have rested and the defense begins? I'm only asking because of all the web chatter. Love you so much. Thank you, Michael Toast. They should have the ability to do a rebuttal or a few rebuttal witnesses, but the place that it becomes most powerful is on cross-examination during Amber Heard's case in chief, using the things that they're learning to ask the right questions in um, cross-examination of those witnesses. If you need his memoir, just contact the court reporter. I mean, <laughs> it's totally fair. He doesn't need to write a book. He just needs to buy the transcript at this point. Um, I would die to see his collection of vintage movie merchandise and memorabilia. Oh my God, I bet it's amazing. He probably has like original Star Wars merch and shit. It, I bet it's great. Um, yes, so the yes man of the universe was unable to get a yes for Johnny Depp and Pirate 6 because of the op-ed, am I right? I think that's all the question. Right. Well, that judge just came in hot. She was just all like, are we ready for the jury? Whoop. Okay. All right, here we go. Until the jury's in, we're going to keep doing this. Um, I'm going to try to get to all as many as I can and get to them at the break too. Barbar was a French Canadian cartoon about a royal elephant family. Yes, I loved that. I loved Barbar. It seems like Herd's team is getting frustrated with all the witnesses shooting down Herd's testimony. I mean, th that's their job, but they get, Elaine looks like she's about to bolt out of her seat, but that's what they, um, that's what they have to do. But it makes them feel a little desperate sometimes. Surely if public opinion what is in Johnny's favor, can't we assume the jury is probably skewed the same since they're a sample of the public? They're not seeing as much on social media, though, as we are. They're not seeing the memes and the TikToks and stuff. So we don't really know what they're thinking. And they're told to withhold judgment or wait until both sides are in. And a lot of jurors take that very seriously. So maybe, but then again, studies show a lot of jurors make up their minds um, in the first part of the case and then kind of check out for the rest. So it's possible. Do witnesses know which questions they're going to get before the trial? No. Like a practice or are they, all, right, all these questions seat. new? Okay. Well, they've done Your depositions here Thank and because you. they've done depositions, they have an idea of where this is going. I think I'll probably get into monetary loss. Mr. Uh, Marks, I think what so work too. were you asked to do in this case? Uh, I was asked to um, 
bring my uh, years of experience in the entertainment industry uh, and look at uh, the, the damage that the op-ed of 2018 uh, created in Johnny Depp's uh, career and his life and his reputation. Nilsa, shout out. Well, Welcome to the channel. To determine whether Mr. Depp's reputation had been damaged by the op-ed. Well, again, I, I, nope. I view the op-ed and the fallout through almost 50 years in the business. And what I did was I read the pleadings in the case, the deposition transcripts, the articles, uh, the pleadings, uh, all of the, the um, uh, paperwork in this case, which is voluminous. No Based shit. Based on the analysis you've done and your expertise in the entertainment industry, have you formed any opinions in this case? Yes. Uh, what, generally speaking, what is your opinion? My general opinion is that the uh, op-ed uh, uh, damaged uh, uh, Mr. Depp. There it is. Created a, a, a cancel situation, if you will. Uh, harmed his reputation and his ability to get work in uh, Honor, Hollywood sir. industry. Objection. Yeah. Hold on, sir. Yes. I, I thought, uh, could we approach? Sure. I thought that wasn't his opinion. I thought he was here for something else. Your Honor, this is not the testimony I was expecting. I thought that we had done something different. He is an expert witness. He was brought in to be an expert witness, and he's going to be allowed to testify to his opinion as an expert witness. So I'm not surprised. Do they have – I wonder what they're looking at. They are looking – Behind Ben Chu right here, there was a transcript of some kind, and I don't know what it was. Um, and I wonder what the issue was, but let's see. We'll keep going. We'll run out of paper. Mr. Marks, Start do you have experience working with companies looking to engage actors to market or advertise <laughs> their products? Yes. Yes. And what's that experience? Well, virtually every company I, I work for, uh, they are engaging actors to advertise their products. Most of the time, those We're products are TV shows or uh, streaming series or feature films that all involve product spinoffs and derivatives. And sometimes they are just uh, uh, products uh, and spokespeople getting together. But yes, I have experience in, in uh, hiring a star to be the face of your product. What types of things do companies consider when they're looking at using actors in their marketing or advertising? Well, as you can imagine, they consider reputation. This is a capitalist uh, society and they're looking to make money. They want to add value to their investment. They want actors who have be reputations that will bring eyeballs to the screen uh, bodies in the seats they're looking for uh added value not negativity do you have experience negotiating agreements for actors to play a certain role in a film oh yes uh, as i explained i i negotiate deals with actors to uh, uh, play roles in films and What's the significance of the actor in the starring role in the context of a feature film? The, um, the actor in the starring role uh, becomes the face of the film, the product, the series. That actor uh, is synonymous uh, with the product. And again, in hiring that actor or actress, you um, uh, want a reputation that supports uh, uh, the value that you've spent on creating the product. Uh, uh, you might say that Pirates of the Caribbean is Johnny Depp and vice versa. Boom. That's this importance of hiring Boom. a star. Boom. What aspects of an actor's reputation might um, impact their ability to get hired by brands or studios? Well, Again, on the other side of the coin, uh, you um, you wouldn't want to hire an actor who uh, has negativity uh, following them. You wouldn't want to pay to actually bring your brand down, your movie. And uh, 
so that's very important and especially in the 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 last five years uh, uh, with the me too movement uh, you wouldn't want uh, negativity uh, hiring an actor who quote unquote had been canceled are there um, is there anything in particular that might prevent an actor from getting hired by a brand or a studio well I mean, it, we're Stable. talking about illegal activity, uh, a criminal record, but right now, uh, the, the pinnacle of uh, negativity uh, in Hollywood is uh, being accused of d domestic abuse, sexual uh, abuse, violence. And what we've seen is almost immediately terminations and cancellations immediate termination to, for, for the investors to the people who create that product to to move away from that negativity i think you mentioned the me too movement um what's your understanding of what the me too movement is my understanding of the, of the me too movement is that if stuff's out of sync uh, you guys i would refresh the stream because i'm seeing finally it matched uh, up. society is listening to the uh uh, victim, giving the, the victim of uh, domestic abuse, sexual abuse, the benefit of the doubt. And there has been a shift in our society from not doing that to now uh, the victim gets the benefit of the doubt until there's too much doubt. And to me, that's the Me Too movement. One person can come forward and accuse uh, Harvey Weinstein and another person can come forward and another and another. That's the me too part of it, but they get the benefit of the doubt. Whereas in the past, uh, uh, the, the victim didn't have that uh, benefit. What impact has the me too movement had on how Hollywood conducts business? It, um, in my many decades in the business, Hollywood has, has changed and morphed but never as quickly uh, as to respond to uh, the Me Too movement that started in 2017. This is very important. Uh, when I started in the been business, around so uh, long. every contract for an actor or someone involved in the movie had a morals clause. I don't think he defended did Harvey Weinstein. I think he's explaining. Uh, they wanted to protect their brand. In the, before the Me Too movement, that morals clause was fading out. Uh, people with leverage, people said, wait a second, you just can't get rid of us because you think this or that. With the Me Too movement, Harvey Weinstein. Um, I think the uh, fact that he's been in Hollywood long Cosby, enough to see the shift will, matters The morals clause has come back and it is a demanded feature in every uh, entertainment uh, uh, employment agreement because the studios want that verbiage they want those rights so that they can act quickly and I'll decisively the stream feed real quick when there is a a, a claim to try to address that so hold on here let me mr mark do you have any experience working let me try to refresh that experience the stream feed. i did um some of the uh, production uh, legal work on a film called uh, uh, All the Money in the World. Uh, it was about the life of the Gettys, J. Paul Getty. And J. Paul Getty was played by uh, uh, Kevin Spacey. Uh, he acted in the part. He finished his role. He was paid. And then these Me Too accusations came out. And immediately, so my him client, having the perspective Sony, will help. They made a decision to take him out of the movie. Uh, and we, uh, Christopher Plummer was hired. They reshot all his scenes and seamlessly cut them in uh, to the movie. And if you see the, all the money in the world, you won't know that Kevin Spacey was ever in it. So I had that personal experience. And then coincidentally, when that happened, uh, I was also doing work for MRC, which produces House of Cards uh, and a very successful series. And, and he was the star of it. 
And he was immediately cut out and everything was redone to, to get rid of the, the, the notion that Hollywood would support an abuser after the, the Me Too movement. Um, and then uh, I, because I was in the mix of all of it, I also know that Kevin Spacey had completed a, another movie for uh, Netflix. Um, and unlike uh, all the money in the world, they couldn't reshoot it. And it sits on the shelf, a movie about Gore Vidal uh, that was finished, but has never seen so the light just of day. Canned. Just What's canned. your understanding of why these companies wanted Kevin Spacey removed from those projects? I'll try one more Can time, you guys. The question. What's your understanding of why these companies wanted Kevin Spacey removed from those projects? These companies, as I, I've said, they want they wanted Kevin Spacey removed because they didn't want the negativity. They uh, they want anyone removed so that they can get a return on their investment in our society so that they are not seen as being in the old generation where uh, women were not given the benefit of the doubt, where a, a, a victims were not given the benefit of the doubt. And uh, there, a switch has been turned uh, in, in certainly by 2017. Are there certain types of companies that are particularly sensitive to these kinds of allegations made by women in light of Me Too movement? <laughs> Disney. Well, I would say- Disney. Uh, the bigger like the company, Disney. the bigger the budgets, they're all sensitive. The, uh, but at the pinnacle of sensitivity are the family-friendly companies like Disney. Uh, they're particularly sensitive, uh, uh, not in a general way, but in a very specific way. Mr. Marks, are you familiar with the op-ed Ms. Heard published in the Washington Post on December 18th, 2018? Yes. What's your understanding of how that op-ed was received in Hollywood? My understanding of how that op-ed was received in Hollywood. Oh, is it, I'm sorry, sir. Yes. Is this his personal understanding, his expert understanding? I, it seems like if it's his personal understanding. Your Honor, I objection. I don't really know I'm the legal Mr. Marks based on his nearly for that objection. I'll overrule it. I'm just going to go ahead and object anyway. This is going to hurt. As I've said before, I'm a member of the Hollywood community. That op-ed, uh, for the first time, is in uh, a mainstream publication called the Washington Post. This is a flagship uh, journal, if you will, of American news. We're not talking about a trade paper. We're not talking about a rag. We're talking about the Washington Post. And it it is geared to Hollywood. It says two years ago, when I was getting my uh, divorce, Amber Heard is saying, uh, I, I was the abuser and you didn't, Hollywood, you, you stood up for my uh, abuser. abuser, not for Objection, me, Your the victim. Objection, he's, yeah, now he's mischaracterizing the fact. He's giving he's, his expert he's, opinion. He's expressing his understanding of how it was perceived. I'll overrule objection, go ahead. Thank you. Overruled. What I'm saying is Hollywood got the, uh, the, the subject matter of the, loud, of the, of loud the op clear. ed loud and clear. Amber Heard was calling out Hollywood for supporting, uh, uh, since, nine, since 2016, supporting her abuser. And uh, uh, she felt the wrath of Hollywood. She was calling them out to do something. In the Washington Post and um, on the eve of her biggest uh, film, a big film for Hollywood. The publicity machine was in high gear. There was uh, lots of publicity and uh, uh, news out there. This was the height of, of her fame. And she used it at that moment to call Hollywood out. They, uh, in my opinion, as a member of Hollywood, they heard uh, that plea loud and clear uh, and, um, uh, it also got her publicity for her movie. Uh, you know, uh, I don't think that that, wow. uh, I, in my perception, and people in Hollywood didn't see that as a coincidence, that date. Uh, and um, 
So yeah, in in Hollywood, I think um, uh, the, we the know message the date was wasn't a received that she was sending. The message was received. Mr. Marks, do you have an understanding of Mr. Depp's reputation in Hollywood with respect to whether or not he's on time to his film sets? Yes. What's your understanding? Hollywood has a, a history of putting up with <laughs> major artists and major stars, idiosyncratic behaviors. Uh, you know, they we've always had <laughs> uh, divas like Meryl Monroe who would stay in her trailer. They call Marilyn Monroe Meryl. Johnny Depp uh, uh, has uh, a reputation of being Johnny Depp. And when you hire Johnny Depp, you get all of Johnny Depp. And that includes uh, being late. Uh, and fortunately in Hollywood, because of the budgets and the, and the box office, you can budget for, for lateness. You can have second unit, you can have other shots. Uh, you can, you have padding in budgets, you have, padding. Uh, you have insurance for, for accidents, uh, but Hollywood knows, uh, Mr. Depp's, uh, reputation for and, running uh, late. uh, you know, I heard someone say Hollywood puts up with diva and drugs. Uh, they only do that, uh, when, uh, it, it uh, money's involved and big stars are involved and, and artistry is involved. Mr. Marks, did you have an understanding of Mr. Depp's overall reputation uh, in Hollywood prior to the publication of the December 2018 op-ed? Um, I would say that um, Johnny Depp was one of the few uh, major actors in Hollywood who managed to keep most of his personal life personal, kept uh, himself uh, uh, shrouded, if you will, a bit. Um, and his reputation, you know, preceded him as a major artist in Hollywood. But what, what also marked him uh, in this business is that he was congruent. He was, he was likable. He, you know, he, he was, uh, he was congruent with such uh, a biz phrase. You know, one of the, one of the, one of the guys. And, uh, it, um, uh, I, I never heard, uh, uh, any, uh, complaints, uh, you know, um, uh, if you will. So he was late, but he was late. Do you have an opinion about the impact of the publication of the op-ed on Mr. Depp's reputation in Hollywood? It's devastating. It, it's, um, uh, it's, it's the type of claim, the Me, Me Too claim of se sexual violence, domestic abuse, that has canceled a list of, of, uh, of actors. Uh, Chris Noth recently, I just read something about Frank Langella, uh, we know uh, uh, newscasters, uh, Les Moonves, uh, head of ABC, C CBS. Uh, now Johnny Depp is uh, in their ranks. It's it's devastating. So the op-ed's been called you, catastrophic no and right, devastating. And here we go for cross-examination. Let's see who's doing the cross. Good afternoon. Is that Rotten Born's um, cousin? Your rate in this case is $975 per hour. Is that right? That's correct. And you've charged, you've worth never it. charged that higher rate in, in any other case. Isn't that right? I've, I've charged uh, near that amount, but, but never that high. Correct. That's correct. That's how she positioned how much have you herself. Charged, how much have you it's received fair. for this case? Uh, I'd have to look at my billing during my deposition. Uh, 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 the, the, the attorney who deposed me asked me the same question. I said I would look it up. I did during lunch, and then she never got back to it again. <laughs> I don't remember how much it was then, right and I don't have the figures uh, now. I was like, I don't and care. you don't know how many hours you worked on this case? I don't case? know about the money. I'd have to look at my billing. Me. I would guess. Uh, again, I'd be guessing, and I don't know if you want I don't know that guess. dude's name. I have a full-time transactional practice. Little finger. This is a very small part of my practice. Now, you said you worked for Disney uh, for less than a year, right? I worked for Disney about a year. Yeah, and that was in 1990, right? Uh, yes. So that was about, that was 32 years ago? Yeah. Okay. 
And you worked at Greenberg Trowering from 2004 to 2006, is that right? That's correct. Uh, your, your leaving was a mutual decision, was it not? Yes. Okay. This is the one who objected to um, himself. Now. It's a little rotten. <laughs> I don't know his name, but it's a little rotten. Mr. Depp still has an endorsement deal with uh, Dior, correct? He does. I understand that. Yes. Okay. And he's had that endorsement deal since 2015. Isn't that right? Uh, I I believe he's had the endorsement deal for a while, and I think he still has. Why didn't it. they ask right. his agent? And Dior hasn't dropped Mr. Depp, correct? Uh, as far as I know, Dior has not dropped him. Why didn't they ask and, his agent? And Mr. Depp did not have a contract for Pirate Six. Isn't that right? As far as I know, there is no contract uh, for Pirate 6. Right. And all the documents you've looked at, you looked at all the documents in this case, and you've not seen a contract for Pirate 6, right? His cross has That's been my better memory than of, the others. Uh, the though, documents, I will there was say. no contract it's concise. for Pirate 6. And in, and in all the documents you looked at, it's you didn't fast. see a text saying, Mr. Depp got the contract for Pirate 6 for $22.5 million, right? Objection has been answered. It wasn't. Overruled. Yeah, it wasn't, though. I, I didn't uh, see paperwork on uh, an agreement uh, for uh, car, uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 6. So not an email, not a text, didn't not any written paperwork about Pirate 6, correct? Objection, ask and answer. I'll that was that asked and answer. Question. He did answer. <clears throat> um, yes, this is a better question. And you don't know one way or the himself. other whether Mr. Depp will be in Pirates of Caribbean 6. You don't have a crystal ball, is that right? Not a crystal ball. <laughs> He's an expert. Uh, hello. You asked for a crystal ball. She objected speculation. Come on. Well, as an expert, of course, I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> but as an expert, uh, uh, how are we here? I think Disney will do everything possible to try to put uh, uh, him uh, back in Pirates, but not under uh, this cloud. Okay. <laughs> you would agree that there was negative publicity about Mr. Depp before the op-ed, correct? Yes. You know that Ms. Hurd made her accusations public starting in May of 2016, right? Yes. And and Hollywood knew about that, right? Yes. Okay. And Mr. Depp still had movies after May of 2016, right? Yes. Okay. Now, you would agree that there was pu negative publicity about Mr. Depp being publicly drunk before the op-ed, correct? Thank you. Wait, Nadal Hoff. There was. I, I I agree with the proposition that there was negative publicity right, before we're just the op-ed. The op-ed was something Nate different. Hoffed. And you agree? It, is it in twenty fourteen? There was an article in the Guardian that said apparently drunk Johnny Depp cut off at Hollywood Film Award ceremony. Would you agree with that? Again, I, I don't remember reading the the Guardian, uh, and I don't remember that particular incident. But I I'll take you. Uh, at your word. This is and the you, were, you remember in looking through all the press. documents that you saw an article that Johnny Depp allegedly showed up drunk to movie premiere reports. Negative say, right? press. That was in 2017. And the Washington Post are I, different. The Guardian. I, I think I've testified that, uh, that, that there there is certainly Johnny Depp <laughs> behavior and and uh, uh, negativity out there. Yes. And, and that a family that a family that a family production studio like Disney wouldn't want to be associated with, correct? Uh, they put up with drinking again. You're talking about a very specific, uh, uh, you know, uh, series of five films that earn billions of dollars, uh, and there is a line in Hollywood, as I've said, they'll put up with divas and drugs. To make money, uh, but now we've drawn a line uh, in Hollywood at now uh, we've drawn the, a line um, uh, domestic and sexual abuse. And, and looking through the documents, you saw the articles in June of 2018 that said vodka for breakfast, 72 hour fast. drug binges, and spending sprees that beggar belief. You, you saw that again. I, I don't know. I know these articles exist, I know they're not in the Washington Post. I don't know what article you're referring to who wrote it uh you know what publication it was we'll in about this but i know it's a great that question. those articles exist and you'd agree that before the op-ed mr depp had a run of movie flops wouldn't you agree oh, every look actor at him. has uh you know ups and downs mr depp is is a career has been decades long uh, you would agree and, that in in january oh, of 2015 right there was an article that said right, johnny right, depp right. is on his way to becoming the most overpaid actor in hollywood Again, you'd have to show me the article, but I don't doubt that some uh, commentator 
trying to uh, trade on the clicks and views. Uh, clicks and views. Pants wrote that. Clicks and, and you views. agree that there was another article in 2015 that says, quote, has Johnny Depp become Hollywood's biggest joke? I don't know. Netflix has a whole festival going now. Netflix is a joke. And you'd agree um, that there is an article in Business Insider from 2015 that says Johnny Depp has his fifth box office bomb in a row. I don't if, agree to if that. If that's what it said, it said. Are you just going to keep uh, reading? I, well, I mean, this is Mr. Depp's reputation. That's what you're talking about in terms of, <laughs> in terms of Hollywood, correct? And in 2016, says, December of 2016, there's a quote, there's an article that says, quote, Johnny Depp is Hollywood's most yes, overpaid Sister actor Babylon. for the he second year. definitely about to dog Do you recall reading that? Johnny. Was that written by the second uh, uh, underpaid actor? Or and you would that agree that before the op-ed, there was a negative publicity for Mr. Depp about assassinating President Trump. Would you agree? No, yeah. I missed that one. <laughs> I you didn't see an article in the New York that Times one. that said Johnny Depp flirts with idea of Trump assassination, then apologizes? Uh, again, that, Johnny Depp talks with the irony and uh, panache, and uh, I don't particularly remember that i have a lot of stuff in front of me disney uh, wouldn't want to be disney wouldn't want to be involved with somebody who's calling for the assassination of the president would it I, i'm sure after those articles uh, <laughs> uh johnny depp was involved in uh, major studio projects do you know one way or the other whether mr depp was involved in major studio projects after when june 23rd, 2017 uh i i think uh it, again i i haven't quoted his uh, imd page TV page to memory, but IMDb he page. was in um, uh, uh, an animated film called Sherlock Gnomes. I think it was released. Uh, Paramount uh, is one of the producers. I think it was released in 2017. Would you at. agree that before the op-ed, there was negative publicity from Sir Depp about punching a crew member on a film set? I, I heard uh, about that. Okay. So that's people who work in the Hollywood the is, that Mr. Depp had it. People didn't care about assault, the Trump correct? stuff. People didn't care about People didn't care I, about it. Is what I heard saying. about it. Yes. And would you agree that there were stories about Mr. Depp drinking heavily on the set of Pirates Five? Uh, there were lots of stories that came out, and uh, I'm sure that this is a uh, proper cross. Though. And those stories came out in 2016 and 2017, before the op-ed, right? Um, Again, you'd have to funny. show me a timeline, but I'll take your word that there I don't were know. Show me a timeline. articles. Show me the articles uh, written in. Thank you, Stephanie. Various rags or, or uh, trade <laughs> public. Called them rags. The New York and, Times a rag? Is that is that what you're saying? No, I'm not saying yeah. the New York Times is a rag. What I'm saying is, what's a rag? I need a definition. At the height of the Me Too movement, uh, we have this op-ed yes. uh, directed at Hollywood, and in in the it's Hollywood I different. know. The rest of the stuff is background noise. Now, the and Hollywood Pirates I 5 know. did not make as much money in the box office as the prior Pirates movies did. It didn't. wasn't Isn't as that good. True? Uh, that's true. It only made uh, about $800 million. It made less, though, than the first It only made four, about $800 correct? million. Dollars. Yeah, and okay. any company any company would want to have a, a, uh, a box million office dollar hit that made $800 million. Now, let's... Can you put up the exhibit, uh, defendant's exhibit uh, 99, please? This lawyer should know to wait for redirect to get his context in, but he wants to fight with this lawyer, and so he's yeah, not going to do it. Now, you said the Me Too movement started in 2017. Is that is that what you're saying? I'm, uh, it actually started long before that, but it picked up steam to the, to the what we now call the Me Too movement in 2017. Okay, and do you recognize this article from Dan Wooten? It says, how can J.K. Rowling be genuinely happy casting wife beater Johnny Depp in the new Fantastic Beast film? Here we go. Let's talk about the difference yes, between uh, the articles. this article is in... Um, Let's talk about it. Sorry, uh, chat. You guys are going past the Sun, which uh, came to prominence by uh, publishing uh, Topless Women on page three. <laughs> and the article came out in April, on April 27th, 2018, correct? That's how he feels about I'll, the sun. I, I, I haven't skimmed through this, but I'll I'll take your, your word for it. And, Don't. And read it. It's, it. I think what you're trying to say was that the read it. sun was a rag, so no one would pay any attention to it. Is that what you're trying to say? I, I'm, I'm saying the sun is the sun, uh, and it's in the UK. And what this article is, is a, is repeating Samantha, it's an stuff excellent from point. 2016. Re, re, excellent repeating point. Repeating all the stuff Keep playing our drunk that character. you might say should be all past history after the divorce it's one 
one Wooten's opinion in, in a newspaper that's claimed to fame as page three women, topless. And yeah. And, and Mr. Depp the, sued, the, the, Mr. UK, Depp you know, sued we, the Sun over this, right? I think What's this that? is an Mr. Depp point, sued Robbie. the Sun in the UK about this article, right? Uh, as far as I know, he wanted to uh, clear his name. That's right. And Mr. Mr. Depp, that's what, that lawsuit occurred in 2020, correct? It was tried in 2020. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. And there were accusations of abuse that came out based on that lawsuit, correct? Uh, that's unfair. As far as I know, the accusations were all old news and uh, predated much. But yeah, I mean, this is a 2018 article, and in 2020, they probably were rehashing it. And the old news that was coming out in 2018, that would also affect Mr. Depp's reputation, correct? It's all about. Amber Again, Hall. I've tried to draw a line, the, the line that Hollywood draws uh, uh, between uh, the Me Too movement and uh, starting in 2017 uh, and the, the gossip and the, the claims back and forth. I mean, I, there, was, there was also press about Amber Heard being an abuser uh, in those years. Uh, there was also the other side of the coin. But the op-ed that didn't mention Mr. Depp at all and didn't mention any accusations that what happened to her, that's what caused Mr. Depp's this reputational harm. This is the point of Cross. All his reputational harm, that's it's, what you're saying? This is well, the I point of Cross. Well, I agree that uh, this article was not about Did Mr. it mention Depp. Mr. Depp? That's what I asked you. Uh, well, the, does she have another husband who abused her? But in did it talk about it? Did it talk at all about Mr. Depp's abuse? Objection, Your Honor. He's tried to answer the first question, which was not exactly what the second question was well, that he asked. Answered. Asked you to just to ask, you, yeah, ask your question. Argumentative. The, the op-ed article didn't mention any specific abuse by Mr. Depp towards Amber Heard. Correct. Uh, the only uh, name is this is Amber Heard telling her story that started in 2016 when she was domestically abused and ignored. Now, there were headlines about the UK trial, correct? Uh, I'm sure there were, yes. Like, let's burn Amber texts allegedly sent by Johnny Depp about X read in court. I didn't hear you. Let's burn Amber texts allegedly sent by Johnny Depp about X read in court. Yeah. And there's a headline from July 19th, 2020, that said, quote, Hollywood nervously awaits fallout from explosive Johnny Depp trial. So Hollywood was following the following the case, correct? But that was after. Yeah. When was that headline? In 2020. 2020. Yeah. I, I, look, uh, uh, Johnny Depp is a, is a decades long uh, fixture in Hollywood and people were, were following something across the pond. You know, we thought we kind of got rid of the UK in 1776, but they, they were still following it. Absolutely. I mean, Mr. Depp thought of enough about this article. The court's going to yell at the people laughing. To have a three-week trial in the UK, correct? Objection. Calls for speculation about what Mr. Depp thought. I'll sustain the objection. Next there was a three-week trial in the UK based on this article by Dan. They Lewis, really correct? want to get into the UK. I think I've said uh, Mr. Depp uh, finally uh, had enough to his and, opinion. He, and he sued to clear his name. Okay, can I, can I approach your honor? All right. He did sue to clear his name. So it's interesting. I saw a comment. I was trying to flag it, but y'all, there's over 29,000 of you in here. And so sometimes they move really fast. But it was saying motion to treat this witness as hostile. This is cross-examination. You don't need to treat the witness as hostile. In court, treating a witness as hostile means a witness you called that you get to treat them as an opposing witness where you get to cross-examine them and ask those leading questions instead of open-ended questions. This witness is already an opposite witness or an opposing witness or a hostile witness because they were called by Depp's team. Heard's team already gets to cross-examine them. He's just not going to be caught out. He's like, no, that's not what I'm saying. He's like, there's a line. Hollywood will put up with these certain things. It won't put up with these other certain things. And this is what the point is. This is why I think this article did damage. Though, again, this jackhammer style of cross-examination to try to catch somebody in something by asking rapid-fire questions is not always my preferred style, but he's actually linearly going through all these other things that could have caused damage to the reputation of Johnny Depp. And that is something that very much matters because, again, part of the defamation is what happened to Johnny Depp's reputation? What, um, 
what did the damage to Depp's reputation? I'm trying to watch the body language of the court and the attorneys up here to see what they're talking about. But it's that's why he's trying to um why he's trying to get into all these other things. Okay, well, these happened in um 2020. What's that have to matter with losing pirates back in 2018? And again, for Hollywood to be Hollywood, I don't discount that this guy's like Hollywood has changed a lot. I've been in it since the 70s. I've seen it change a lot. And now they, Hollywood is drawing a line with different types of abuse. And he enlisted sexual abuse, domestic abuse, that types of abuse. He didn't say violence per se, because Hollywood can, you know, look the other way a bit, though maybe that's changing after the Oscars this year. But he's like drunks and divas. You know, they're going to put up with people doing drugs. They're going to put up with people being late. They're going to put up with that if they're a big enough star. But where they draw the line is here, post Me Too. And that's really what he's saying. The line was drawn in the sand. And then after the line was drawn in the sand, things changed. I love that now he's standing up to stretch. Let's all take a stretch. We're like in the seventh inning. We're not even. We're not in the Mr. seventh Marks, inning. You testified that in the uh, UK case, Mr. Depp was looking to clear his name, correct? That's my uh, assumption, yes. And yes or no, did Mr. Depp clear his name through that lawsuit? Uh, I'm, uh, I wasn't in the UK, and uh, I'm... Uh, uh, not going to. Uh, I'm not going to answer that. Point on that. That's not what I've been engaged to talk about. You don't know one way or the other whether Mr. Depp cleared his name through that lawsuit. Objection, Your Honor. Ask and answer. I'll sustain the objection. Next question. They're trying to get into territory they can't really. You get understand? Into. Can you please put up um, Exhibit Defendant's Exhibit 115? What are we trying to get into? Not if he doesn't know it as a matter of fact. Did, in they weren't supposed the to be bringing it in. see headlines from October 25th, 2018, but almost two months before opinion. the op-ed, that Mr. Depp would not be in Pirate 6. So you guys asking about speculation, I, he's allowed yeah, to. Yeah, I, I saw that there was speculation. He's allowed to form an opinion because uh, he's an expert. None, uh, uh, quoting a Disney executive, if you will, not none being definitive. Okay. You should have stuck and, with the- And by the way, I, I can't shit. see, what. where's this article from? I just see the headline. Yeah, I can't see the rest of it. Can you give me the, the rest of the information? So- uh, This is from the, Daily Mail. The Daily Mail is a UK publication. Uh, all right, let's move. I mean, do you know or not? Ooh. Do I know what? Do you know if it's a UK publication or not? I, 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 I'm asking you where it's from. I think that- the Daily Mail is, but I'm not sure. Okay. Now, did you review the deposition testimony in this case of uh, the Walt Disney corporate designee? Yes. Okay. And do you recall that the corporate designee testified that Disney produced all documents related to its business relationship with Mr. Depp, including considering Mr. No Depp for any work with Disney or future pirates films? Is what they're getting. You do not recall seeing the op-ed or any documents referring to the op-ed in that in that production of documents. I, I read the, uh, uh, the deposition. I, I don't recall seeing the op-ed and what Disney produced. What I do recall uh, is the, um, uh, that the person giving that deposition for Disney uh, really had no contact with uh, uh, Jerry Bruckheimer or Sean Bailey. Interesting. Uh, just uh, was someone that Disney put up who didn't know anything is what I. I can't. And you imagine. understand? You're, you're a lawyer, right? He's you, been you flustered this whole time. The corporate designee is supposed to be in the shoes of the corporation talking for Disney, correct? Objection, Your Honor. I think that's outside the scope of his uh, expertise. It is case. outside the scope oh, of cool. his testimony as well. But what else? I understand that that's what the. Uh, corporate designee is supposed to be, but when I read that they are not <laughs> That's in touch what, with, want, that, that was the question. Not in touch Let with him the president finish. of the company, I, 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 it, it gives me pause. So Disney itself represented through this, through this person, through this witness that it had no, it did not have the op-ed in any of its files, correct? I don't remember that passage in the um, uh, deposition uh, but I, I can't remember. She certainly did not 
uh, quote the op-ed or produce the op-ed or talk about the op-ed. Now, but I, in Hollywood actions, sometimes speak much louder than words. And did you recall that that well, same that. corporate designee said that Pirate 6 is still possibly in development? Uh, until Disney says it's not in development, it's in development. Okay. And can we put up Defendants Exhibit 134? Is this going to be repetitive? I love the in Hollywood actions speak louder than words. I think that's the key takeaway. Hey, He's doing his job on Cross. 5th, 2020. And where is it, this, this from? Uh, the over talking some, is annoying. Uh, rogue website where is this from <laughs> where is this from is this even a legitimate publication inside the magic.com okay okay inside the magic Disney reportedly scraps plans for depths pirates of the caribbean six return and that was on november 5th 2020 correct uh it, assuming that this is a correct copy of this random website <laughs> uh yeah uh, that's what it says <laughs> They're not quoting uh, <laughs> the, the head of production. It's not a statement by Disney, but that's what this, uh, this random wo website. woman, uh, Rebecca Barton, says. Well, two years <laughs> after the op-ed, it was still a question as to whether Mr. Depp oh was going to be in Pirate 6. <laughs> there was no contract for Mr. Depp to be in Pirate 6, wow. but he was Pirates. And uh, oh, there would always that be that question website. until... Pirates is produced or until Disney says Again. otherwise. And November 2020. I didn't see a quote he at said. At the same time as all the publicity surrounding the UK case, correct? I don't know. He wasn't paying attention. Uh, I, I I think the UK judgment uh, came out uh, in November that 2020. Was funny. And, the, and this article came out three days after the judgment, correct? The one on uh, inside if, the magic.com? The judgment came out in uh, on the second, this is three days later in, uh, what's this again? Uh, MovieMagic.com. Correct. By Rebecca, uh, you know, uh, he, just, he just said correct when it was wrong. Could I approach your honor? Yeah, he's right. saying, he's saying this is a random website with no quotes from production. Why are we relying on this? And again, no shade to inside the magic.com because inside the magic.com, it probably reports on the speculations and the goings on of disney which is fine but is that something that's oh they're getting told to not laugh um is that something that can be relied on for his expertise no he's like some random website it's like I, well, i'm not going to rely on that we don't have any statements from disney that's not reliable for my opinion so i'm interested to see where we're now, going next isn't it true that you don't recall i hate isn't it true when you first read the op-ed or just like blank that from your As mind. As I sit here today, I don't recall when I first read it. You don't even, you don't, rec I mean, you don't even. It wasn't a big deal to you. We're going to attack him. You huh? didn't read it in 2018, correct? I have a wife, two kids, a full time uh, job. I don't remember. Okay. And I don't rep Johnny Depp. You have no idea when you first read it. I just want to make sure I understand that. Objection. Asked and answered. Asked and answered yeah. Sustained objection. Look, I, I sustained, wasn't. It's sustained, 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 sustained counsel. Okay. I sustained the objection. Counsel, she sustained it. Shush. Now, Rotten Board, is he smirking? You, as an expert in the entertainment field, do you know any actresses whose careers have gotten better after making accusations of a domestic abuse against an actor in Hollywood? That's a good question. I think, uh, you know, that the, 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 it's the a hard sticks, to answer. Uh, and uh, to, to both sides. Uh, and I, both sides. I can't think of any actresses who have uh, prevailed uh, and who have been canceled. Have you thought, do you know of any actresses whose careers have gotten better after making accusations of domestic abuse against a man in Hollywood? I, I haven't been uh, asked to... Uh, opine on that but i can i certainly will look into it i i don't think that this is something the answer is no right you don't know again i i assume uh that uh so yes or no do you know or not uh, thought her career would get better by bringing this out i don't know all right thank you i have nothing further. all right redirect and done and as we get into redirect i will we guys we have almost thirty thousand people on stream and we're getting into redirect yes, you were asked a series of questions about a number of publications and publicity related to Mr. Depp um, uh, by Mr. Nadelhoff. Do you recall those questions? 
Mr. Nadal. He has a lot of questions about a lot of articles. <laughs> and sir, He's based not on your pleased. experience in the entertainment industry, do you have an understanding of what types of publications carry the most weight in Hollywood? There we go. The publications to carry the most weight in Hollywood, in my opinion, after all these decades, are Variety, Hollywood Reporter, uh, Washington Post, Wall Street Journal, New York Times. Those are the publications. traditional publications. And Mr. Nadelhoff asked you a number of questions about certain headlines um, related to Mr. Depp and, and various news coverage related to Mr. Depp. Um, do you have an opinion about the impact of, of those articles that you looked at with Mr. Nadelhoff on cross-examination? This is what Mr. matters on redirect. This is what matters the most. Again, I don't remember all the articles. But what I do know is that Johnny Depp. I mean, it's a blog. I right? had always had articles about him and that that didn't change the baseline. Uh, a few had a big project and it had a role for Johnny Depp. That didn't change the baseline. Is your opinion about the um, op-ed misheard author different than that? My opinion about how the are these two in, things different? Uh, the Washington Post is, is was a different that was uh, 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 had a, a, a different quality of, of headline and uh, article. Thank you, Your Honor. No further questions. Right. Is this witness Ooh, subject to recall? Done. Done. Uh, he is. Your is Honor. this All the right, last witness? Is subject to recall. The rule, rule of witness does apply for you. So you can ask the last witness. Testimony. I did not uh, watch any of the uh, case. Now's okay, the time. Sir? One in the chat. Go today, sir. Okay, thank you. Is this the last All witness? Right, watch your step, please. I have no further witnesses. Is that what is that what's happening? Let's right, see. Your next witness. Plaintiff calls Douglas Banya, Your Honor. Not okay. the last witness. Can you spell that last name for me. Douglas. C A N I A. Thank you. All right, one more witness. We'll see if it's one more. I know you guys. I was thinking too. I was thinking too. I was thinking we were done. I don't know who Douglas Banya is, but let's see. That was a good redirect. Your Honor, may I approach for just a moment? Okay, sure. The redirect hit yeah. on the essential parts of the cross, and the essential parts of the cross were really, you know, but what else could have damaged his reputation? And while I don't love the style of cross, I think that um, I think that it was an effective cross because it pointed out there are other things that could have damaged the reputation. That was the point. Um Emily, you missed. He said, I guess Amber Heard thought this was going to help her. No, I heard him say it. It was kind of a throwaway. But yeah, I heard him say it. But that's, they were talking over him, but we'll see. Good afternoon, sir. Yes, we'll see what they finish on. Good afternoon, Mr. Banya. Uh, will you please state your full name for the record? Yes, Douglas Banya. And Mr. Banya, what do you do for work? I am an intellectual property damages and valuation expert. Uh, Do you have any particular specialty in your own damages? Uh, yes, my specialty is uh, using internet and social media analysis when I'm quantifying value or I'm Ooh, social calculating media analysis. damages or if I'm analyzing the impact of social media or internet events. So another Where expert is to damages. I work at uh, Nevium, which is located in San Diego, California. How long have you worked there? 10 years. What's your position? I'm uh, a founding principal and an analyst. I'd like to it's talk a, very a little bit point, about Becky. your um, educational background. All right, they're going to get onto all of his expert Where did background. You college? I'm going to go to the bathroom right now. I received my bachelor's degree in cinema from USC? San Diego State University. Oh, what a nice I change. I graduated in 1997. And after you graduated <laughs> in 1997, did you pursue another degree? Yes, I went directly to San Diego State University. I got a master's degree in television, film, new media right. production. So we're going to get into all the experts. Was there any background. particular reason you chose to go to San Diego State for that? Um, it's fun. The new media production side of that program, I really liked. This was I graduated from there in 2000, so this is even before YouTube was found. So the whole idea of putting film Hello, on the media. internet and kind of analyzing the internet and uh, using analytic tools to see how things are doing on the internet is what that's what's that's what attracted me, and that's what I, I learned there as well. Julia Nunn, no charges. What did you do after you got your this master's kind of degree? the end. 
Um, after the master's perjury. degree, I moved to Los Angeles and right. uh, I was an independent right. filmmaker for a while. Right and I got introduced to intellectual property and I started working for a, a small boutique IT firm back in San Diego. What was the boutique firm you went to? What was the name of the firm? Yes. Uh, the name of the firm was Consor. And what, what did Consor do? Consor uh, values intellectual property for various business reasons. They do litigation support services as well. And when, when you say intellectual property, what do you mean? Um, when I talk about intellectual property, I'm mostly talking about um, copyrights, patents, and trademarks. Uh, I might include uh, related intangible assets such as domain names, websites, internet accounts. Uh, but IP for me is mostly brands, publicity rights, copyrights, trademarks. What type of work did you do while you were at Consor? Um, I have various positions there, but um, I was a research analyst as a financial analyst. Um, I was a director of business development. Uh, my last position there was a principal. And what kinds of things did you work on? Uh, we worked on, you know, valuation. Our clients, you know, they needed valuation of their IP portfolio for maybe tax or estate reasons. Um, you know, a lot of litigation support like I'm doing now. Uh, somebody infringes on a trademark or publicity rights. Uh, That's actually the place I got my, I was my first expert witness job. Uh, I was a named expert on a right of publicity case. Um, representing the retired players uh, of the NFL uh, against the NFL. They're using their name and likeness without permission. So uh, services such as that. How long did you work at Consor? I was at Consor for 10 years. And after Consor, where did you work? Then at Nevium, where I am now. And did you found Nevium? Yes. What kind of work does Nevium do? <clears throat> Nevium does several things, uh, provides several services. We value intellectual property for various reasons, tax estate, to m and uh, business transactions. Um, you know, we not only provide the value of a business, but we can break that value. What percent of the value is this trademark portfolio or this patent portfolio? Um, we do litigation support. So like I'm here, I testify in cases, of, you know, maybe a false endorsement case. Somebody uses slow celebrity's name and likeness without permission. Maybe there's a trademark infringement case. You use a brand without permission. Um, like you know, Ringo. a defamation case such as this. You know, what's the impact of something that was posted online? Uh, the impact's interesting. So the third I mean, I'm interested uh, kind of, to hear that. of services we offer um, we'll is see. brand monetization strategies. So I think the best way to explain that is, is companies have business plans, they have marketing plans, they don't have IP plans. So we come in and work with, with customers, with our clients, understand their business and their marketing plans of and help them don't. build a, an IP plan that fits in with those two so they can essentially make more money off their branded products and services. Makes sense. Um, and I think what's important with all that is, you know, what differentiates us with competitors is we use internet and Ringo, website the tools adult and all everything we do you know everything and Ringo Star. there was an IP case and, I covered um, between the two of them uh, understanding those tools when calculating value or calculating damages is important well, we're going to see how much do you have any Jack professional was certifications uh, I am a certified licensing professional that is a designation given by the licensing executive society um, LES. LES is a not-for-profit organization that um, He's an expert supports expert. professionals like me who, who deal with a lot of licensing. Uh, um, I'm a Google Analytics individual, uh, the Google Analytics individual qualification. Oh, interesting. That is a test given by Google for those that understand and pass a test related to um, internet analytics. Can you explain a little bit about what Google Analytics is? Yeah, so Google <laughs> Analytics is a web service. Oh, um, Lord. Provided by <laughs> Google, and it, it's used by business owners what are and analytics? website owners to understand uh, the traffic that comes to their websites. 
So yeah. essentially, once you sign up for your Google Analytics account, you're given a bit of code and you embed that code into various web, your web pages, then you can log in and you can see like yep. who's coming to my website, what are they doing, and How really can target them with a ads? tool for search engine optimization. You know, the goal of the SEO. web is to show up number one in Google organic. So one. then you, We're you know, you'll tweak one. your website a bit. You'll look at your analytics, see if you're showing up on, on the first page of Google. If not, you know, you can use those analytics to keep what playing even around are numbers? Uh, and try to end I'll be talking over some of, of his um, background Are you a member of stuff. any professional organizations? You're a professional. I'm a member of right? the International Trademark Association. Uh, that is a you like no shit, right? That's where we're going to. Uh, they're actually having a, their annual conference here in BC, so I'm popping back and forth to that. Um, it's been very I, fun. I'm on their right of publicity panel. I just gave a presentation on uh, this morning, Monday. Uh, Isn't today I'm a Monday? I'm non-attorney member Isn't of uh, the American Bar Association. How oh, interesting! I'm I didn't on know their, they did that. Uh, copyright and social media committee. Oh, that's why. Um, Your Honor, at this point, plaintiff would um, offer Mr. Banya as an expert in internet and social media analytics. All right. Any objection? All right. So moved. Thank you. He's allowed to do some different things as an expert. Mr. Banya, what were you asked to to do in this case? I was asked to analyze the impact of the the allegations of domestic abuse abuse, uh, made by Ms. Hurd as it relates to her 2016 restraining order. And then asked to also analyze the republication of that uh, alleged abuse in her 2018 uh, Washington Post op-ed. When's it better what more? Done in Pre Me Too or Post Me Too? To 2016 or 2018? When does it? So I, I identified the best tools to use in this case, um, which are Q scores. Um, Google Trends Thanks, Sarah. and uh, a historic Google, Google search results. Um, you used a few terms in there. I just want to break them down a little bit. Good uh, questioning. What's a Q score? Uh, yeah, you say Q, Q everybody's like, what are you is, talking about? Uh, there's, a, there's a Q score company that's been around for about 50 years. And what they do is they measure how well a brand or a celebrity or sports character is known and how much they're liked. And they also measure how much they're disliked. Huh. Who else besides you uses Q scores? Can we Q score all of the YouTubers? I want Q scores. Any company that I'm so curious. You know, organizations that license. Damn it! I want to know so many, so many questions. Endorse their product or service. What's the likability um, of James Charles? The Tell us. PGA Golf Tour is actually using Q scores right now. They're using Q scores and Google search results. They have a, a pool of know. forty million dollars. Tier list YouTubers. What's Mr. Beast's so Q score? Google uh, search results and their Q scores and other metrics. I'm sure. Uh, they're using those uh, to, you know, divide up that pool of money. I want to know. You also mentioned Google Trends. What's that? Yeah, Google that Trends is know. another service offered by Google. Um, you know, as we know, everything starts with a Google search these days. Yes, it does. Five billion daily searches on Google. And Google Trends allows a user like me or you to go into Google I Trends Google and Trends. analyze a search traffic for various key terms, anything you really want. Maybe uh, there's a new football player and you want to see how that football player is trending compared to the team over time, or maybe something related to Hello, you know, Ukraine or maybe a celebrity. Uh, so Google Trends just shows you what kind of search Lindsay, it sounds is like happening uh, during various points of time. Hello, Mariah. What are historical Google search results? Yeah, Google Trends so is really interesting. So historical Google search results are search but using Google, there's actually an area where you can go back in time and see what was showing up in Google during that time. Uh, and it's, it's really the best indication of what websites would have appeared back in time. Um, oftentimes, you know, working with my monetization Very clients, important witness. we want to know, hey, how were you ranking years ago for your branded service or your branded company? It will go back in time and look and, and then in litigation, you know, we're always going back in time. I mean, you know? so they probably could use the digital replace. We just heard about what that. Websites were served back then. And when you know what websites were served back then, you typically know what people were reading and thinking about. I'm fascinated by all of this. How did you choose these particular tools for your analysis in this case? Um, 
Well, the Q scores, I really thought it was the best idea to understand Mr. Depp's Q scores right before 2016, before the abuse allegations. Just He's doing a very good job that. explaining it. Then I wanted to see his Q scores right after uh, the 2016 alleged uh, abuse allegations. And then I wanted to see his Q scores after the 2018 uh, Washington Post op-ed. Statistical, just to see if there was any not changes opinion, during that statistical period changes. Of time. What happened in and 2016? What, about, uh, what happened in 2018? Google Trends and What's the difference? Google search results. Yeah, I mean, I felt that like those two tools together were perfect because what I wanted to do uh, is understand, you know, as I mentioned, everyone's going to Google. Yeah, I think this is great. Out. You know, what, what were people, Google, when people Googled Johnny Depp prior to these uh, alleged uh, abuse allegations, what websites were coming up and what was the public consuming about him. Then I wanted to know that after and then after the, the op-ed. So I used Google Trends just to identify the dates so and cool. time uh, in which then I went into the historic Google search results. I searched for Mr. Depp uh, and then I changed those dates to go back in time. And then um, I, I analyzed the, the top three websites of each search. Interesting. So based on the analysis you did in this case, have you formed any opinions? Yeah, my analysis shows that prior to prior to 2016 and the allegations, um, the abuse allegations, uh, Mr. Depp was not portrayed in a negative connotation. Um, you know, that's the first thing that I that I, that I identified. Did you form any other conclusions? Um, I. I, I, I realized sure so. that those websites that were coming up were, were mostly about his career, his, his characters, Johnny Depp as an individual, you know, his interests. Uh, then after the 2016 I mean, right, her mark, score has gone brown. Uh, you know, the majority of those results turned into negative things about the um, abuse allegations. And then even more so after the op-ed, there seemed to be kind of a theme or a flavor of he needs to not only the this abuse better. allegations, but his drinking and, and drug use. Did, did that answer your question? No, yes. it didn't. Okay. Yeah. Um, Mr. Banya, have you prepared a demonstrative um, that depicts how you used Google Trends in this case? Yes. Ooh. Um, your Honor, at this time, uh, we'd like permission to approach I have her copy. The demonstrative is going to be um, something that shows the change. This is really interesting testimony because Heard's team is very much trying to argue, yeah, but 2016 did it. Like these, the the shit was out of the horse or the herd in 2016, and it was already out there. So in 2016, the damage was done. The 2018 article didn't really do the damage. It just reiterated what happened in 2016. So there's no defamation here because the damage was already done. For defamation, you do have to have damage, though we could talk about defamation per se, but they are really banging on about trying to prove damages. So now with this, they're going to show, look, between 2016 and 2016, 17, here's the difference. And that last witness was kind of pinging where Hollywood shifted with Me Too and where Hollywood started taking things um, much more seriously and where, where Hollywood made that pivot. And so now we're going to come in with the analytics and the numbers under that pivot. So these two witnesses stack really well together with like, here's the timeline of what the damage is. And then here's how damaging this op-ed was. And we will get to see how damaging this op-ed was. So this is a demonstrative from an expert. So I'm very excited to see it. Um, demonstratives generally aren't going to be evidence. They are going to be a visual graph or a visual depiction to help explain the evidence that's being seen. But did they go back up? Because the audio is still cut in court. Find a demonstrative. There we go. I was wondering why. For the record, we've marked these as plaintiffs uh, 1236 for identification. 1236 for identification. Do you want to publish to the jury? Yes. Yes, please. Publish to me. We want to see. We want to see. Ooh, demonstratives. And Mr. Banya, can you um, explain for the jury what um, is depicted in this demonstrative that you prepared? Yes. So this is. Um, That's going on Twitter. This is the Google Trends data. Uh, you're going to see that it runs from 2004 uh, into 2020, and you're going to notice the different. Lemon Crush, I'm spikes. fascinated too. Those spikes represent 
uh, when people were searching for Mr. Depp. Um, you can also notice here, I've got the red line uh, just showing this the date. This is 2016. Uh, when Ms. Hurd filed the restraining order. Oh, can I, can I write on this? Thing? You can touch the screen, yes. Okay. yes sir. Thank you, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so here I'm talking about, uh, in this line here, is, is just the date and time in which Ms. Hurd alleged the abuse and filed the restraining order. And then this line here uh, is the December 18th, 2018 op-ed. what are the spikes being And what I bad? wanted to do is identify the here. peaks of interest in Mr. Depp. Uh, and you're gonna notice here, uh, I found 17 spikes of interest that I analyzed. And then the 51 key web pages we're gonna get into later, I, I've analyzed the top three search results for each spike. And then here I, I uh, analyzed the seven spikes after uh, you know, the 2016 uh, allegations of abuse. And then again, after the December 18th, 2018 uh, op-ed. Um, once you determined that he's going to have to break down what this means significant interest in searches for Johnny Depp um, on Google, what, what did you do with that information? So, again, the purpose of using Google Trends was just to understand when there's the most interest in Johnny Depp, because for some reason, something was going on in the news and the media, people are turning to Google to, to search for Mr. Depp. Uh, so then I, I went to my web browser. Uh, and, and then I, I searched uh, for Johnny Depp in Google. But before I did so, I have a separate web browser. I call it my Workbench browser. You know, I don't log into anything. It's important to be logged out of Google uh, because Google keeps Minus a profile two, on you and your search results could be biased based on that profile. Then also when you go into a web browser, you have to clear your cache, you have to clear your history. So it keeps clear it clean. All your data and make sure you can get the most unbiased search results as possible. So I went into Google, uh, I typed in uh, Johnny Depp, and then uh, I searched and set the time periods for the various points here that you see labeled with letters. Do you have a demonstrative that shows um, an example of one of those points that you um, So this you is examined? Exhibit D, yes. there's gonna be more okay. of these. Tom, could we go to um, the second uh, Banya demonstrative, please? Yeah, so this is, this is an, uh, an example of, I, I believe it was spike or point O in the Google Trends. So what I did is I went into Google, I cleared everything as I, as Hall, I she told can't you, made fire sure her I attorneys in the Google. middle of trial. And here you can see I so typed in Johnny Depp, I hit the search. And then what I did is went to this tool area, uh, which pulls a drop down area. For Wait, the there's date, tools? And I set the date to match the Google Trends what? spike. I didn't know you November could do that. of 2004, then we had uh, these top three websites that came up. I, I downloaded those websites uh, and then I analyzed them. So did you do undertake this analysis for each of the 17 points on the, on the prior slide that we looked at? Yes, correct. And huh. what did you do once you had your um, web page results, uh, such as on this demonstrative? You mean when I reviewed yes, each we web page? We talked about the PR yes. team earlier Yeah, so today. what I was looking for is, you know, were these web pages or articles, did they have anything to do with the alleged abuse? Did they have anything to do with his alcohol drug use? Did they have anything to do with his worth ethics? So I basically, you know, tried to understand, you know, the, the content and, and uh, of each website or article. Did you look at all of the results that turned up when you ran these historical searches? I, I only um, uh, reviewed the top three. It, why did you choose the top three? Uh, so I reviewed the top three because research shows that about 50 to 75% of the people only click on the top three. Kaylee so I wanted I to get the majority. He knows so much more about analytics than I do. Um, Tom, I think we can take that down for now. Thank you. What did you determine about the results that you found for the period prior to um, Ms. Hurd's first allegations of abuse? This is what I want to know. So I determined that, you know, Mr. Depp was not portrayed in any negative connotation. Uh, the web results were about his life and his career, his acting, his, you know, pictures of him, you know, relationships he was in, you know, just pretty normal stuff. 
And what did you determine about the top results um, after Ms. Hurd's initial allegations in 2016 and then the republication in the op-ed in 2018? Compound. Okay. What was the objection? I mean, it was compound. It should do 2016 and then 2018, but I don't understand what he's objecting to because I didn't, the mic cut as I started to approach. He must have started to walk up. Um, he must have started to walk up as we got there. So this is going to be, I think, probably their last testimony because it's a very important testimony. Um. Mr. Banya, um, what did you find about the results glitch. Um, Sorry, of the top web pages that you determined after um, Ms. Hurd's initial allegations and then again after the publication of the op-ed? Yeah, so after the initial allegations in 2016, uh, I found that the majority of them had to do with the alleged abuse. <laughs> and then after I realized that uh, the, the ones the web pages that were dealing with the, the alleged abuse then started talking about is, is drinking and drug, uh, drink, drinking and doing drugs. So it appeared to me that, um, you know, they became negative after 2016, but then after 2018, they even included, you know, the, the alleged abuse, but also included this, the drunk, uh, drinking and drug use. Did you um, form any opinions about the results that didn't refer to the allegations of Interesting. abuse? That didn't, uh, uh, I formed an opinion that, um, well, I'm not following your question, I'm sorry. That's all right, we can move on. Um, did any of the Don't results that you on. analyzed refer question. to um, Mr. Depp's work ethic? No. Did you form, um, any overall opinions about the results um, in the web pages that you looked at following Ms. Hurd's um, accusations of abuse? Yes, uh, as I stated, um, you know, prior to 2016, the web pages were just about his daily life and, and career. Uh, after the 2016 marker point, they tended to include uh, the majority of them included. Uh, you know, the allegations of abuse. And then after the 2018 op-ed, uh, the ones that included the allegations of abuse were also talking about drinking and, and drug use. What was your overall view of the connotation of those results then? So yeah, the so Mr. Depp changed. was portrayed in a negative connotation after the uh, 2016 allegations of abuse and even more so after the 2018. You mentioned you also looked at Q scores as part of your analysis. Ooh, How are hear Q about scores this. calculated? Yeah, so Q scores, um, it's, a, it's a survey of 1,800 people that happens twice a year. Huh. Uh, and um, what they do is uh, it's internet based and it's a uh, they, they measure how well a celebrity or a brand is known, how, how much they're liked, and how much they're disliked. Q scores, you know, include sports figures, celebrities, even cartoon characters, brands. So that's how the scoring system works. Interesting. Do you have a demonstrative that um, reflects the Q score analysis? Oh, I hope so. Yes. Tom, could we have um, demonstrative C, please? And Mr. Banya, what does this tell us about Actually, the, we'll see the Q score analysis? What they choose to do. Yeah. So what this is saying, again, you know, these spikes are the Google Trends that you've already seen, but what I've overlaid are his Q scores shown in the red, green, and purple A, B, area. C. And, and as you recall, I wanted to find out his Q score prior to the allegations of abuse in 2016, where he had a positive Q score of 11 and a ne negative Q score, I'm, I'm sorry, a positive Q score of 35 and a negative Q score I of 11. I want to know too. And then I looked at the Q scores after and then after the op-ed. And what did you determine about those Q scores? Yeah, so what you can see here, his positive Q score, uh, which is represented in red, was a 35. And that was prior to the alleged abuse and the restraining order. And then after that, um, his Q score, a uh, positive Q score dropped to a 31. And what that's saying is less people liked him after, um, uh, after the, the date of uh, the 2016. I mean, how else do you measure reputation? His negative Q score not this. went up from an 11 to a 16, which is telling you that more people disliked him uh, during that time frame. 
And what did you find about the final um, Q scores that you looked at for Mr. Depp? Yeah, then you can see the Q score C that I have there in purple, uh, his positive Q score. Uh, I hope we from know. From a 31 to a I 29. I hope we know what hers is. I don't his know if we will. negative Q score went from a 16 to a 15. So now his, P, his positive Q score dropped again from a 31 to a 29, uh, meaning less people had a positive impression so of too. Mr. Depp. And then his uh, negative Q score did go from a 16 to a 15. So not as many people disliked Johnny during that time frame. Like, how do you measure reputation? Well, what for celebrity, here's how you do it. That you analyzed? So my overall opinions are, you know, as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to analyze the Q scores during this snapshot of time. I wanted to understand what they were before, during, and after the op-ed. And what this tells me is his positive Q score went from a 35 to a 29, uh, and then his negative went from an 11 to a 15. So what the Q scores is telling me is the public perception of Mr. Depp uh, has been damaged. You know, they, they, they like him less and they dislike him more. Based on all of the analyses that you completed in this case, um, what are your final opinions about um, Mr. Depp's reputation over this period of time? Yeah, so my opinions are that, you know, Mr. Depp was not portrayed in a negative connotation prior to the 2016 um, allegations of abuse. I wonder what those scores are Mr. after Depp's, this trial. Uh, image, uh, he was portrayed in a negative connotation after the 2016 allegations of abuse and then more so uh, after the 2018 Washington Post op-ed. Uh, and then the Q scores represent uh, that uh, you know, the public thinks he's damaged. They think uh, less likely of him. His positive Q score has gone down and they don't like him even more because his negative Q score went from is. the 11 to the 15. The public okay, no, thinks he's damaged. No further All questions. Right. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and take our afternoon recess of 15 oh, minutes. God. Do not discuss the case and uh, do not do any outside research. Just we're going to go, we're going right. to go and get it. And we're going to go ahead and get a minute before we come back with cross-examination. So we're all gonna take a deep breath, a little bit of a stretch. We're gonna say thank you to the mod and do the likey, subscribey things. Go ahead and share. Um, but I'd be very interested to see what kind of scores they have now, if they can. They say it's a survey done twice a year. I don't know when that twice a year would sir, be. Sir, since you're in the middle of your testimony, you did not discuss your case, uh, even with the attorneys at this point, or your testimony. Okay, sir? People okay. are coming right. up and introducing Ten themselves down, to we'll Chanley Painter back. in court. Okay. That's hilarious. Right. Um, so let's come back then at 335. All right. Let's work. So we've got 15 Thank minutes. You. And in that 15 minutes, I'm going to answer questions and then try to get to some super chats. I'm going to turn the volume off on this and we're going to do the things. So hello, everybody. We are. <laughs> oh, they had gone to the court clock, the, the clock in the courtroom. That was funny. And then they're dead. Um, just a little shout out to the stenographer. I mean, the stenographer is the real MVP and it's part of why they need to take these breaks to give the stenographer a break. This cross-examination has to be maddening for the stenographer, the way that people talk over each other. It's got to be quite a lot, but it was very interesting to see these different metrics. And I'm very curious how this will go in the future, but those metrics are absolutely fascinating to me. So with that, we are going to uh, continue on with questions. I know Octa, we had 30 K on a little bit earlier. So we will see if this is the last witness. I kind of think this is the last witness. I kind of think it is. So we'll see. All right, let's go ahead and get through some super chats. And um, love you, Emily. What does it mean when Elaine once mentioned this goes to bias during an objection? Um, when she was doing cross-examination, exploring the bias of an expert or a witness is important. So if it was a hearsay objection or something like that, you're saying, no, it's not going to the offer of it's not going to the truth of the matter asserted. It's going to this witness's bias or biases. And you're allowed to point out the bias in witnesses. It's why they always ask, well, you were paid to do this and stuff like that. Because they're trying to show, look, this witness is hired to say this thing. They're essentially just a puppet. You hire them and then you go, wah, 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 say what I want. The jury doesn't always believe that because most people value their professional reputations more than money. Not all. But most, and you see it with a witness like this attorney, they're like, how much did you make on this case? He's like, I don't know. This is my hourly rate. Like I, my, uh, the information I'm sharing is more important to me than the money I'm making, you know? So, all right, we're going to glossy up and we're going to 
We're going to chitty, chitty, chat, chat with some more of these chitty, chitty, chat, chats. Free is my second favorite F word. <laughs> How many fucks do we give? Free. Zero. Do attorneys sometimes ask a question they know will get objected to so the witness knows what they're trying to get at when they rephrase? I don't think it's conscientious, but I think um, I think sometimes they ask the more direction, more direct question and then uh, back it down a little bit. I definitely think it can happen. Singer Richard Marx is spelled Marx. I mean, yes, facts. Not, I think they spell their names different. Broke and dislocated my ankle. Oh no, I truly appreciated this every day. I've learned so much and I'm having fun. I'm so glad Casey Sunshine heal well. That sucks. Hi from Spain. Hello, you're welcome for explaining it. It's got to be weird for all of our wonderful international law nerds. And if you want to share your flag of where you're tuning in from in the um, chat down below, you are welcome to. But our system and our legal system is so different than so many. And, you know, this streaming live has got to seem absolutely wild. I think it's why everyone's so captivated. It's like we have celebrities in a courtroom in Virginia playing out their entire ass lives. It's wild. As always, you rock. Thank you. I mean, we've seen big criminal trials. Um, the OJ Simpson trial happened while I was in high school. Everyone was captivated. It was playing on TVs and classrooms. We were fascinated to see it play out live, but it was different than this because people had lost their lives. It was a homicide trial. This is over reputation and money and how people are perceived in the media. And it's like very inside Hollywood and it's peeling back layers of worlds we don't normally get to see. It's fascinating. Um, Ash Hunter, no need to apologize. Nothing. I didn't see anything that came across as inappropriate. You're all good. Um, we Frosty Ewok. We Frosty Ewok. Little cold Ewok. I stand all of the Emily Case commentary. Thank you. Um, my friends, Miss Hala, and I love you doing all the things. Facts not fuckery, Elaine. I mean, Elaine's cross-examination is the tactics are just not my favorite. Not always bad questions. The style of the questioning is just. Grr. Just got back here, back to the beginning for the replay crew. Just wanted to say thank you for covering. You're welcome. Some of that testimony, you can definitely go at like 1.5. Objection, Your Honor. It's complete speculation that Johnny Depp is Captain Jack. <laughs> Objection, Your Honor. <laughs> we didn't know he had that role. That was probably one of the most ridiculous objections, wasn't it? Question, if Amber can look at whatever she wants, could she know about the makeup brand? She could know that. Um, she could know that. And they can ask her about it on cross-examination they would have to find a way to impeach her with it or just let it dangle. But yes, she could know that. Does someone keep an eye on the jury during trial to check that they aren't looking online? Um, not really. They're not sequestered. I mean, they're at home in their lives. So nobody's like, nobody should be monitoring their like phone use and social media use. Though I'm sure if they do have public social media um, presences, people are watching that, but not from like behind the scenes, just what's publicly available. Um, under Umbridge is very regarded in Fairfax County, but she's known for settling out of court. Almost all her cases do. And that's very common in civil. Lots of cases do. They probably do depositions with her and are like, wah, wah, wah. I don't want to hear this anymore. I'm glad you're back. Never leave your children again. We don't like our babysitters. Um, I know I answered that one before lunch. So thank you. You answered my question three times with people. So how much to retain you to argue against my very, very Jewish mother and her very, very Jewish guilt? I don't know. I mean, I was raised Catholic, so I feel like our guilts um, are, are comparable. But you know what? Um, it, you know, you dye your hair and you do what you do and you say, look, thank you. But no, bless and release. Regardless of the trial outcome after the laundry that's been aired, realistically, neither party will get good roles going forward. We'll see. I mean, maybe this is the maybe this is the shift in Hollywood now. Maybe we're getting into um, the the bounce. I don't know. Of you know, at some point, did it go too far with Johnny Depp? Is he hireable again? Has his his public perception score changed? Um, Cheyenne said, even though this is only a suing case, if the judge wanted to, could she add on punishment if she feels a h assaulted J D? Not really. Or would they have to go to court again if JD wanted to press charges? I think the statute of limitations for all of those allegations have passed. All of those things are so far uh, behind. Um, will the judge sanction Umbridge for her face? Oh, absolutely likely. Absolutely likely. Sanctioned for your face. Your face has annoyed me. She should be sanctioned. I am just kidding. Thanks for recommending Legal Bites. I watched her lives last week. Thought she was great. But I'm happy to be home with our law nerd community. I mean, our law nerd community is very special. What did you think of Cross on Dr. Curry? I talk about that a bit in this week's coming podcast. I thought there were effective moments that then got overshadowed by everything trying to make Fetch happen. 
Um, has there been more reports or proof on Amber Heard supporters placing flyers? I haven't seen it. And if it is proven, uh-oh, uh-oh. Sorry, something's freezing. Hopefully you guys can hear me. What's freezing? Sorry, y'all. A whole bunch of stuff just froze on my computer. Apologies. We're going to fix that in just one second. I think it was the stream. So I'm going to add the stream back. Sorry, y'all. That's so frustrating, but at least it didn't completely yeet itself. So here we are, not yeeted. Let's pull back everything up. Um, let me just get rid of that. All right. Let's see. No, I haven't seen any more about it. Yes, it could be a huge problem. I'm an author and always look for personality who inspired me while I write. Your commentary has been, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm lagging, you guys. Um, I'm going to have to refresh this in just a second. So let me refresh real quick. I will be right back. Let me just refresh this. So y'all will be right back while the court's on break. So I'm not lagging. Hopefully it's back. <laughs> of course, don't we love our tech issues? Don't we love it? All right. You know, if we have to do it, this is why I've been cutting the stream um, in half so it isn't a problem. But today I really wanted to roll through lunch and talk. I will keep this in mind and cut the stream tomorrow the way I had been doing because it just makes it a little easier. So I'll make sure that we do that. The long streams can be hard but I will make sure that um, I cut the stream into tomorrow just to avoid some of these laggy issues at lunchtime. Let me go ahead and re-grab to make sure that we are back. Court should be back in another five minutes. So hopefully there's not a lag. I don't see one on my end, so you guys might want to refresh the stream on your end. Sorry for all of that. Let us get back to um, our feed and go from there. Do you see flaws in the legal system or do you believe it hundred percent? No, there's a hundred percent flaws in the legal system. Do I think it's a pretty good system for what we got? Yes. Do I think it's got its own problems? Absolutely. Is that commentary for another day? Absolutely. It is. Absolutely. It is. Um, what's Bing please. Also the guy like Wallace, Sean, um, the Bing. Yes. A little bit. The Bing is when we hit another thousand subs. So you guys don't forget to do the YouTube. likey like subscribe things. And yes, that is what the Bing is. Um, new here as of this trial, a lot of you are. My DH is a cop and he's um, seen some disgusting things done to men in DV situations. We hope this really sheds light on how far men often get pushed before speaking up or really getting hurt. I mean, it, it's, a huge, it's a huge issue within the court system that men, uh, men are afraid that they will not be believed, even when they come into court on a case and, you know, the court clerk or the bailiff is like, oh, are you the defendant? And they're like, no. It's, it's all those little things that make it very hard. And that doesn't just pertain to men and DV in the court system, but it is something that needs to change. What laws, if any, are in place to protect people from psychological abuse? Not a lot. I, I mean, outside of a formal setting, like there's laws to protect abuse in formal settings like institutions and hospitals and things like that. Um, what laws possibly could be in place? That is a much deeper commentary question probably for a podcast episode, because I would have to think about it. It's very hard because psychological abuse can um, be broader. And I am not an expert when it comes to psychology at all. What's the bing about? I'm new. We talked about the bing. It's when it bings, when this bings, when the counter bings. A uh, Depp will be fine after this trial. We'll see. He will get roles. If you're familiar with Dior, they did not drop Depp and his fragrances. His fragrance Savage continues to sell out on both continents. It's possible when the court of public opinion swings that um, the money might swing with it. Is Amber Heard's legal team trial lawyers because their cross exams are horrible and they seem unprepared and unorganized? A lot of civil lawyers don't go to trial often. They are litigators, but a lot of civil lawyers do not go to trial very often. They do depositions and then things resolve. So I don't know how many trials they've all done. Um, this is probably a lot, but yes, their crosses aren't my favorite. 
why doesn't Johnny Depp's side put up a timeline of these events? I don't know. Easier to paint a picture for visual learners. They probably will in closing, but for now, it's not really the time for it. Um, her pants on fire. She can't sit down. She definitely couldn't during that cross. Celebrating, um, committing to Michigan law. Congratulations. Go blue with this live stream today. Well, be sure to tag Hogue Law on, um, on Twitter. He is a Michigan grad. Have really enjoyed your take on this and consistent support of all survivors and me too as a survivor. Thank you. You're welcome. I don't think this trial should discount survivors. I think it should show what can happen when people try to use a movement for their own personal gain um, or that Amber Heard is in fact a victim of abuse. I think there's too many lies for what I've seen for me to be there right now. We we feel, I feel much more informed um, than I did at the beginning of this trial. Quite a lot has come out. This trial is so early for me. I was debating waking up at 6 a.m. to see your stream. Welcome back. Thank you. It is early, but also replay crew and things will be timestamped. Is Amber allowed to go on social media? Yes, she can. She can do whatever she would like to. And because she is not, she's a party. So she's seen all the witnesses in person too. So she's not barred by the same, uh, the same sequestration rules because she's a party. Skylar says it seems far-fetched that Johnny had a hard cast. If your finger was cut off and infected, those wounds would have to be cleaned and a hard cast is... Um, a breeding ground for bacteria. It agreed, agreed, agreed. And we've not seen any pictures of a hard cast. We've seen a soft cast. We've heard from medical experts what one security guard's opinion is. I don't think it'll change that. Dr. B was the best. He brought lunch. I still have to finish eating. If I run Johnny Depp's team, I'd insist that public figure of abuse equals she went public TRO, picks, bruises, ergo only physical abuse and essay because of the title. We will, we will see what they do. I think they can. Won't the jury already know of the Sun case? It's verdict. No, they won't. They would have been asked about it. I don't think they will. Um, e Squire said, I remember when you hit 25 K subs. I do too. It feels like yesterday. The channel has grown very well and I love being here with all of you. So Amber Turd's net worth is only eight. Mil- Did you hear it? Bing? It binged again, you guys. Um, if Johnny wins, can he get profits from new gigs? Yes, he absolutely can. They can garnish her wages. Um, you guys, we binged again. Should we just, should we celebrate it again? I feel like we should. I feel like we should. Oh, it binged! Move your head! Ah! Ira Chan, this is a fantastic question that these lawyers have not been doing great at. If a question is, or if an objection is sustained, meaning that the question um, can't be asked and the answer can't come in, if the answer's already been said, then a motion to strike is needed, and they are not doing motions to strike here, which has been very interesting. Um, Jess Mess, hey Emily, I wanted you to know that my mother was visiting me recently and she hates everything YouTube except for Stephanie Harlow, but I got her addicted to your channel and now she watches you on her own. Hello, Jess Mess's mom. <laughs> I understand hating everything YouTube. I was a first year law during the OJ trial, watched the live of this trial, confirms I made the right choice to drop out. I'm exhausted. <laughs> it's exhausting. Um, being in trial is exhausting. It is. It's exhilarating, but it's exhausting. I feel like the anger is towards the lawyers is unnecessary. They are just doing their job. I feel like there is a lot of misattributed anger. Um, no, I'm really annoyed at these lawyers. They have they have just some of their style of cross examination. I think has been horrendous. So, and that's again, I worked as a trial lawyer. I worked with really great attorneys. I will say when they have good questions, their style is abrasive, and I don't like it. And I'm not going to pretend I do like it. Again, Johnny Depp's lawyers could be abrasive as hell on cross, and I'll tell you, I don't like that either. I don't like it. Um, just a big up for Dr. B for being awesome. He has been, uh, thank you for the super circuit. Dr. B has been great. Sorry if you already spoke on this, but is there an explanation of the coincidence citing Dr. Curry's findings before her actual formal opinion? I talk about that in next week's podcast. Oh, the judge is back on the bench. Let's share the screen. Um, because I did think that that was a really good point of cross-examination and I do talk about that in the podcast. Let me make sure the audio is on. All right. Oh, why did the, why did you freeze? Don't freeze. Well, that's not helpful. Uh, is it the stream or is it me? Is it the stream or is it me? All right, they're bringing the jury back in. All right. So there we go. Uh, Close captioning are back on. All right, and we're back from lunch. I'm going to try to get through some of these. Um, so yes, I talk about that in the podcast for the week three roundup next week because I wasn't streaming that day. Wonder if her lawyers are taking out their frustration on Amber on the witnesses. They shouldn't be. I think it's their style of cross. Um, she must be just nasty to them. I don't know. She might not be. What did Ben just say? Like they're having a little moment there being cheeky about something. 
which was kind of funny. But And you get to see the collegialness, right? Ben Chu's not going to approach him and whisper something as juries are coming in um, if they don't have some sort of a decent relationship, which generally indicates that behind the scenes, they are probably not at odds all the time that this is their style of cross. It annoys the fuck out of me. Y'all know that. It's hard to listen to. Um, and we'll get to see some more of that Jack Hammer style of cross-examination that we've all come to know and love. Um, hopefully it's not appallingly Jack Hammerish, but we'll also get to learn like how much this dude makes. Question, Court TV is saying Paul Bettany is a rebuttal witness. It. What is that right, for? Cross-examination? After Amber Heard's case, he would be a witness Banya. after her case in the rebuttal Mr. Banya, case. you understand that this case is about the op-ed in December of 2018, correct? Yep. I understand this case to be about the allegations of domestic abuse, both um, as it relates to the 2016 and the republication of huh. that in the 2018 Washington you, you, Post op-ed. You understand that Mr. Depp is only suing Amber about the op-ed from December 2018, correct? It's my sense. understanding is... I can base my understanding on my analysis, which includes uh, the 2016 allegations of That's your analysis, but do you understand what Mr. Whoa, 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 whoa. is suing Amber for in this case? Let him finish. Objection, Your Honor, to the extent it calls for a legal conclusion. All right, I'll sustain, sustain the objection. Next question. Did you read the complaint in this case? Yes. Did you understand that Mr. Depp was only suing for the op-ed, about the op-ed? Yes. Okay. And it's, he was not, Mr. Depp was not suing Amber in this case from his complaint about the accusation she made in 2016, correct? That is my understanding. The counter, the and you're not able to separate out how Mr. Depp's reputation was impacted from the op-ed in 2018 this is the point. versus how it was impacted when Ms. Heard filed for divorce in 2016, correct? This is the point. That is not correct. Okay. This is the point of this cross-examination or should be the focus of this cross. I think it does say 241. No, it says 242. It binged again. And the bing is the, the counter back here. They're looking for papers. The counter back here physically bings and it makes an audio, audio sound. He's like digging through yes, for sir. papers. Um, so the reason they wanted to have 2016 evaluated is because you need the 2016 and the difference to 2018 because they're going to try to argue, look, the shit was out of the horse when she got the TRO. That's when the damage was done. It wasn't done in 2018. So now they need to back Mr. up Bonnie, and do the difference. You in this case? Here's his depot. Yes, I did. Okay. And I was asking you the questions in that case. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. And As it should be. You took that deposition on March 21st, 2022? That is correct. Okay. And, and what? You under oath at the time, correct? Yes. Okay. And you're under oath to tell the truth, correct? Correct. They took his depot in March of 2022? Of your transcript. Like. Which is on the 21st page of. Like the, right before this trial started. I'm here. Okay. And you see line nine. Yes. Interesting. And I ask you, are you able to separate out how Mr. Depp's reputation was impacted from the op-ed versus how it was impacted by when Ms. Heard filed for divorce and your answer was no, correct? Correct. Okay. And you're not able to separate out how Mr. Depp's reputation was impacted from the op-ed in 2018 questions. versus the publicity surrounding when Mr. Depp sued the Sun newspaper in the United Kingdom when a Sun writer called Mr. Depp a wife beater, correct? That's different. Are you still reading from my deposition? No, I'm asking you a question now. Whoa, whoa, Please whoa. Please repeat that. Totally. You're not able to separate out how Mr. Depp's reputation was impacted from the op-ed in 2018 versus the publicity surrounding when Mr. Depp sued the Sun newspaper in the United Kingdom when a Sun writer called Mr. Depp a wife beater. Objection compound, Your Honor. It is. Sustained. You're not able to separate out how Mr. Depp's reputation was impacted from the op-ed in 2018 versus the sub publicity surrounding when Mr. Depp sued the Sun newspaper in the United Kingdom, correct? That's a better question. My analysis shows that the, uh, the web documents that I reviewed after the 2018 allegations- okay. Respectfully, uh, this, is a yes or no this is a yes or no question. No, it's not. You don't understand well enough Please to make it a yes question. or no question. You're not able to separate out how Mr. Depp's reputation was impacted from the op-ed in 2018 
versus the publicity surrounding when Mr. Depp sued the Sun newspaper in the United Kingdom. That was not part of my analysis to carve that out. And you didn't, you, wouldn't, you were not able to separate it, correct? I didn't try to. Okay, and, and so you don't, you right. couldn't? No, I didn't try. I, didn't try. Okay. I wasn't asked to. And you understand to. that the it's article Mr. Question. Depp sued the Sun over had the headline that said, how can J.K. Rowling be genuinely happy casting wife beater Johnny Depp in the new Fantastic Beasts? For 24 Beast, hours. Correct? Was that for 24 hours? Uh, I don't recall if that's one of the articles I reviewed. You, did you under, do you know if that article came out before Ms. Hurd's op-ed? I don't know. Now, you're not offering an opinion as to how the op-ed for Ms. Hurd in December 2018 impacted Mr. Depp's career, correct? I repeat that, please. You're not offering an opinion I've, I've as to blanked. how the op-ed for Ms. Hurd in December 2018 impacted Mr. Depp's career, correct? No, he's talking about reputation. And you're not offering an opinion as to how the op-ed for Ms. Heard in December 2018 impacted Mr. Depp's reputation. Big reputation, big what reputation. I'm doing is I'm it's offering. a yes or no. Baby, are you, you and me. Are you offering an opinion reputation. to that or not? Uh, my opinion is related to his public image. You're not offering an opinion as to how the op-ed for Ms. Heard in December 2018 impacted Mr. Depp's reputation, correct? I am, reputation and public I'm image are the same. I'm not talking to, uh, exactly about his reputation, correct? And you're not offering an opinion as to how the op-ed for Ms. Heard in December 2018 impacted Mr. Depp's public image, correct? No, that's exactly what he's I mean, testifying to. I'm offering an opinion that after the 2018 it's a yes or no, public sir. image. It's, it's a yes or no. Uh, no, not you answered the question. How the op-ed you for answered Ms. Heard the question. in December 2018 the question. impacted Mr. Depp's public image. Damn it. I am. That's exactly what he's doing. Turn to your deposition transcript, please. But did you do it in your deposition? which is on page 19. So feisty. Is it possible that during cross Amber Heard's lawyers will say 2016 allegations caused more harm to Johnny Depp than 2018? Possibly. I mean, they can try to. Line, It'd be there? smart if they yes. did. You see line one. It'd be smart if they did. Starting on line one. I they asked should. you, and you're not going to testify how the December 2018 op-ed impacted Mr. Depp's public image. Answer, that's correct. That, that, that was your testimony at the time, okay. correct? Well, well the, the, the that was Johnny your answer Depp's at the time, correct? Uh, is, is Sir, a negative that was your perception. answer at the time, correct? Okay, yes. And that was your answer on March 21st, 2022, correct? This is what redirects for. The, yes, the date of the deposition. So that was a month and a half ago, correct? Right. Okay. And you're not offering an opinion as to whether the op-ed from Ms. Heard made Mr. Depp more hireable or less hireable, correct? That's correct. Correct. The last witness did see. As to the articles that came up in the Google searches that you spoke about, it was you made the determination whether the articles had a quote negative connotation or not, right? Correct. And so that's just your view if an article had a negative connotation about Mr. Depp, right? Do you think it's negative to call someone a wife yes, beating that's my opinion alcoholic? That they had a negative connotation. Right. So if an I'm article criticizes Mr. Depp's acting, for example, you're not considering that article as having a negative connotation about Mr. Depp, correct? Repeat that, please. So if an article criticizes Mr. Depp's acting, you're not considering that article as having a negative connotation about Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. Okay. Now, in your huh. an analysis of Google spikes, the highest spike in searches for Mr. Depp was in January 2004, correct? Correct. Okay. And can, I guess you guys have it. Can you put up the demonstrative <laughs> 1236? I guess you all have it. Can you just, can you do some shit? You could ask, at least ask them nicely. They don't work for you. Are these witnesses prepared by Johnny lawyers? Yes. And they are experts and they've already been through depositions. Can you see that, Mr. Yes. Ben? Can we, they can know. we make it just a little bit bigger? They've already been through depositions. So they know that this is what's coming. He's, I think a more narrowly tailored cross would okay. be to say 2016 so the, was the most damaging. If I'm understanding you correctly, a is where the most searches were conducted about for Johnny Depp, correct? Correct. And that's from January 2004, correct? Correct. So that was 18 years ago? Correct. Okay. And that was when Ms. Heard was 18 years old? Um, I don't know. Okay. The top spike you mark as 100, correct? Who the fuck knows? I did not mark that, but Google okay, Trends uh, identified that spike as 100. 
And where it says 100, it's 100. You don't know how many people actually searched for Johnny Depp at that point, correct? Well, the Google Trends algorithm marks the highest point of search as 100, and then everything is compared to that as a ratio or a percent. So if you notice that A is 100, everything else is lower than that because everything is being compared to that highest point. Right. So you don't know how many people actually did the search for Johnny Depp in January 2004, correct? Correct. It could be 100 or it could be a million, right? I don't know. And you don't know if it's actually human beings doing these searches, correct? As opposed to? As opposed to bots or something like that. I, I did not do an analysis to determine if it's a bot or a human being, but Google Trends is a tool that's going to show you during a time frame the highest point of search interest as a hundred. Okay, but you don't know if it, you don't know if it's humans, bots. My cat doing the searches. Correct? My cat. Objection asked and answered your own sustained. Assumes questions. facts, not in evidence that your cat can do a fucking search now, on Google. Fred, George, come here. I got in questions. All of these Google spikes. Ms. Hurd's My cat. Op ed never came up as one of the top three searches in any of the Google spikes. That's not correct? the serve you think it is. Well, that is correct because Google Trends is based on a search of, of, of a word or a name. And because Mr. Depp's name was not mentioned in that op ed, Google Trends did not pick that up. So person does a search for Johnny Depp and the op-ed doesn't come up, correct? That's not what he said. In my analysis, the op-ed did not come up. Okay. Oh, that is what he said. And in fact, the red line, the red dotted line all the way to the right, that shows you should have when the op-ed was published on December 18th, 2018, correct? Yes. Okay. And the searches are actually going down right after the red line, correct? As opposed to the searches in 2004? Amber Heard's yeah. team look slammers at the red line, animals look at the red in trial. Line, and you have two, you have two they points defamed his cat. here, right there. They defamed Those the go dogs. down from the time of the op-ed, correct? Correct. Okay. And isn't it true that the next, I guess, spike happens in March of 2019, correct? Right. At least there. we know he's a cat yeah. person. And do you know that it was March of 2019 when Mr. Yes. Depp sued Amber Heard in this case? No, I, don't, I didn't look at that date. Right. You didn't look at any articles for the for that for this bullet, correct? That's correct. The thing is, they have some and points in here that could be well made, since but they're burying it under bullshit. Op-ed came out on December eighteenth, twenty eighteen. You would agree with me that by definition, all the spikes you analyzed before December eighteenth, twenty eighteen, we're all lost. Could not have been caused by the op-ed, right? We're all right. lost about the cat. We're lost. We are lost about the cat. So and articles everything about else Mr. he Depp said, we're lost on because I tried to be quippy. Could not have been caused by the op-ed, correct? Correct. And you, in this chart, analyze only two spikes after the op-ed. Isn't that right? That is correct. Okay. And the first spike you analyzed after December 2018 is V, correct? Yes. And is that from, is that January 2020? Roughly, yes. Okay. So that's... January 2020 is over a year after the op-ed by Ms. Hurt, correct? That's correct. Okay. And then the next spike you analyzed was T, correct? Maybe that's what the cats are Googling yes. is how to make muffins. Cats and that muffins. was in approximately July 2020? Correct. Okay, so that was a year and a half after Ms. Hurt's op-ed, correct? Yes. I want to say the demonstrative while we're talking. And again, none so of the articles. Hard. And then you, and then for what, V and what, T, what, if it, I understand it, you then analyze the top three searches that come up, that came up or the top three websites that came up after a search. I want the right. internet to tell me if he really has a cat or not. And none of the articles I'm you teasing. analyze Don't those the lawyer. spikes after the op-ed were the op-ed, correct? Correct. Okay. 
And isn't it true that the headlines of the articles over a year after the op-ed that you analyzed were about Mr. Depp suing the son in the UK for a son writer calling Mr. Depp a wife beater? You would have to pull those articles back up. I, I don't have those in front of me. Isn't it true that the article- He's not gonna do so, that. And, and just so I understand it, V and T, that would mean there were six articles, correct, that you analyzed? Yes. Okay. And isn't it true that the article on February 26, 2020, the headline was, quote, Johnny Depp's disturbing alleged text messages read aloud in court as libel lawsuit begins? His lawyer is very Again, excited to get this info in. I don't have that article in front of me. He's I like, I need to see it. Those as part of my uh, analysis. I don't have that in front of me if you'd like to show it to me. <laughs> and you understand that that was about the lawsuit against the son in the UK, not about the op-ed. He doesn't correct? want to show it to you. He just wants to say Again, things. Again, I did not have that in front of me. Objection. Counsel is testifying the other, at this point. Another article that came up on February 27th, 2020 is one of the top three hits when you search for Johnny Depp. What The headline was, quote, let's burn Amber text allegedly sent by Johnny Depp about X read in court. He's not, he doesn't have any of that in front I mean, of him. If you want to talk about these articles, but we need to bring them up. This is your opinion. You don't rec you don't recall what articles you I, analyzed. I, nope. There's a lot of articles here. I don't. I didn't memorize each uh, title. There was there were six yeah. articles that you his, analyzed. His cat might poop on his bed. The, almost two years after the op-ed. All right. I, but you, can you bring those up and we can talk about them? And on July 19th, nope. Not going to do that. The headline was quote Hollywood nervously awaits fallout from explosive Johnny Depp. He just wants trial. to say things. You don't you don't recall one way or the other whether that was one they of should the object at this point, but they're not going to. Again, uh, I know if you want to bring up my documents, I know document nine J nine O. Oh, he's going to get sassy. K and nine M are mentioning the op ed. Again, I don't have those. In and front when you of say me. and when you say mentioning the op ed, does that mean that it just references that Mr. Depp sued Amber Heard in Fairfax? No, it, it talks about how he's uh, alleged. Yeah, there should be an objection. As Does, it relates to the op-ed. Doesn't it say, I mean, another headline from July 19th. He just wants to read headlines. The headline was, quote, Keep reading headlines, bro. awaits fallout from explosive Johnny Depp trial. Asked and answered. Objection, asked and answered. Asked and answered. Oh, sustain the objection. Next question. You understood that was about the lawsuit against the son in the UK. I don't understand correct? what you're talking about. Asked objection, and answered. Asked and answered. I didn't ask about that. Uh, overruled. Again, I would like to talk about these articles but I, I need to see them. Yep. And on July 19th, 2020, the headline was, quote, Johnny Depp versus Amber Heard. Yes, Sister All Bellamy. the nasty bits of the UK trial, and it's all nasty. Ooh, nasty bits. That was in point nasty. C, correct? Again, I do not have that list in front of me. This if is why like they're not objecting. Up, talk about it. And you understood that was about the lawsuit against the son in the UK, correct? I do not. And on July 19th, 2020, the headline was, quote, Johnny Depp, Claims in the sun he beat ex-wife. Complete lies court told. That was the quote, correct? Counsel's I just testifying at this point. Uh, that was in your report, correct? I would. I, I don't have I my report have in front of me. To the documents. Bring it up uh, again. I would be happy to discuss them if you would bring. Would you up. like to refresh my recollection? No, you just want to yell at me. So just keep fucking yelling correct. at me. Go ahead. So annoying. I'm sorry. Say that. You previously had a chart. <laughs> Emily was talking from November 2020. Correct. Objection, Your Honor. May we have a time. Okay, sure. Emily was talking. <laughs> he's like, I'm talking. And he's like, I'm sorry. What did you say? And I'm like, apologies. I'm yelling so loud. You can hear it in court. I'm yelling through the TV at this point. Well, not even TV. I'm yelling through the interwebs at this point because I'm so annoyed. But they're just kind of smirking at this ridiculousness. Oh, we've got candy on the desk again. Decision to sue the son, correct? I don't know. Calls for legal I, conclusion. I don't know. That's Calls not for part legal of conclusion. Mind. Now, you talked about Q scores in your test. Oh, good. We can move on to correct? something other than correct. fucking headlines. And you testified about three particular Q scores for Mr. Depp, right? Three periods of time is, are the Q scores that I analyzed. And you're not offering an opinion as to why Mr. Depp's Q scores changed, correct? Yes, he is. That's correct. And Q scores. Isn't can that go exactly up what he testified down. to? For actors for any sort of Interesting. reason, correct? That's possible. You recall testifying that they could go up and down for any sort of reason in your deposition? Yeah, they can go up and down for many different reasons. So you're not offering an opinion that Mr. Depp's Q scores were damaged because of Ms. Heard's op-ed, correct? Huh. That's correct. 
And in comparing the That's Q scores from before the That's op-ed a good question. The Q scores it's going to get lost in all this other bullshit, though. Mr. Depp's Q scores dropped by two points, correct? I, I don't have those Q scores in front of me, but if, if you're looking at them, I believe. We can show, we can show the third page of this. Oh, good. Now you're going to let him refresh his recollection. How kind. What was your question, please? His, Mr. Depp's positive Q scores from B yeah, to C. Yeah, the jury might think so, too. Dropped Handle. by two points, correct? Yes. You're not an expert on statistics, correct? Correct. And even though you're not an expert, you have an idea about what the term statistically significant means, correct? Yes. Brooke, they might be. And not statistical objecting significance is a measure of whether your findings are meaningful, right? Yes, I don't think you need statistics to understand Q scores. And you don't know if there's any significance to a drop in two points in positive Q score, correct? Well, there absolutely is. When you're ordering Q scores on uh, uh, points of time, uh, Mr. Banya, you know, go what, to your deposition, page one thirteen. Don't you've got to let him complete his answer, which is on twenty nine. Oh my god, this gives me a headache. Anybody else? Can you believe it's May and we're sitting here doing this okay. still? I'm tired. At ten, at line page one thirteen, line ten, it says, "So you're not offering an opinion as to the significance of a change in Q score, correct?" That's that's a Answer. different question than Correct. you just said. That's well, improper impeachment. you're talking about statistically uh, a, a difference. What I'm talking about is how we use Q scores in the industry. When you see a Q score from dropping from a 31 to a 29, there's an issue. Is this somebody you really want to hire to endorse your products or your service? No, you probably not. You want to look into why, why, what is going on in the public uh, to, to make these Q scores drop like that. And you don't know exactly the significance between five or six dro- points of drop in Q score, correct? Correct. Okay. <clears throat> now, a drop in points and it shows obviously matters. Here that Mr. Depp's negative Q score actually got better from point B to point C, correct? Correct. So that's actually better for Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. Okay. And you understood. You understand that Dr. Alan Jacobs reviewed your opinions in this case? They yes. might be jelly beans. And you understand that Dr. Jacobs reviewed additional Q score data, correct? Yes. Okay. Can we please put up plaintiff's exhibit 889 at 117? <clears throat> okay. Um, is it somebody else's deposition? They are. They made some good points about you're not saying that the Q score drop is related to this. But um, it's getting lost in all the other nonsense about the headlines. Mr. Banya, Make the points that matter. Leave the rest of, of it alone. Q scores from winter 2012 through summer of 2021. Yes. Do you have any reason to question the Q scores that are that are just that are shown in this chart? Uh, like I said, in my deposition, I've not received the actual data to build this chart, but I don't have any reason to. to not believe that this I is don't accurate. have the underlying data. As I understand it, Q scores are performed on a celebrity like Mr. Depp. I do too. Twice a year, correct? Yes. So there's winter of a particular year, and then there's a summer of a particular year? Yes. And the winter scores come out around February, is that right? I, I don't have that information in front of me, but it sounds right. And so would you know you when know the that, summer though? scores come out? Uh, I don't. Okay. And this chart shows, well, I, permission to publish this chart. Is this chart shows your, what? Any objection? Who made it? I don't think this witness has laid an appropriate foundation for it, Your Honor. He yeah. said he has Who no made reason the chart? to question the Q scores. I'll allow it as a demonstration. Who made the chart? And so this chart shows Mr. Depp's positive and negative Q scores, correct? Correct. And the positive Q scores are in blue. So here's summer 2020 when he sued the sun. Correct. Can you blow it up a little bit, Michelle? And Okay. And the negative Q scores are in red. Michelle, now we can't see it all on one screen. Thank you, Michelle. Yes. Okay. Objection. Your Honor, may we approach for a moment? Wait, leave it on the screen. Leave it on the screen. All right. I wonder what they're approaching about. Um, because 
this is not who made this. Oh, is this live feed of the testimony? Can they actually read what's being said? That's what it looked like. That looked like a live feed of the transcripts of what the court reporter is saying. That's really interesting. I think this cross would have been more strong if they had said, you're not offering an opinion that this Q store went down because of the op-ed. You're not offering an opinion because of this. You're not offering an opinion because of that. And then been done. He's making these meaningless points to fight with this expert. And the important Mr. points Banyan, got lost. The positive Q score for Mr. Depp in the and then he defamed of cats. 2012 is 42, correct? Ugh. It's in between, yeah, it's in between 40 and 45. Okay. And if we, if, did you check the actual about? Q scores that um, Mr. Uh, Jacobs demonstrated in his he report? He said no. No, my analysis no. was a snapshot of time. I wanted to know Johnny Depp's Q scores directly before the 2012 allegations, uh, 2016 16. allegations of, of abuse and after. Okay. And you see here that the positive Q scores for Mr. Depp dropped from 42 in the winter of 2012 to 35 in the summer of 2016, correct? Yes. That's a seven point drop, correct? Yes. And that's before Ms. Hurd had her di divorce filing, correct? That's correct. When did they get together? And that drop in Mr. Depp's positive Q scores could have nothing to do with Ms. Hurd's op-ed, correct? Correct. And that drop could have nothing to do with the allegations Ms. Hurd made after the divorce filing, correct? Correct. And would you agree that... Would you agree? No, I'm not agreeing to anything you say. No, nope. The no. Negative. Positive yep. uh, Q scores actually start to show an increase for Mr. Depp after the op-ed. There's a decrease and then there's an increase. Yep. And the same for the negative. He is Depp digging his own hole in Q this. Q scores. There's a bit of a positive and then it goes down, correct? Yes. So really the op-ed had no effect on Mr. Depp's Q scores, correct? That's not what he's saying. As I mentioned, my analysis looked at the snapshot of time and it shows that he was harmed, you know, from before the allegations of abuse in 16 to after the op-ed in 2018. You Congratulations, at Shelby. Three Q scores and you could have looked at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, already 10, told 11, you 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I won't even count the 2021 scores. You can count. 18 Q scores, correct? Yep. Yay. Okay. And you looked at three, right? That's correct. And, Look at and that's ben what you're basing your like... opinion on, that the op-ed damaged Mr. Depp's Q scores? Yeah, so what we need to that, understand that's my is Q scores. Yeah, my question is a yes or no. Your counsel down. can come back and, and ask you whatever you want. And what I wanted want. to do your is Honor. I wanted to analyze. Sir, sir, if you can just answer his yes or no oh, question. Sorry. That's fine. Your Honor. Your Honor. I didn't hear your question. <laughs> You looked at three Q scores instead of 18 Q scores, correct? That's correct. And did you look at the Q scores at all? The witness. After the Dan Wooten article that came out in April of The witness of, needs uh, to answer the questions that being asked. Objection asked and answered, Your Honor. I don't think I asked that. Uh, overruled that And the no. attorney can thank redirect him. Right, redirect. Thank you. So, thank you. He's like, I have nothing further. But he does need to answer when they are narrowly tailored questions, it deserves a narrowly tailored answer. And you can say, Your Honor, the witness is being non-responsive. Uh, Mr. Banya, on, on cross-examination, you were asked some questions about uh, the fact that you made a determination about which of these articles had a negative connotation. No, we did that? not have real yes. time in the criminal courts in California. Is that something that you do in uh, situations other than in your analysis in this case? Yeah, yeah. So in non-litigation, when we're building brand monetization strategies, and especially if you're going to work with a celebrity, celebrity or an athlete, uh, you want to look at what's going on out there, you know, about that personality, you know, because celebrities and athletes, you know, Q scores can go up and down. You want to analyze the, the time and see what's going on out in the media. Do I really want my client to license in a celebrity that 
there's problems out there or right. an athlete. So yes, it's important to look at this. And I believe you were asked um, whether you're offering an opinion in this case about the impact of the op-ed on uh, Mr. Depp's public image. Do you recall that? Yes. And I believe you testified that you are offering an opinion on that. Is that right? Yes. What's that opinion? Well, the, the opinion is that uh, it, it, he's portrayed in a negative con connotation after that date. And with respect to the Q scores that you analyzed, um, Mr. Nadelhoff was asking you about the three points in time that you looked at. Why, in your opinion, was it appropriate to look at just those three Q scores? Context. As I was trying to explain, you know, Q scores do go <laughs> As up I was down. trying to explain We're before I got that. In a period of time. We want to see what's happening right before an event, during that event, and if there's another event after that event. And that is our area of analysis. Uh, so that's why just these three sets of Q scores are the appropriate way to analyze this. Thank you. I have nothing further. Your Honor. All right. Is this witness subject to recall? Uh, he is, Your Honor. All right. Sir, do not discuss your testimony with anybody since you are subject to recall, but since you are an expert, you are allowed to stay in the courtroom if you wish. Okay? Because he's okay. an expert. All right. Thank you, sir. Is that our last right. witness? You can step down. Is that our last witness? Y'all. Y'all. Right. Your next witness. Your Honor, we're, I believe we're calling Aaron Filati by deposition. Oh, okay. Darn it. I thought we were almost done. Okay, could you put, I'm sorry, could you put your microphone on? The approach, there's two exhibits that we have. Okay. Uh, All right, while well, we're... All right, they're approaching the bench because with regard to this witness that's coming in via video deposition, uh, there was pri prior, a prior, prior video deposition, there are some uh, issues with regard to some exhibits. So that's why they're approaching to discuss those. Um, and while they do, I'm absolutely going to pull up some of the super chats. That style of cross-examination on the entire team, he's he's my he's the one I dislike the least of the entire herds team cross-examination. It's very fast paced. It's not as ridiculous as some of the others. He doesn't get quite as exacerbated, but he does tend to get fairly frustrated when he asks a yes or no question and the witness does not give a yes or no answer. And he was right in saying, this is for redirect. Like you don't need to get all your context in answer the question I asked, sir, I just asked this. And that's the point of cross-examination, those narrowly tailored questions. So with that, let's get to some of the super chats that I have missed. And I'm going to be trying to pull them up every time we get a break. Um, Johnny started dating her in 2012, engaged in 2014. It lines up with this decrease in popularity. Isn't that interesting for all of us to watch at home? Now they might not tag that into, um, they might not tag that in court, but I wanted to clock it. So when I asked the question, I'm so thank you, thankful that you answered because my brain is full of lots of dates. Um, thank you for the super sticker. Um, not no one, but politicians in Virginia gives a dang re-Q score. I mean, I think that they, care because that's how brands work with you. So it is a statistical way to determine likability really. And showing that Johnny Depp's likability went down, it matters. Um, why isn't Johnny Depp's team calling a DV witness? I don't know if they'll be calling a domestic violence expert or an expert that talks about the cycle of violence. We will see. It seems like they still have more witnesses to go. Um, did anyone else, oh, somebody said, did anyone else notice the head rolls from Johnny Depp's team? We've definitely been seeing it and I pulled it up and it, I, pulled it away. That was my issue. I apologize for that. It was one of the last super chats. If we could, um, if we could flag it again, I can grab it real quick. Ah, oh, this one. Did anyone else notice the head rolls from JD's team during this line of quest questioning? Yes. And I'm sure everybody did, but we'll see what the, um, we'll see what the jury thinks, right? So Experts don't like yes or no, though. They like nuance. They do, but also if they're experts that are used to testifying, they should know that in redirect, they'll get to give context and they have to trust that in redirect, they'll get to give context because it matters a lot. Good morning from Gold Coast, Australia, the scene of some of the crimes. <laughs> Appreciate your love um, while I drive to work or your live and my love. You all have my love. You know you do. So we're going to talk about this while you drive to work. Is Amber taking the stand on Wednesday? We'll see. Um, I've seen some notes in the chat that maybe she um, they're restructuring when she will testify, which will be interesting. I don't think we're going to get done today. It's already 4-11 in Virginia, so I don't think we're going to finish 
today with a new witness from Heard's team, even if Depp's, if this is Depp's last witness, um, which looks like this is uh, Ms. Vasquez's witness, even if it's, this is the last one, we probably won't get there. That doesn't mean we couldn't get to Amber Heard on the stand tomorrow. We've gotten through quite a lot of witnesses today, so that's very possible. Um, the rag he reads the headlines on going into evidence is fact. No, none of that's evidence. Who cares what a gossip rag wrote? Also, is the a Oz, uh, AUS testimony they keep trying to say JD made his privates public? All right. Is that your an next evidence? witness? I don't then? think so. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, plaintiff calls Aaron Filotti, also known as Aaron Boren Filotti, and um, Ms. Hurd's counsel begins the questioning. Thank you, Michael Toast. So this is another video deposition. What happens if Amber loses her temper well on cross? The jury will see it, and it can damage her case. Find so. your full name. Aaron Salati. And now we're going to video and testimony. Is, is Borum your, your maiden name? Correct. Okay. So Borum was your name, your last name so in the <clears throat> 2014 to starts, 2016 time frame, correct? That's correct. This starts with questioning with by her team. Mr. Depp's, uh, and we'll talk about why that is later. Uh, not that I recall. Unless there's oh, long excuse pauses. Me, excuse me, I, I do. Um, I don't remember his name. I'm so sorry. I feel like I spoke with him. I, yes. I don't know his last name. The court reporter can hear when they're did, at the bench. The court reporter has headphones on, Adam and there's Walton? little speakers there, or little microphones Perhaps. there. I don't recall his last name. And do you recall when that occurred? That would have been. Tammy asked, I think that's very reliable. Thank you for your cat's input from their Google search. Because I had I had a newborn at that time. So I think she will be on so the stand tomorrow at some point. Maybe May, June, July, something like that, 2019. So this is a text exchange between you and Mr. Waldman? She just said she didn't know. Okay. And do you recall is she? speaking to Mr. Waldman at all? Yes. It's so annoying and when they lay no foundation. you uh, communicating with Mr. Waldman? Mr. Waldman was Mr. Depp's attorney? They haven't yes. said. They haven't said who this is. Ms. Vladi, you're a trained nurse. Is that correct? That's who this is. She's a nurse. That's correct. All right. Do you have any specialties? Well, I haven't been working. This is Depp's witness. You know, like I used to, but previously uh, I was trained in addictions and mental health. And when you say addictions, are there specific type of addictions you were trained in? All, but I primarily worked with chemical dependency. And where did you receive training for um, addiction and mental health? Different employment places. And then I uh, became a certified uh, registered uh, addiction nurse. You know who da Dr. David Kipper is, correct? Correct. Did you, did you work for Dr. Kipper? I, not directly, but he would hire the agency I provided nursing services for. That makes sense. Which was Turner's So she was point, hired out through an agency. So I worked under his guidance, but not specifically for him. Most of the time. There was, have been times where I've worked specifically for him. When did you start working for uh, Turning Point Nursing Services or whatever the name of that company was? I don't recall. My best guess would be somewhere between 2007 or eight. And when did you start to begin to do any work for Dr. Kipper? I believe 2014. The background is so necessary, but yes, it can be very, very boring. 
I'm trying what were the circumstances that started you working for Dr. Kipper in 2014? We'll just see what she has to say. I recall correctly, it would be for services for Ms. Heard. Were you ever responsible for Mr. Depp's nursing care while he was under the treatment of Dr. Kipper? I provided him with nursing care. True. Very true. Cats only sit. They do not search. Laying the foundation isn't sexy, so but it Pilate, is I'm necessary. I'm showing you what's been marked as exhibit two to your deposition. And these are... Oh, good. We get to these, see it. These are AH, TPD, 16929. So notes. Through... We love a split screen. I feel like we're a split 16, screen of a split 9, screen 9, of a split 9. screen right is, now. Is that the paper documents you have, a set of the paper documents you have in front of you? Part of it. What, what program is this? The Adobe? Page. And the first page might have said at the bottom also. I love uh, that it's got the sticky note. Like, this shit's important. K182. Uh, her fiance, JD, has a history yeah, of poly substance that. abuse. Okay. And completed a Do you medical recognize detox. These as your, what what are these? These are my nursing notes kept for Ms. Heard. Yes. Notes for Heard. All right. And, and these are notes you created. Yes. Did you create these notes in the ordinary course of business? Yes. Okay. Foundation. Um, were you trained in how to prepare these notes? Yes. Would you write these, when? How long after you the visit would you write up these notes? Would depend. Sometimes Documentation I would is critical. keep notes on my phone that are I would transfer to the Word document when I when I was in front of my laptop, and if not possible, I would do it as soon as feasible. And how often would you show these notes, to Dr. Kipper? I don't recall at intervals, but I don't recall. So when we're talking about these nurses, it's been agreed uh, that their testimony um, can come in so because it's all at issue here. Of the so notes, it is not a HIPAA violation. It is not a problem. These are all allowed to come in. Um, That's why it's being the offered. First, the first entry is as testimony. August 27th, 2014. Correct. So these are all proper items of testimony. Yes. And the video depositions are boring. And so this is all agreed upon by the uh, parties. You wrote RN in has this case. been hired to provide private nursing care for client Amber Heard. Right? Correct. Right. And RN refers to you, correct? She might not have testified uh, earlier. And, and RN means registered nurse, correct? Depositions correct. are boring. Sorry, y'all. This um, is going to be boring. And throughout the notes, and you say this here, Amber Heard would be referred to as client or AH, correct? That's correct. Thank you, Andy. And, and Johnny Depp would be referred to as JD. Correct. We've got to have cursy commentary. Would you agree that Mr. Depp and Amber would get into verbal arguments? Laura, see, these are pre-recorded. A general sense of discord in the relationship. This would have been recorded February 4th, 2022. What do you mean by general She's sense not a of live discord? witness. She's a video deposition. Are they scrolling Twitter because back here? Is that Twitter? What is she watching? Is she watching me? Hi. Reconciliation. At the Emily D. Baker on YouTube. We're talking about it right now. And is it Twitter? Would you what is she scrolling? I want to know. Taking care of Amber, because of this, in. the disagreements between Mr. Depp and Amber? I provided emotional support. I was not present with her often, but it was available over the phone, via text. Darn it, he moved and, and now we can't see. Person. Wait, we can still see through the water bottle. You Twitter, recall, is it Twitter? Uh, that in March 2015, I uh, Amber went to Australia to be with Mr. Depp? Yes, I remember. You guys, in the foundational Australia, testimony, dates, I would 
some of this stuff we're going to talk about, this is a lot of, oh, this is a lot of um, foundational stuff. <laughs> Maybe. And on exhibit two, this is your note of March 7th, 2015. We'll see. I want to see the notes. Can we bring them back up? That's correct. Oh, it's, a, it's definitely and a And you wrote, a uh, client notifies RN via text of increasing anxiety. I want to I see that. her testifying. I don't want to see Deb. And then on 3 8 find 15, you wrote, RN received report from Debbie RN. Debbie being Debbie Lloyd, correct? That's correct. Do you re recall what see. the report you received was? Send a super chat. We want to know if it's you. On March Tell us it's you. 8th, 2015. I'm teasing. Debbie. I mean, I'm just reading my notes. Sure. I want to see her deposition. I don't just want to see Johnny Depp's face. So I'm going to look and see if anybody else so to answer your question, has it live. No, I don't recall specifics of what the report would have been. Because these are pool cameras. I assume They're all based on Depp. this note, that would have yeah. been a phone call. All the pool cameras are showing just Depp and okay. not the deposition. And it says... Client will be returning to Los Angeles on March 9th, 2015, accompanied by house manager Ben. Do you see that? Yeah. Ben King. Do you have an understanding as to why Amber was leaving Australia in March of 2015? Yep. Sorry, y'all. Yes. I don't know if this is the exact timing, but. Yeah. You know, Alyssa, I have no idea how they're chewing gum in court. I have Australia. no idea. And they had to I have be no idea. Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp had to be separated. Uh, Jack Reynolds, I agree. Which says so a lot, doesn't it? That it's a Ms. choice. Ms. Heard returned to Los Angeles for my my Cosmic Lawn Crime and also I strikes channels. Mr. Depp must have stayed we don't know them in here. Australia. What was your understanding as to why Mr. Depp and Amber had to be separated? Did somebody else come into the Zoom call? There we go. Thank you, pool cameras. Because I wasn't there or involved at the time, but became involved again. I, I remember there. hearing from other people that. Oh no, he just put in gum. For quite sure. an argument between the two. Quite an argument in Australia. That's fair. Do you have any understanding if anyone was injured during? Um, the argument between the argument between Amber and Mr. Depp. Physically injured. Physically, yeah. Again, I wasn't present, so I'm only speaking as to what I recall. Which is generally the time hearsay, and what I sort of remember hearing from others. Yeah, what was reported. And also, I just remember Mr. Depp's finger was injured. I can't. Tell you specifically which one, but I remember there was an injury to his finger. Do you have any understanding as to how his finger was injured? No, it's hearsay. No. They've already agreed then, to let it in for some um, reason. Aaron, you wrote the next note on March 9th, twenty fifteen, because of that the notes. says uh, RN and CT in touch via text and phone calls after a client arrived at fifteen hundred. Yes, I wrote that. Okay. And fifteen hundred, you're using military time, correct? That's correct. So that would be 3 p.m. Correct. Okay. And you wrote client expressed feeling, quote, sad, right? I think the yeah, pre-recorded right. depots so are boring. Do you recall what Amber was sad so about approximately check out. March 9th, 2015? And so the point might get lost. I can't speak to the... So the point know, might get lost. I don't remember specifically, but I would assume based on yes. my March... Note, I would make the assumption that those feelings were in relation to the relationship. And you can look at the timestamps because these do jump and you'll you see the cuts. Client states she would like to discuss so you'll see the jumps between her where and objections have been cut RN out. In private tomorrow, plans so. are made for RN to visit client at her home tomorrow. So these have been edited. Yes, I wrote that. Do you recall all the conversation you had with Amber regarding the events between her and Mr. Depp? at this March, around this March 9th, 2015 timeframe? No, I don't recall specifics. You recall anything in general? 
I really don't. I'm sorry. It's fair. Admit, did did Amber at, at express any um, fear of Mr. Depp at this time? Don't recall. I don't. I don't see that in this note, so I I can't speak to that. What's in the notes? What's in the notes? What's um, in the notes? And then the note for uh, March 10th, 2015. You see that note? I do. You can take this down. Okay. You could have edited this part out. You've edited so much. Why aren't we editing the pauses? <sighs> we put up attachment 25, please. Like... Really? Does the jury get the unedited version? Uh -huh. No. The jury gets the version presented in court. Um, so they get this. But if you're editing out the objections, why not edit out the long fucking pauses? Like, just, I got questions. Like, why Why wouldn't you just edit out? Why wouldn't you just edit out the other stuff? But yes, she might be smiling after an objection or after court and counsel went back and forth. And then it was resolved. And you can it's see the time I'm showing jumps, you a text chain which between is fair. you and... Whitney heard on March 23rd, 2015. Do you see that? Hey, Julie Virgo. Yes, this is yeah, a dep witness, but this is Amber Heard's lawyers and on questioning March, first because they called the uh, deposition. 23rd, 2015, you texted to Whitney Heard. <sighs> Debbie just told me what's going on and to check with you. Is Amber awake or fall asleep? Do you see that? Yeah. And then I want to see the text. Miss Heard wrote, she finally fell asleep. Do you see that? Yes. Okay. Then you wrote, thank goodness. She must I'm be sorry. exhausted. I'm okay. sorry. Just to, just to confirm, this is this is from Whitney Heard, not Amber Heard, correct? As, as I understand it, it says Whit Heard. Is that your understanding? Maybe not. I assume. Thank you. Jack, no. All the objections you, for these things are handled ahead of time. Communicating with Whitney Heard so no. uh, via text or chat? That sounds familiar. Okay. Not all witnesses get compensated. And some wrote, do. Some Thank don't. goodness, she must be exhausted. You want me to come to the loft, or is she safe and sound asleep? This is after. You see that? Did you see that? Australia, I'm guessing. Okay. Heather, they called the and deposition. That's why wrote, they go first. Safe? Question mark. No, she's not. Kept saying she wants to kill herself. You see that? See that? Well, trigger warning. Were you ever concerned about Miss Heard's safety? as it relates to Mr. Depp. So if she made comments to me that she was not safe, I would be concerned about her to ensure that she was safe, yes. Do you recall Ms. Heard making comments to you about her safety? That wasn't directly responsive. Do you remember responsive? a general sense when they, meaning Ms. Heard and Mr. Depp would have arguments, she would, often have her friends around her for support but from a general you know physical sense she was she was always in a safe place so she was always physically safe is what well, she's saying you mean where you mean in a general physical sense she was always in a safe place what do you mean by that meaning she was always not always i should say often home often surrounded with friends she had friends that lived right down the hallway from her. So she was always supported. Was was Mr. Depp friends with uh, Marilyn Manson? Yes, I believe. They really want to talk about Marilyn Manson. Like a Ms. lot. I'm showing you what's marked as Exhibit 7. And these are um, texts that Mr. Depp produced between you and him. Um, and I'm they focusing on this text up. message of October 31st, 2015. You see that? Well, so this text message between you and Whitney is on March 23rd, 2015. You see that? Thank you. I can't hide okay. my yawn. And if Sorry, we go all. back to exhibit two, and I'll go back. Um, Can we read it? Oops. I taught yo pimp when he were a child, sent huge text to Kipper, no response. He's an odd duck old Kipper. This is the second time that he's held off giving um, me meds by blackmailing me there, into seeing no him. There's no entry for March 23rd. The first time I had just that. chopped my finger off. Not mm. everything you did for Miss Heard as, oh, well. as a nurse is reflected in these notes, correct? I went off the majority of this stuff anyway. And the next notes we have are I guess that's November a new 25th, way to stop. 2015. 
Do you know why there's a long um, period where there's no notes? Yes, perhaps I can shed some light for you and everyone on the relationship. Uh, when I was first hired to care for Ms. Heard, I worked full time. You know, I was assigned 24 seven basically. And after a period of time, I became more part time and on call. Uh, and I was working with different clients at the time. So I would, how to put it, I would not be working regularly, but would also be available if an issue arose or medication change needed or things like that. So I would assume that would account for this, this gap. Okay. Why did you move from um, full time to part time? I'm curious too. I don't know the exact answer, but I I assume that's not my decision to make. That's usually the client and or treating physician. Okay, okay. so that's the first page of exhibit two. Yes, thank you. Sorry, my lips are covered in almonds, smokehouse almonds. So if you can, um, can you go down to, it's about the third paragraph, a little bit, yes. Her report from JD, which refers to Mr. Depp. I think I'll get into why um, she had an addiction, so they're going to have to. Client AH. This witness is not live. This is a witness on deposition, which is why we have a timestamp here. So you can see if it jumps. Increased anxiety and agitation recently and has had several outbursts of anger and rage. From what I remember when I was involved in the case, it I don't was know if we will get a huge bomb show. Ms. Heard with Maybe some emotional issues, anxiety issues um, in, in attempts to assist in layman's term, kind of calming things down a bit. Calming what the relationship? Um, I'm curious. Examples that interesting. you knew of of anger and rage showed by Amber. Interesting, interesting. So it sounds like I she was brought in to stabilize her Amber a bit. Seeing her very angry. I have to refer to my notes. It was in London, so that would have been 2014. And I believe it was in reference to a violating incident where her phone had been hacked and she was quite upset. I saw her angry at that time and other times I don't recall. Were you in London with Amber at the time? Yes. And how was, how was Amber showing her anger? I recall loud kind of elevated uh, voice, yelling, crying, uh, quite a bit. Do you recall receiving a call from Amber um, around December 16th, 2015 regarding this argument between Mr. Depp and Amber? Oh, they jumped because she wasn't talking about an argument. I don't recall a specific phone call. Do you, would you doubt that a phone call occurred if they, if you wrote it down in your notes? She's like, if I, I wrote, wrote it in my it, notes, it I, happened. I don't doubt that it occurred. I just don't have memory of it. That's why you take notes. And now you see the note on December 17th, 2015? Yes. And you wrote RN in contact with client to notify her that she'd be able to deliver medications to her home. RN waited at door for several minutes after knocking. Client greeted are in the door looking disheveled, hair appeared unbrushed, client appeared weepy and sad, posture is slouched. Client told RN about argument with husband. RN offered emotional support but reminded client that RN could not stay as was on duty with another client and was only visiting in order to del deliver medication. Per client, she had not been, she had not had contact with husband since altercation. 
client had visible bright red blood appearing at center of lower lip. When RN made client aware that she active, was actively bleeding on her lip, client stated it was from injury sustained in the, and then it's blank, you see that? And then and argument. It keeps going down in the argument between her and her husband, and that it continues to bleed actively. You wrote that? Yes. And then you also wrote clients also states that her head is bruised and that she lost clumps of hair and altercation. You wrote that? I assume so, it's in my notes. Okay. And then you wrote, Aaron briefly looked at client's scalp but was unable to visualize the, hemat the hematomas client had described. You wrote that? Yes, I would agree. And then, and then you wrote, RN encouraged client to be seen by physician Dr. Kipper or go to emergency urgent care for thorough assessment. You see that? I do. And then right. you wrote, client states she will contact Dr. Kipper tomorrow. Client is supported by friends Rocky and IO who will be staying in client's home with her. You wrote that? I agree, yes. This might be the okay. only witness that really talks on about December any 18th, active bleeding for Amber Heard you wrote, at all. Client states she went to Dr. Kipper's office and was assessed by NP Monroe T as Dr. Kipper was out of the office. This is the you day she that. went and they didn't see anything, yes. I think. And NP stands for nurse practitioner. That's correct. And Love an NP. you understand Monroe T stood for Monroe Tinker? Yes. You recall if Mr. Depp ever forgot to take any of his medication? This is boring. A specific time or ever? <laughs> in, in any time where you were like, working with like him. whenever like all i would say vaguely yes the nurse didn't say she saw a clumps of hair missing they'll well, ask I'm sure about that it i'm sure at 11. i'm sure that um depth's team will ask about your deposition <clears throat> which is it's a lot 96. i saw mm. um the question about isn't it hearsay if amber told her no 106? it's an it's a party opponent so no, it's not yes. because it's Amber's statements, just like Johnny's statements. Can in. you recall receiving this text message, right? Sorry, my throat. I have a vague memory of this. Do you recall if you spoke to Amber after you received this text message? Or at any time after you received this text message around May 21st, May 22nd? Thank you so much, Lizette. I will. I mean, once we're done today, we're done. Uh, phone call? Or just, yeah. phone call. Uh, I, I don't really recall. It could have happened. You just don't recall one way or the other. I, I would agree with that. Okay. And you received this picture from Amber. That's correct. See, Melanie, we all did. What is this picture? Is the problem. Of? Everyone did. Everyone zoned out a bit. Is there a picture? I was just asking if you could scroll down. Well, if you, if you want it, just. A little uh, Ms. Heard. Oh, now they're trying to rewind and the deposition. Does the picture show redness on under Miss Miss Heard's eyes? So these are showing. You can ask answer as a photos. lay person if she has such an opinion. If you have an opinion one way or the other, you can let them. I mean, she's a nurse. Why not have her answer as a nurse? I, I'm not an expert, so I mean, there's color on her face in different areas. I don't know what's what. What days are these from, though? You received this first picture of Amber at 12:36 a.m. Correct. On what date? That's the timestamp there. And you received another picture at 1236 AM? It appears so. And who do you see in that picture? Also Miss Heard. But what date? And you received a third picture of Amber at 1236 AM? Yes, it appears so. And is that third picture of Amber? Yes, that's Miss Heard. And you received the fourth picture of Amber at 12:36 a.m. Then yes. And and this fourth pic, I think just so it's clear, the fourth picture is of Amber, correct? That's correct. And you received that at 12:36 a.m. Yes, that's the timestamp. Okay. And these are pictures of Amber's face. This correct? is her nurse. So this yes, is her that's RN. A picture of her face and neck. Do you recall if you, do you, do you recall, and you recall receiving those pictures? Like Stuff I said, I from have the a vague memory. Notes of, is redacted. Of this, but I don't so, 
specifically the redacted jury. stuff is blacked out meaning it won't be in front of the jury and it won't come in in court <clears throat> It's it's um, very possible that the courts okay. allowed him to. Do you know if he reported down. these pictures, or what Miss Heard reported to you to Dr. Kipper? I would assume that if any information uh, was presented to me, I would have contacted Dr. Kipper. And you know how you would have contacted Dr. Kipper? No, I. I, depending on the date time, I would sometimes call, email, text. Do you recall if you wrote nurse notes for this incident? I mean, if she's her recall. private nurse and she thought she was you injured, to look wouldn't there be notes? Two? Yes. The nursing notes? I do. Yeah. Why don't we do sure. that? Yes, please. So there's notes for May 11th, 2016. You see that? So the, re the redactions are decided before the, the trial with the parties in litigation and sometimes with the court. So, yes. Okay. Do you know why you didn't include notes for May 21st, 2016? I don't know. If there and on May 26, you, you wrote client well, well, texted RN requesting Ambien as she states she's suffering from insomnia due to stress and anxiety client reports, quote, having the hardest week of my life, end quote. You wrote that? Yes. And you wrote client state she cannot deal with the negative media publicity she has received surrounding the divorce she requested from her husband, JD. So it's not Dr. the divorce. Dr. notified. Ambient She's bothered by the publicity? QHS PRN 14 ordered for Dr. Kipper. Clients encouraged Kathy, to make Botox, Canley, with Dr. Kipper in office to be assessed. They'll need someone to offer that to the jury. To that. The jury yes. doesn't know that. So, so I'm showing you what the negative publicity is interesting to me. Deposition, which is Pilati 114 through 119. Um, you can take a look through them. Uh, it appears to be notes of your of when you were Mr. Depp's nurse, as opposed to Miss Heard. It's still very interesting that she said the <laughs> negative publicity That's from filing divorce, correct. not I leaving her marriage, not filing for divorce. Mr. Or excuse me, my nursing notes huh. in relation to Mr. Depp. I think she thought so she would have a different reaction. Depp, correct. That's correct, because these nursing notes are in I don't think it's wrong for her to be upset. Sister. I think it's interesting that what the nurse, the nurse wrote is she was upset about April the 23rd, publicity, not about wrote, getting divorced. Um, That's what I thought was interesting. Dr. Kipper will introduce Ro Rosalind Phillips to Debbie RN and clients, Amber H and Johnny Depp. Debbie RN will assist in coordinating session appointments between clients and Ms. Phillips. Do you know if Mr. Depp and Amber ever saw Rosalind Phillips? Sussex Sandra, I don't know I don't, why we no. don't have any dates. It's very interesting. We're mm -hmm. going to need them. They're going to need to tie the dates together at some point. They haven't done it yet for the jury. So we're going to need it. So the legal teams see the whole document and then they litigate what gets redacted out and what gets in. And then they go to the court if they need the court to help litigate. And then it comes in as an exhibit. So this is all determined ahead of time. And at what's in Pilate what's out. Seventeen. It shows notes for June. 7, I'm sure someone will talk about the side effects of Ambien if Amber was on it, but maybe not. This is Johnny true. Depp's list of you wrote medications. The following med medications were approved from 2016 for to be given to the client. I don't and know why it's relevant a list of, of medications. Uh, Okay. You you wrote that you wrote these notes, correct? Yes, that's correct. And did you understand that Mr. Depp was taking those those medications as of June seventh, twenty sixteen? I know I want to know what's redacted though. For this nursing note, it appears that he was taking these medications listed. Okay. And then there's a nursing note for June 26, 2016. See that? Yes. 
and it says uh, you wrote client is going through divorce with wife Amber H and is dealing that's... with the loss of his mother that's so fair passed away one month ago client was provided with the divorce request from wife AH three days after mother passed away you see that yes that'd be stressful you wrote that yes so was it your understanding that Amber asked for a divorce This Amber filed for divorce. Says that Mr. Depp was provided with divorce request from Ms. Hurd, so it appears she she was the one requesting the divorce. Right, and, and you wrote next client states he was not aware AH wanted divorce and expresses confusion regarding AH's desire to terminate marriage. You wrote that. Yes. Is that what Mr. Depp told you? I would assume if I wrote it in my net, in my notes. Then you wrote, uh, okay. client's divorce has been highly publicized and wife AH has been, has been accused him of several character damaging allegations, including domestic violence. Did you think they you were character that, damaging? Correct. Was, was this on, did you write this based on information Mr. Depp provided you? I don't know. I would assume that I've had discussions with him regarding this, considering that this is a nursing note a lot. for Mr. Depp. Did Mr. Depp tell you his character had been damaged as of I'm just June reading my nursing notes. I don't recall. I have to go by what my note says here. Uh, so it alludes to that's something that he had discussed. Maria, that's hilarious. Thank and you. you you see where he wrote, client states he felt helpless previously, but is now angry at AH and wants to clear his name. Mr. Depp told you that? Again, I don't recall for sure, but I would go back to my nursing notes because those were written more at the time. I don't so recall. I would assume that he I'm going to my notes. That. She is not going to testify to anything okay, that's not down, her notes. Um, she probably wrote, doesn't have RN, independent recollection, client and that's the professional training. Encourage client to continue utilizing individual therapy as re he responded well to RN's use of therapeutic communication. You see that? Yes. And you wrote that, correct? Yes. You wrote, then you wrote, so, client is resistant, stating, quote, I don't want anyone like Amber's wife therapist. He has only made things worse, end quote. You see that? Yes. And you wrote that? Yes. yes. And and where it's quotes, I don't want anyone like Amber's therapist. He's only made things worse. That was something that Mr. Depp told you? Again, as I have it in quotations, I assume he made that statement. She's only going to stop. A little farther down, you wrote, throughout RN's visit, client maintains attention and is actively participating in conversation. Client consumed three She's vodka drinks. She's only going to testify about what in seven, her seven hour notes. visit. Client did not eat That's during it. visit and drank water only with several prompts from RN. RN educated client on possible interactions between prescribed medication and alcohol. Yeah. Client verbalized understanding but stated, quote, right now I need a little alcohol for all the bad things I'm going through. And she's like, You're on Ambien. Please don't. <laughs> Please don't. You, Please you don't do that. Lines? Yes. See, the document speaks best as to how much how many drinks Mr. Depp had. Correct. And that Mr. Depp drank vodka drink three vodka drinks during Ooh. your visit. Oh, don't tell me we've got another minutes. hour. We're at 37 then you, minutes out of an hour and 29 minutes. RN provided one-on-one -on -one emotional support uh. and encouraged clients to limit and or abstain from alcohol and illicit drugs. You wrote that? Yes. In this case, multi-pass, um, no. They are asking these questions because they are doing discovery. They are investigating drugs. part of it. They are asking all of the questions. No, but I That's did, the role of the deposition. I did, and not just with Mr. Depp, but in my line of nursing, so provide that's why. education always with any medication clients are on and uh, contraindications. Yeah, please don't drink when you're on these things. You that know, makes Mr. sense. Mr. Depp ever took any illicit drugs during, during the two years? during the 2014 to 2016 timeframe? I don't know. I didn't, I didn't witness him using any illicit drugs, so I can't speak to that. Your Honor, at this point, the questioning switches over to questions for, um, by counsel for Mr. Depp. I 
that's all right with us, Your Honor. Oh, are we breaking for the day? I'm sorry. Oh. Let's go ahead and break for the evening. Okay. We will see you uh, in the morning. Just do not discuss the case and do okay. not do any outside research. All right. And we'll have the rest of this tomorrow morning. We okay. done for the day. All right. And that's it. Court is done. Let's watch everybody walk out. And we'll talk about depositions and answer super chats and questions. And then this is what we'll resume with tomorrow morning. I guess we're not finishing Johnny Depp's side today. So. All right. So we'll see everybody at 10 o'clock tomorrow. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The judge is like, peace out. I'm getting off the bench right now. I'm going to leave this on to see everybody chatting in court, even though they cut the court audio feed. Question. Amber still hasn't turned in evidence, right? Seems likely. Um, we haven't seen anything to indicate that she has. How's that going to play out? It will be a big deal. The jury will likely be given an instruction, but we don't know the final ruling on that. I think we will find out in the future, but we don't know at this point. So I like to watch everybody wrap up and what they do and who they talk to in court. I'm always interested by that. Who's coming, who's going. Johnny Depp waving at his fans in the courtroom and saying goodbye, leaving with personal security and the experts. Um, I'm always very interested to see that the lawyers still gathering up their things. And then Amber Heard's side still being there, but Johnny Depp leaves and then everybody else leaves. I don't think that's because of the bailiffs. I think most of the people who are traveling to Virginia to watch this case seem to be very pro Depp. We have seen Amber Heard getting heckled as she leaves court. We have seen, um, we have seen a lot of Johnny Depp getting support outside of the court. So when you watch other coverage, like on court TV, you absolutely end up with, um, with seeing how much more support there seems to be physically around the courtroom than there is for Amber Heard, um, surrounded by and talking with her legal team at the end of the day. Um, I, I, it looks like her attorney's trying to comfort her, which is an interesting thing. So I like that they're zooming in. I'm interested to see, I want to know what they're talking about, right? I wish we had audio in there. Would love to know. It's not ours to know, but I am curious as always. So Johnny Depp's leaving the courthouse and then we'll get Amber Heard leaving the courthouse. The judge was like, this is a good place to stop. It's where the questioning shifts. So that's a deposition. Depositions are generally fact finding missions. You're going to ask all the questions. If there's objections in a deposition, the question gets objected to, and then the answer gets allowed in. And if you use the deposition in court, it gets sorted out in court. So you're getting a different type of questioning. The party that calls the deposition is in charge of the deposition. So oftentimes you will have a witness list from either side, Depp, and then heard, and then that side will call the, the other side will call the deposition. So this is a witness from Depp's team. Amber Heard's team is calling this witness. So they are the first ones to questions. Then Johnny Depp's team questions second. That is something that is, is, um, is appropriately done and is commonly done in depositions, but also it allows Johnny Depp's team to then ask more leading questions when we get to do it. So, or when they get to do the, um, their examination. And we'll see that tomorrow with the more leading style question. I'm not sure who this dude is. Um, he must be on the legal team. I would imagine if he's standing in the well in court, but it's unknown because Johnny Depp's entourage has walked into the well as they were walking out of court. Um, so, <sighs> So we will see what's going on with this. Um, let's get to some super chats and then some questions in the chat as well. And then we will get wrapped up for the day. So all the questions about whether she has had cosmetic procedures and whether she's ever bruised from those, those can all be asked of other witnesses or asked of her on cross-examination. So that can be done later. I love that the camera today is panning around and like looking for other stuff in the court before just being done. And now we are 100% done for the day. So you guys are like, is it the, is it the new PR team? I don't know. And she might be lingering because they can only have one team leave at once. So we'll see. Um, so yeah, that's, that's it. I think, um, sky news has 16,000 watching live. We've got 24,000. You know why? Because alternative media is much more entertaining, but we appreciate sky news and their feed and their closed captioning. So we're not going to, we're not going to shade to them. He's the new PR guy. I don't know. Maybe he is. Will the defense get equal time? Yes. The defense will get equal time. They are absolutely going to go back and forth on time and the court's keeping track of time. 
all the time they cross Johnny Depp comes off of them. Um, question, are you going to stream the whole week? I will stream Monday through Thursday. Yes. And then I might uh, not do Friday night live and go out to dinner with my husband. His birthday is this week. My birthday is this week. So we might do that instead if I stream Monday through Thursday. So question, saw someone mention Amber not giving evidence. Are they waiting for her to take the stand first so that she won't get questioned on it? Um, I'm not quite sure what is meant by that, but Amber will have to take the stand at some point. Um, so, you know, well, ha she will have to take the stand at some point. She's also countersuing. She will have to take the stand. Does the judge have to say in the ruling or is it only the jury? Um, only the jury when it comes to was there defamation or not only the jury, this, the judge has absolutely no part in that decision-making process. The judge is there to rule on the matters of law, but the judge is not there to help the fact finders. The jury's the fact finders make the determination, which is so different than the UK trial. Um, the UK trial, you get the judge as the sole finder of fact. Here you have a full jury that is the finder of fact, and they have to agree. Two bulls. How does that work? Well, sometimes we're a little fiery. <laughs> I'm very very deeply earth signed. I am, I am all earth signed up over here. Let's get to some of these super chats without talking about my own astrology, which we can always talk about in a members only chat. I just know that of the 25,000 people in here watching, a lot of them don't want to know about my birth sign, my moon sign, my rising sign, my sun sign. Thank you for these live streams. I really need your commentary in the background for laughs. You're welcome. Um, stay at home mom of two young toddler boys in Vegas needs you. You're welcome, Melissa. And I, mine were four years apart, so it was a little bit easier to balance, but it can be so busy when they are small. What are the possible carriers? What are the possible careers are there with a law degree, graduated law school, but hated practicing? There's so many. I mean, from being writers to talent agents to working in social media to uh, consulting, there's so, so many um, opportunities for a law degree to come in handy. So I I would absolutely start reaching out and talking to those with law degrees who do non-traditional things, including this. Emily, so glad to see you. I've had your coverage on nonstop while studying for finals. Get your finals done. Now all my study buds are law nerds um, too. Graduating May 7th. May 7th is my birthday. Gabby, happy graduation. Congratulations. Yay. If Heard loses big at this trial, can you foresee Heard setting her legal sites on the ACLU? I don't know what she would sue the ACLU for. I mean, I, I can't imagine that she would. I could see them dropping her, but I don't know what she would sue them for. If one Johnny wins, does this prove Amber Heard lied to the UK tabloid? Mm. I mean, it can, but the UK question was, did they have reason to believe her? And the judge found that they had reason to believe her. It was really more likely than not that what she was telling them, they had the right to believe. So it's different whether this, whether this statement of her being abused was defamation against Johnny Depp is really a very different question. Same subject matter, but very different question than the UK case. Um, Lexi Unicorn says Camille will get under Amber Heard's skin like Amica cream apparently. Like Amica Cream, apparently. And I think, Lexi, that that's true. I think Camille would probably be the best choice. I guess we'll just have to see. Thank you for the purple May is Lupus Awareness Month. From this loopy, wear your purple to support lupus awareness. Joe Jersey, thank you for letting us know. I did not know. Um, just realize everyone's calling Arnica Cream Amica Cream, probably because the RN in Arnica looks like an M. I use Arnica Cream on sore muscles. Had me um, color you deceased. So the Amica cream started because Amber Heard's lawyer, when she was questioning, um, God, the fantastic guy with the accent, whose name is completely escaping me now because that's my world as an ADHD adult, but she was questioning him. I was like, but you don't know if Amber Heard wears Amica cream. So the mispronunciation started with Amber Heard's own lawyer calling Arnica cream Amica cream. And yes, I do believe that the RN makes it look like an M and that's why Heard's lawyer was mispronouncing it. Arnica cream, not Amica cream, but Arnica is also recommended for bruising after things like Botox too. So it lends credibility to whether this question can go both ways. So Alive said, had they acted within the statute of limitations, do you see a case for a criminal trial here at all? Oh my God, this would be a mess. Um, as a criminal trial, 
I'm not, I'm not done with all the photographic evidence. I mean, ask me again after Amber Heard testifies, but you need corroborating evidence for any criminal trial. So it's hard if people are intoxicated, it's hard without corroborating evidence. So depending on what corroboration we get from Amber Heard, we'll see. I mean, and then Johnny Depp's finger was severed in Australia. I'm not sure how their criminal system would handle it. Um, he got the the can thrown at him in the Bahamas. Again, different legal system. So it just depends on what corroboration there is. But it can be difficult if people are inebriated. Um, but either way, they chose not to do it. And I think because they chose not to do it, we kind of have the answer as this would be a very, this. it's just all really messy and it would be hard to pursue. Um, Denise said, I've been a juror on three trials and defense attorneys rub me the wrong way on all the trials. Attorneys questioning tones matter. The questioning tones do matter. And thank you for that insight, Denise. It, I think it matters too. Um, Crystal Farmer said, um, no, I'm not going to be, no, San Sam. I'm not going to be able to get that right. Sorry. I, I, I tried. I'm going to be bad at that. Asked if Amber Heard could be impeached on the Milani palette with it being made so specific. Uh, it depends on how she testifies because it's not in evidence yet. It was just in opening statements. So it really depends on how she testifies and who testifies and what they say. So it's possible. Thank you for narrating this dumpster fire. Melissa, I literally narrate everything. <laughs> like I was, um, even at the conference, I was kind of narr I was narrating things. Octo was sitting there and I was like, what about this? And what about this? And what about that? And I was like, oh my God, I'm narrating the, I'm narrating all of today. I need to stop. Emily, I just got into law school. Yay. Um, and your channel helped me get through the LSAT and applications. Thank you. You're welcome. Congratulations, future lawyer. Um, tear addicted age difference. No, it's not elder abuse, but he's not a spring chicken. Um, I think about that after a B stories. I mean, I, we'll see. Can they award each what they are asking for? No, I don't see a route. I don't see a route in this case to both, um, to both winning. I see a route to both losing, but I don't see about a, um, a path to both winning. So yes, Isaac, thank you. Isaac was the Armica cream. Appreciate it. Yes. It wasn't Ben King. It was absolutely Isaac. Brandy is right. Thank you, Brandy. Um, I was trying to finish my thought and I totally like my train departed the station on that. Apologies with the, um, with the cross examination, it's always going to depend what comes up, whether they both can win or not with regard to them, both winning the defamation as to Amber heard is that this was called a hoax and she was essentially called a liar. And the defamation to Johnny Depp is her saying she was abused. Both of them can't win. She can't be a liner. She can't be a liar and and win. So she can't be a liar and it be defamation that she's called a liar. So they both can't win, but they both could lose. The jury could say it's not defamation to any of you. Everybody go away. That's possible. What style of cross do you think Amber Heard's team should have taken? Also just found out I passed my bar exam. Madison chat. We're celebrating Madison. I, I should, I should bing for you for passing the bar. We need like a cell. I need to get a celebration thing going. We have so many great celebrations here. Um, yay, Madison, what style of cross do I think they should have taken? Don't get combative with the witnesses till the witnesses get combative with you. If you ask really pleasant questions and then the witnesses start acting like dicks, guess what? It makes it look like the witnesses are hiding something. So if you're, especially with experts and especially with people that are liked, like Ben King, if you come in with like, so Mr. King, you were paid this way and you were did this way and you did this and that and that. And then if he started pushing back, then you start pushing back, make the witness look like they're hiding something first. And then say, no, that's not what we're doing here today. Thank you for coming to my court to play. But that's not what we're going to go ahead and do. Because then it makes it look like the witness is hiding something, which is generally what you want to expose. And if the witness is an expert, you want to prod at either the holes in their vision, the holes in their story, or their potential bias. You don't have to be mean to do it. But if they start getting sassy with you, you can get sassy back. So that's the style of cross I prefer. You catch more. You really catch more with honey. You really, really do. Oh my God. I love seeing all the congratulations for Madison in the chat. Lonards, you're the fucking best. And I love you guys. I love you. Did anyone see Amber Heard wearing Amica cream today? I totally did. I'll attest to it under oath. Sarcasm. Because it's clear when it goes on. I'm listening while studying for finals. You're keeping me focused. You know, ADHD. I've been 
real Johnny since crybaby. Love your channel. A girl from Jersey. Thank you for that. You're welcome. I missed your commentary so much when you were gone. Thank you. I mean, I feel like we're in it now for every day. I would rather drill out my own eardrums than listen to Herd's lawyer lady cross-examine. Same. Thank God for your commentary. You're welcome. Me sitting over here just like banging shit and getting annoyed. Question. Do you think uh, the age of the jury matters? Yes. Someone young won't know the weight of the career slash power that that last witness has. I don't know about that. I, I don't, I don't think we give young jurors enough credit. I think that, um, I think that looking at somebody with a tremendous amount of experience can be like, wow, like they've done so much and your ego comes out of it a little bit. So yes, the age of the jury can matter, but also when it comes to the power of social media, I think a young jury might actually understand the weight of the social media testimony more. Like they understand what being canceled on Twitter looks like. They understand the impact of these things, maybe more than a jury that's in, you know, not the law nerds. We're all very wise and amazing. And we, you know, live here on the internet together. But I think there's a lot of jurors like in the Cardi B, Tasha K case that didn't understand the internet. There was an older jury and you saw the testimony that they were really explaining and having to break down analytics quite a lot for that jury and having to break down that information. A younger jury might understand the gravity of social media and, and likability online more than maybe an older jury who's like, this is all stupid. I don't even understand. Um, Hex said, hi, you've been really helpful for comprehending all of this, trying to back to where your rule was said. Uh, could you explain things? <laughs> My brain just went in a totally different direction. Um, the, uh, the backdoor ruling is what was said. And it was the attorney trying to say, your honor, you, you said that question wasn't allowed. You sustained my objection and she's trying to backdoor your ruling by objecting or by asking the question again. So she's trying to get around what you just ruled. So if you're knocking on the front door and you can't go in, going around to the back door and trying to kind of creep in that way. So she's trying to be sneaky and get around the ruling. So that's that's what that meant by trying to backdoor the ruling, trying to if you can't get in this way, you're going to get in the back door, the garage door, the window. You're trying to you're trying to get it in in a way you can't um, today is my birthday and I tested positive for the panini. I'm sorry. I'm looking at the positive. I get to watch along with you all day since you have nothing else to do. There you go. You get to be here with the law nerds all together. I'm sure you are not alone in the chat. Jamie said, thank you for explaining the law to us all and being hilarious. I mean, I try. We missed you the last few days. I missed you too. Can you say hi to my friend, Michelle? Hi, Michelle. Big fan. I'm a big fan of yours as well. I am B. Wait, ah, I am B TV is now called free V. What? I like IMB TV better than Freebie, but okay. It's it's not mine to name. I want so bad to see Johnny Depp's team have a box of muffin on their desk. Same. Bring in muffins for the court staff. Like bring in muffins for the court reporter and the court clerk. Bring everybody muffins. Maybe they do it on Fridays when there's no video. Will the video of Amber Heard in the white blouse a few years ago be used when she testifies? I don't know. Also, how do they know witnesses don't look or talk about the trial? Uh, they don't unless it comes to their attention, but so many eyes are on this. If it comes to their attention, it's going to be a problem. You can't scroll to enlarge something, Elaine. <laughs> Very fair. Pinch and zoom, pinch and zoom, Elaine. <laughs> Do they have a reason the attorneys say the witnesses may be used again after every testimony? Are they saving them for when it's Amber Heard's turn if they want to use the witness again? So we talked about this a little bit earlier. It's a great question, Abby. You get Johnny Depp's case is going on now. It will probably end tomorrow morning. Then you get Amber Heard's case. And then Johnny Depp, if they have time, will have the opportunity to do rebuttal witnesses. If those witnesses might be rebuttal witnesses, they have to still be preserved as witnesses so they can come in and come back as rebuttal witnesses. So they're still preserved under the witness, um, under the witness sequestration rules. And you can't talk about your testimony. You can't talk about the trial, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, because we are close to getting to 243, I should just remind everyone to go ahead and like, and subscribe to the channel. Question. How do they decide who testifies in person and who testifies via zoom? Is there a strategy involved? I think they would prefer every witness be live, but with scheduling and travel concerns and still dealing with communicable illnesses, there are some practicalities that they have to take with some people just not being able to travel or not being willing to travel. So um, I think there is some strategy to it of witnesses they absolutely have to have live, but there's some I think that they don't have live and then some that aren't available that do the video depositions that were previously taken. Dr. Dr. B's out working in the yard. 
Um, do you find it odd there's been no security footage from inside the penthouse? I mean, I feel like Johnny Depp would own security cameras for himself. I don't know if there were cameras and I don't know if they addressed it and I missed it or if they asked Johnny Depp about it. Um, but being a celebrity, because those things are hackable, I would have been very nervous if I was Johnny Depp to have security cameras in my home when I had 24 hour security, I had them in a security booth and I had a secured floor with cameras outside the cor with outside the corridor and outside the building and a secured locked elevator that was only getting up to my penthouse. I don't think I'd want security cameras inside um, my location because if they do get hacked, then it's a bigger problem. I hoped he mentioned Jack. I hoped he was going to mention Aquaman too. And we didn't get back around to it. I love all these references to the Me Too movement as if sexual harassment assault wasn't something anyone cared about before. I think Hollywood didn't treat it as seriously before. I, I sure do. Can the ACLU be sued for their help? No. Um, I don't think they did enough to be part of the defamation. So no, not here. What happens when Amber Heard's oopsies in the UK verdict in while well, testifying? Um, they can bring in any contradictory evidence from the UK trial on her cross-examination. Sarah said he punched a crew member because this man was very rude to a homeless person and Johnny tried to interfere. He wasn't walking around and randomly punching people. That hasn't come in yet. All that's come in is that the jury has heard there's some lawsuit over a punching. So I don't know if it will get cleared up or not. Sounds like they opened the door to the UK trial. Am I wrong? It's been coming up with the experts only, but we'll see. Um, I don't think they're going to get the ruling of the UK trial in. Do you feel like it would be bad if Johnny Depp wins this case? Uh, do you think they feel... Let me try that again. Do you think they would feel bad if Johnny Depp wins this case and Amber has been found out that it was a lie? I'm not sure who they are, but I'm sure there are those that are still rooting for Amber. I'm sure people are rooting for Johnny. Rag is a term for newspapers, not an insult. I mean, I think they were trying to insinuate that the rag was the kind of the gossip magazines and not maybe more the traditional news. Emily, was it damaging when the witness said, quote, was she married to someone else who abused her in 2016? I thought that was bad for JD. I think the witness in context was not bad because it was saying, um, was there someone else that she could be referring to? Because what that's what she said in the article. That's what her allegations are. So no, I don't think it was bad. I think it was just, I think it was, hey, who else could this be referring to? Hollywood is just the most sympathetic place on the planet for addicts. Being an addict an alcoholic or drug addict didn't ruin Johnny's reputation, true or not. Um, I don't think his addiction or drug use ruined his reputation in Hollywood. Can Amber Heard's prior be brought up? Yes, after she testifies or when she testifies or on cross-examination, her prior arrest for domestic violence will come up. Living for the expressions on the witness's face. I mean, that's what we love about a live witness. You definitely see more of that. Can her recall one of his witnesses in her case? Um... If they've properly subpoenaed the witness, yes, they can call a witness that's already testified. In her case, they would just have to prove why it's relevant and why it's different. Did they forget this guy's a lawyer? <laughs> yes. Why are they playing this much with him? Because he's a paid expert. It's almost helping JD, probably. I don't understand Amber Heard's lawyers right now. Me, every time they do cross-examination. Mark Storing cross X. Sure, if that's what the newspaper that you probably found buried in a pile on the back of the toilet said, sure. I mean, he definitely was like, go ahead and keep reading out these headlines, man. Emily, um, would you be interested in covering the super mega lawsuit? Is it over the mega pints of wine? I'm kidding. I'm not sure what the super mega lawsuit is. I've been following your channel from Iceland to Canada. Thank you so much, Heidi. Um, I don't know what the super mega lawsuit is. I'm, I want to get back to the bungee lawsuit, though. I missed that one. And there's a lot that's going on in Rust. And stuff has happened in Britney. And I still don't know if there's a jury verdict in um, the Kardashian Black China stuff. We've just been doing this. It's like single, single minded, but I'm very curious. Um, it's funny. I just opened up Twitter because I wanted to see if there was something. And the first thing that popped up on my Twitter was Roberto Blake's reminder to drink water. Yes, Roberto Blake, I will absolutely be drinking my water. But I wanted to go see if there was. Um, wait, what is Elon Musk talking about? Okay. I'm not curious. I'm not curious. I wanted to see if there was anything on the Kardashians. Wait, the Met Gala is the Met Gala today. We're busy. We don't have time for the fucking Met Gala. Um, but I'm not seeing anything about the Kardashian verdict. So might not be, um, going on just yet. I am going to drink water though. 
When asked if a witness is subject to recall, why did the lawyers pause, hesitate, look at one another before answering? <laughs> they want to decide if that lawyer, if that individual is needed for recall. That's why. Um, Lorraine said, just subscribe to your channel. Thank you for blessing me with your knowledge. Good vibes from SoCal. Thank you. We, we love SoCal and we also love not living in SoCal anymore. <laughs> Bree said, I just read that Amber Heard's team changed tactics after Dr. Curry's damning testimony. She will now be the second witness to testify for the defense. A clinical forensic psychologist, Dr. Dawn Hughes will be the first. That's very, very well possible to give context to what Amber says. Amber Heard has better star meter on IMDb than Johnny. Um, okay. I didn't know there was a star meter. Um, got the shit out of the herd, Emily Baker. I probably said that when I was talking about, you know, the shit's already out of the horse or the shit's already out of the herd. I, yeah. Yep. Mm, yep. Probably. Probably did. Um, apparently Arizona has been the state that has searched for Johnny Depp the most in the last year. That's interesting. I wonder why. I love, I love Google trends. That's fascinating. And I love it. I feel like the only thing going against Johnny Depp is that the, is as the plaintiff, um, the burden of proof is on him. I mean, that's the number one thing that should be going against him is that he has the burden of proof. feels like he's really defending himself as the plaintiff because Amber went straight to the press, no trial. I mean, that's really what this is about. Did she lie or did she not? And did he defame her or did his legal team defame her when they said, um, when they said that she hoaxed and lied is the proof of damage to his reputation to the public proof enough for the proof enough of damage for defamation or does Johnny's team need to prove actual monetary damage? No, they need to just prove that there was damage. And I think losing pirates is enough, which is why they were hammering on wasn't pirates or already hanging by a thread. The monetary damages will be addressed if somebody is found liable and they will have to calculate that. We'll see what Amber Heard's team says about damages. And they're probably going to say that Amber Heard has damages too from all of this. Uh, two L here just finished evidence. Thank God. Super appreciative of your commentary. Um, Tandria. I hope I got that right. Tin, tin, Tandria. I hope I got that right. Um, glad you're finished evidence. You know, all about the hearsay objections. This trial is a great way to practice hearsay objections and responses. Uh, a great way to do it. Thank you. The channel and the hair, the hair is going to probably be down tomorrow. We need to wash the hair. It's snake season. Y'all Husband company sent out an email to check under your desk before sitting down as they found a rattlesnake in his office. Yikes. But it's, it was funny when I just got back to the airport in Tennessee last night, um, there was t the tick notification started coming up in the airport. Like just a reminder, welcome to Tennessee. Ticks are real. It was very interesting. Is it possible that during cross Amber Heard's lawyers will say 2016 allegations caused more harm to Johnny than the 2018 op-ed because there were more uh, differential in the Q numbers. I think that it's a good argument for them that 2016 hurt him more. 2018 didn't do any damage and therefore it's not defamatory. I think it's a good argument. Could this case set precedent for how Hollywood treats allegations of abuse and assault? It's definitely got to make them question something, right? Could more actors sue for being defamed and losing roles? It's, it's still hard for celebrities to win defamation suits. There has to be pretty substantial evidence I don't think you're always going to have evidence like the ACLU emails. The ACLU emails are some of the most um, damning evidence showing what the intent of this article was. Oftentimes somebody's intent only lives in their head. So I think that that's one of the hard things. Finally caught up. I was watching at 1.5 due to being an hour behind. Love the streams. Umbrid's objections during redirect were so aggravating. Thank you. Yes. Question wouldn't it have an effect to look at Amber Heard's reputation after the article. I assume support went up. It would, it might've not been relevant. It might be something they're saving for later. Um, I don't know. It, it might be something they're saving on cross for her own, um, for her own person that comes up to prove damages. And instead of proving her case for her, they're going to wait until cross examination and bring it up then. So there's strategy to that, but we'll see what they do. This year, um, I became a paraplegic. Seychelles Green, 20 years after my injury, y'all have become my access to the outside world, awaiting surgery authorization to extend cervical fusion to my lumbar. Thank you for being here. Um, you are absolutely welcome. And thank you for being here. I mean, we love our community and we are all very differently abled. So that is one of the things I love about our community. Do you follow? Do you, we have, well, I'll, I'll talk, I'll get into that in a, in a member's live. 
Um, are Amber's lawyers trying to provoke? I want to get through the super chats because I don't want to leave you guys hanging. Are Amber's lawyers trying to provoke witnesses on purpose by asking questions and then not letting them answer? I don't know if they're trying to, they're trying to narrow the answers to yes and no. But the problem that lawyer, the problem that Amber's lawyers are having is they're trying to say, but I asked, you know, you said this, but it's, they're, they're changing it so slightly that the witness is like, that's not exactly what I said. So I can't answer yes and no. And that's what's causing part of the problem for the way they're questioning. This might get JD more work. If Amber Heard comes off as purposely hurting Johnny for her career and his money, I fear many Hollywood players will vindicate Johnny Depp, um, thus hurting real female victims. I don't know. I don't know if this case will hurt real female victims. In a lot of the cases that we saw going on through Me Too, there were numerous accusations and it was the first which is what the me too was really about it was the first person who made the allegation and others raising their hand saying yes and me too and sharing their stories and it wasn't most of the allegations we saw were numerous 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 allegations this was the only one that i can remember though there might be others where it was one allegation with no one else also making allegations um, in an attempt to catch up, I've stumbled into Umbridge's cross of <laughs> DJ's agent at 1.5 speed. Send help. We send help. <laughs> um, there are approximately 630 calories in a bottle of wine. How could Amber drink that much and still be so thin? Um, think this is my legally blonde moment argument. I mean, they were saying she drank one to two bottles a day. I don't know. Emily yelling objection as if she's in the courtroom gives me absolute life. You make me want to go to law school at the age of 58. Love you. Never change. Thank you. I'm definitely going to keep yelling objection from here. It's the only way to call a game. It's like ref, ref. It's like yelling at the referee. It's what, it's what we're doing. I would be interested in a quick bits or pod segment on your thoughts about jury selection fiasco and the penalty phase of the Nicholas Cruz trial. I have not seen that, um, but thank you. I will put it on the list. I appreciate you and your coverage of the trial. Just wanted to send some love. Well, thank you. We appreciate it. In this case, I always wondered what would Johnny Depp, what would JJ do? What WWJJD? Oh, what would Judge Judy do? I was so confused because JD in my brain is right now Johnny Depp. But yes, what would Judge Judy do? Judge Judy would yell at these fucking lawyers. That's what she would do. Um, what do you think of Amber Heard firing her PR team? Uh, thank you for doing these. They've been most helpful. I think she's mad at the wrong people. Emily, I recently saw that 2017 Milani Pallet was included as physical evidence in the documents. It's 155 brought in by the defense. Couldn't be easier for Depp's lawyers to bring it in. They're probably going to wait till cross. There's there's not really relevance to it at this point because there's been no testimony about it. So they're going to have to wait till cross. Um, do they have to prove monetary damages for defamation or is damage to his reputation enough? Damage to his reputation is enough, but they did prove some monetary damages. They proved that there was an agreement. Well, they might have proved, we're going to see what the jury decides. They might have proved that there was an agreement for $25 million for Pirate 6 that was kind of that place holding verbal agreement. And then he lost that movie. They're going to try, excuse me, they're going to try to argue that. Her team is going to say there was no agreement, therefore there was no loss. They can also go the route of defamation per se, saying he's alleged to have committed crimes, so you don't need to prove damages. They're definitely trying to prove damages. They're not relying on the defamation per se. That's clear to me. Question, have you seen a jury punish a party in a lawsuit because their lawyers were rude? Not really. Is it grounds for appeal? I mean, you don't know what the jury decides in the jury room, so it can't really be grounds for appeal because the jury would never say that's why they're doing that. So it's really hard to know how a jury, how a jury chooses one thing or another. Um, question, how do lawyers get better at trial? Would these lawyers watch this back and critique themselves? Probably not um, because it would be a tremendous amount of time. but with that, um, with that, I think a experience helps, but B, one of the things you don't always get to see is people observing court and observing court is super important, but a lot of lawyers don't take the time to go and watch other lawyers. It's something that we did a lot in the DA's office, but in any profession, watching other people's people's watching other people do what you do matters. And in law, getting into the courtroom and watching how other lawyers do things um, and try things and cross-examine matters. So there's a lot that they can do. This just might be the style that they prefer. I don't know why. Is this a prevailing party state? Will Amber Heard have to pay for Johnny Depp's giant gaggle of lawyers? It depends. I have not looked at these 
there are requests for attorney fees. I have not looked at, at if those are capped and it depends if the jury awards them. So they don't necessarily get them. The jury has to award them based on the pleadings to the best of my recollection. I am probably biased, but oh my God, I find Hurd's cross exams unbearable in tone. The tone's really hard, but if, if Depp's attorneys take that tone too, I'm going to be annoyed with them as well. I wonder if Depp's team will go equally hard on witnesses. We'll see, but it could hurt them. I mean, they, they have a chance to stand out in the way they do their cross. Do you think that Johnny Depp's team is being strategic and having so many women on their team? Absolutely. I think it's great, but is this helpful due to the case subject? Yes, it's very helpful. Yes, it's very strategic. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, it matters. And yes, lawyers have these conversations. And yes, they should. They Their job is to win. So they are going to have conversations about the age of the lawyers, the gender of the lawyers, the ethnicity or apparent ethnicity of the lawyers, all of those things are going to be a conversation when strategizing the team to put in front of the lawyers. Um, and it happened at the DA's office as well. You got very, very attractive lawyers in certain units that tend to be televised more. Um, there's strategy to that. It's it's changing a bit because juries are getting more broad. Um, but yeah, they they definitely, you pick the lawyers that you think will play to the jury. What is the point he is trying to make it's confusing. Some of these crosses were deeply confusing to me. Do you agree it's impossible to come up with reputation rate for JD without time references? So impossible to disagree with the scores from 2016. Oh my God, love you. Greetings from Brazil. I mean, he said what his methodology was. They're allowed to poke holes in his methodology. If the jury just zones all that out, we'll see. It'll be interesting to see how they tie that up in closing. I'm convinced Rotten Baby is shitting the bed because they're sick of trying to pull anything else out of their butts from Amber Heard. They got together in 2012. They did, but that was not uh, pointed out directly with this witness. It has come into evidence with other witnesses. Uh, thanks for the hey, hi there with all this minutia. You're welcome. And that's what we do. Question, why don't they question Disney directly about why they have chosen not to continue with Pirates and Johnny Depp? I don't know. They might not have been able to depose them. That might have been trade secrets. That might have not been discussed. They might not want to know what Disney has to say. They will see if Amber Heard calls Disney. They might not want to know what Disney has to say. Um, Amelia said, great moderators, great commentary. Thank you. And great cats. The cats are adorable. They are running around today. Um, we see them normally during the evening more. And yes, our moderators are amazing. They've been absolutely incredible, um, especially as our lives get really big. It can get hard with bots and trolls and stuff. Um, motion to rename Needlehoff the Count. Uh, uh, uh. If he starts doing that, we'll absolutely call him the Count. The poop was out of the herd. Love you. I'm only glad you're back. I'm glad I'm out. Back. I'm glad I'm back too. I bet Depp is chewing Nicorette. He might. Um, I don't know if he smokes. I the chat seemed to indicate that he does, so he might. Can they force her to produce photos and messages stored in the iCloud? They tried. Um, they tried. She was ordered to do it back in November last year. Doesn't seem she's done it yet. Women have made allegations of abuse against Marilyn Manson. Yes, um, I haven't gotten into covering those um, those yet, but will. Perhaps Amber Heard's team is trying to use that angle to support their arguments. Maybe. The guilty by association, I don't think will work with a jury, though. Apparently, Amber's not going to testify. She has to testify. I can't see her not testifying. Her, her claims can't survive if she doesn't testify. She's also suing for domestic, uh, she's also suing for defamation over being told or over it being said that her claims of domestic abuse were false. She has to testify. Does the jury take notes? Yes. And they have been. And we've heard um, from Chanley Painter over at Court TV that they've taken more notes at certain points and less notes at certain points. And that's really all that they're able to read the jury with because they're not very reactive. In notes, Amber heard admitting to mushrooms, alcohol, vomiting. They said that that was a lie. And the lawyer said Whitney was vomiting because she was pregnant. They alluded to that for sure, but the notes absolutely cleared that up. I'm sure we'll get into that tomorrow when we get Johnny Depp's team questioning the nurse. Are you absolutely sure that the jury cannot order both of these motherfuckers into detox, rehab, and anger management in lieu of money damages? I'm absolutely sure that they cannot do that in a civil case. What are your thoughts on her changing her PR team during trial? She's mad. Could it be damaging to her case? Doesn't look good to me. The jury doesn't know. The jury's not going to know. It's not going to be relevant in court. It shows all of us that she's mad and she's quaking. Um, if he wins, is her case thrown out? I. The jury's going to determine both at the same time. They're going to find liability one way or the other. So um, 
So they're going to find somebody liable and not liable, or they're going to find nobody liable. My husband's birthday is also May 7th, Earth sign. Hello, fellow Taurus. Aren't I even used when people get Botox? To hide, well, not to hide bruising, but to heal bruising or to limit bruising from showing up. Do you think Johnny's constant tardiness to the movie set became an issue when his star power began to fade and the diva behavior wasn't tolerated? I think the defense is trying to make fetch happen to say that these are the reason that these are the reasons that Johnny Depp was losing roles. See, he's tardy. He's late. He's gotten your piece in. He's not performing. His addiction is making him so he's unreliable. And that's why he's not losing roles. It has nothing to do with Amber Heard's allegations. He's losing roles because of his behavior. I think that's the direction they're going in that. Do you think Amber Heard's lawyers uh, still think their style is winning public opinion? I don't think they give a shit about public opinion. Or do they know they come off bad, but think it's too late to change? My throat is getting crusty with me. Um, I don't think they care about public opinion. They're not going to change and they shouldn't change. How many throat sprays do you have? Three. Um, I really like the throat. 37 though. Not sponsored. Do you think that they're not... They're not concerned about public opinion. I mean, maybe a little bit because it can absolutely hurt your feelings when the public is like memeing you, but their duty is to win this case for their client in court. And if they think this is the best way and this is the strategy that they and their client mapped out, they're not going to shift gears unless their client asks them to. They have to answer at the end of the day to Amber Heard, as long as it's not violating ethics. If she's like fucking go in, they're like, in we go. So I don't think they're going to change approach. I think this is their approach. I think it's partly client informed. If she was mad with this approach, it would have changed day one. I think this is the approach that she also wanted. She's like, fucking fight for me. Get in there and fight. And they are. They have gotten in there to fight. Uh, so the court of public opinion, that's her PR team that has to worry about it or her new PR team. But her lawyers should be worrying about it because it's a streaming trial. So the tactic you would take in a non-streaming trial and the tactic you take in a streaming trial could be two different things. So um, they, I, I don't think they think they're winning public opinion. I think they're trying to win in court. Jessica said, New York girl here. Thank you for making this better to watch. You're welcome. I try. I think he just wants the world to hear evidence. I free potato. I think that's what Johnny Depp wants too. He wants everyone to hear this. I don't think he cares if he wins or if he wins money. Um, we missed you last week. Question. Is it common for these types of cases for so much testimony to be pre-recorded remote? I don't think there is a this type of case. This is a really unique circumstance when you have two big celebrities and people who are bi-coastal. Normally, you would, it's odd, first of all, that this case isn't in California where most of the witnesses are. Um, then you've got to deal with a global panini and that's making it difficult. So no, I don't think in most cases there is this much. It can happen, but normally not like this. This is an unusual case. How do you feel about the social media expert? Um, I liked the social media expert. I think he was very clear about what he measured and how and why. I don't think he pinned the difference between 2016 and 2018 enough. I think a lot of it, it was like in 2016, it got bad and then it got worse in 2018. I don't think he differentiated that a ton. Question, can Amber settle at this point? No. I mean, Johnny Depp's almost done with this case. He's not going to settle. Both parties have to agree. She could drop her cross complaint, but I don't think she will. If those really are JD's meds, that's a huge bombshell more than any personality disorder. And they talked about it and I'm sure they're going to talk about it more, but yes, those were, those were Johnny Depp's meds. And that's what was testified to that. That was an accurate list of meds at that time. Why is Elon Musk allowed to back out of testifying? Because he was never properly subpoenaed. He was never deposed. So he doesn't have to show up. They can't go get him. They can't make him come to court. He's never, and he's never been deposed. Question, Amber Heard's team is so rude to Johnny Depp's witnesses and how they are treated if they change their tone with Amber Heard's witnesses. How will this sit with the jury? I mean, it'll tell the jury where it's at, but we'll have to, I want to see how it goes when they start doing direct. Um, Steph said, love your coverage. Do we know if Amber Heard has a forensic psychologist too? They don't. They have treating doctors. Would love a second opinion. I would love a second opinion too. I think we're going to get it through treating doctors, which can be problematic in and of its own. I'm sure Amber Heard has damages too. Unfortunately, she can't sue for defamation against herself. I mean, and she's suing for defamation. She's going to show her damages from being called a liar. And it'll be very interesting to see how they do that. Um, shout out to Taurus. My birthday is today. Julio, happy birthday. 
Um, Marilyn said thoughts on 3 million signatures to remove Amber Heard from Aquaban too soon to request removal from film is her side hasn't been, her side hasn't presented their case. I mean, I'm not calling for anyone's removal from anything. We haven't heard her side of the case, but the public outrage is real right now. And I, that's probably why she wants another crisis management team, but I don't think they're going to digitally swap out her face on Aquaman. I don't know when the release date is, but it's got to be coming up, but we heard how much they digitally replaced people. Um, from the witness earlier this afternoon, the Richard Marks guy, he was great. So, um, let's see, will Johnny Depp's lawyers be able to make Amber Heard melt down? I don't know. We'll see how she testifies. We saw her get snippy in depositions, uh, cats eating mega muffins, surfing Google. <laughs> I need a visual. Emily H3 won the lawsuit just announced on air. Which one? Which lawsuit? Not the Cav Cav lawsuit. That, I don't think that would have gotten thrown out yet. I'm going to have to go Google. I'm going to have to go Google in a minute. If Amber Heard fired her PR team because of bad publicity, wouldn't that imply she's looking stuff up for the, she's allowed to because she's a party to the case. She's allowed to be on social for now. She's not allowed to be on social when she's under oath testifying. I know you're super busy. Any idea what's happening with Wendy Williams? Nothing. I haven't seen a report. Court, all the documents are sealed. Nothing. I know nothing that's going on. Becky A said, even if Q stores, Q scores show damage was worse after 2016 allegation than after op-ed, wouldn't they still be able to prove defamation since the op-ed was based on a lie? Thanks for all the coverage. We will see Becky. I think so. It's going to, they can argue it for sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. My mom's obsessed. She won't share the TV. <laughs> Mom, Cade Marshall wants the TV. Cade, no, we don't need that. We don't need the TV. Um, let me go look. I don't know which one it is. Here, now we've got to look it up. The mods are like, don't distract Emily. We've got to look it up. I need to know. I have to have answers. I have to have answers. I have to have answers. So we're going to do that real quick because I have to have answers. Question. I saw another YouTuber, don't remember the name, show that Amber Heard's team entered into evidence the palette and Amber Heard makeup palette. Do you reckon? I mean, I've seen comments that it was, I'll pull up the wit. I will pull up the, um, the newest evidence stuff and talk about it tomorrow, right before we go live for sure. Amber Heard cannot be prosecuted criminally. Aquaman two is set for December, 2022. Still got time if they wanted to digitally replace somebody's face, I suppose. All right. Let me look up what's going on with H3. Why? Because I'm deeply curious. If you guys haven't been following these suits, I've been following them uh, very closely until we started doing this over the last few weeks, but, um, I am very curious. Let's see. I'm going to look for the Triller one first. Let's see. I need to pull up case number. So that's what I'm doing. I'm going to pull up the case number. I'm going to pull up the California case. Um, and then I'm going to pull up the federal case and see which one it is. Cause the calf calf case, that would be very interesting, but there's also a federal case with the motion to dismiss pending so I'm not sure which one it would be. So let me pull up the, um, let me pull up the California Cav Cav case first, because that's what I'm interested in. Y'all are just, thank you for being patient with me. Um, and then I'll answer some more questions. I am very curious about these cases just because I've been following them. And again, free speech on social media is something I'm always going to follow. Question, why are they only suing about the op-ed, not her alleged defamation in general? would be easier to prove damages. Mr. Who, this is a fantastic question. It's because of the statute of limitations in Virginia, it's only one year. So you can only sue for shit that happened within the year. The 2016 stuff was too old. And I really do think that Johnny Depp's team believed speculation on speculation. I think that Depp and his team believed that after they signed the non-disclosure, when they resolved the divorce in 2017 and released a joint statement, that it was done. Like, I think that it was, I think they thought it was completely done. So I, that's why I think they didn't sue at the time because they went through the divorce settlement. They had the, um, they had the non-disclosure and I think they were like, okay, this is over now. Um, and then in 2018, it wasn't. And that's when it was like, okay, fine, we're suing. And, but by the time you get to 2018, the, um, the statements from 2016 are too old. And there was already that settlement with an NDA. So also they might be barred because there was a settlement uh, with the NDA. So let me take a look. I'm in the California case right now. And I am going to go look at that real quick. And if there, uh, and if there is a ruling, I will talk about this in another video. I'm not going to go into depth on it now. Um, 
let's see, 427 notice defendants amended special motion to strike. I'm not seeing a notice of dismissal from a California court from 427. I'm seeing an amendment in the California case. Let me go look at the federal case because that had a motion to dismiss on it. Um, defendants amended notice of special motion to strikes complaint. So I'm not seeing it there, but it might be in the federal case. Let me take a look in that because there were two cases pending. Uh, why is Pacer mad at me? Oh, because I have my VPN on. Hold on. I got to turn off the VPN. And then, and then I'm going to answer some more questions. We're all just doing this together because, because we're still live. Cause why not? Let's see. You're welcome. Uh, question Amber, what does required mean? This was just posted 20 minutes ago. Heard expected to file motion to toss Johnny Depp 50 million case required move expected to fail. Oh, um, this is a great question. We will do that real quick. So let me just, So White Widow, what you're talking about is a motion to dismiss that's going to be brought at the close of Johnny Depp's case. It's not, I mean, it's basically required to avoid a suit for malpractice. So it's not required, but it is standard practice that at the end of evidence, you make a motion to dismiss. So at the end of evidence, when Johnny Depp's attorneys say, uh, we have no further witnesses, we rest, then they will make a motion to dismiss, Your Honor, a motion to dismiss, you know, lack of sufficient evidence, and the judge will go, no, there is sufficient evidence to determine that she had um, that she had uh, defamed him. There's enough for it to go forward to the jury. So that's why that's there, because they're going to say there's enough for the jury to hear it. So with that, um, it's a required motion. I talked about that a bit this morning, but we'll see it. So that's what it is. That's all. Um, Amber's lawyer's don't want to object to their own question again. That's why they're cutting them off. I mean, that's possible. That's very possible. Could the court award Johnny more than the fifth million? I think he said um, 50 million or more. So yes, it's possible. I think questions. What are the consequences if the jury breaks the rules? Ooh, it depends on how they break the rules and when, but it can be, um, it can be a new trial. So that can be, so we'll see. Um, let me look real quick at, I'm just looking at Pacer real quick because now I, I desperately need, <laughs> I desperately need an answer about Triller. Is Triller being all Trillery? Because I wouldn't be surprised if Triller is all Trillery. So that's what I'm pulling up. For all of you that are like, but we're talking about Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. Yes, but I'm ADHD and I just got distracted. So um, let's see. I only see in the federal case, um, that the motion to dismiss was taken under advisement. That doesn't mean they couldn't have gotten a ruling today in the case and it's just not available yet. So I will go take a look at that coverage and, and talk about it. So we talked about what would happen with a, with the jurors. Um, so why counter sue a hundred million? Why that figure? I think they just doubled it as a fuck you. That's my opinion. I don't think she can prove a hundred million in damages. I don't. I think it was like, fine, if you're suing me for 50 million, I'm suing you for a hundred million. What do numbers even mean anymore? That's why. So, all right. And with that, um, I am going to bounce. It is 445. We have been live for almost eight hours. Tomorrow, I'm going to break the stream in the middle because it was much easier to not uh, lag after lunch when I broke up the stream at lunchtime. So I'll be doing that again tomorrow. Um, Paige said also a Taurus, May 18th. I listened to you during my 10 hour days as a mechanic. Thank you, Paige. Um, everyone in the shops stops by my toolbox and laughs and asks for update. I absolutely love that. Tell, tell everyone in the shop. Hello. Random question. Just saw Britney Spears. fiance is allegedly wanting more money in a prenup. Is that something someone can really request? Yes. They can request anything they want in a prenup when they're negotiating it. It's all the things you can negotiate anything in a prenup. Um, as long as both parties agree, you can negotiate anything. So, yes, you can. Question, will Amber Heard's counter lawsuit have a different trial date? No, it's it's going to trial here. Also, am I the only one who wants Amber Heard out of Aquaman because she's just so bad at portraying Mira? I mean, I'm sure there's someone there. I'm sure there's some that agree with you for sure. So, let's see. Um, what's the favorite case you've covered? Hands down, Colin and Cuthbert, the Caterpillar Cakes. I love the caterpillar cakes. It's fun. It's light. There are other, but I love the caterpillar cakes. I love the caterpillar cakes. 
Um, we talked about it. We talked, Angela, Nicole, we talked about the makeup. I promise we talked about the makeup. We talked about the makeup, but hopefully they didn't spell it that way. Amber heard makeup palette. Did they really spell it like mate? M-A-K-E dash up. I will, I will pull that up before we go live tomorrow for sure. All right. With that, I will be live tomorrow at 8.50-ish. 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 And we will be starting back. Court will start at 9 a.m. Central. We will be finishing this video deposition. Is this going to be the last witness? Who's going to be the first witness up for Amber Heard? How fast will the court deny the motion to dismiss? Within seconds, I imagine. And that's, uh, that's what, that's what's happening tomorrow. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being a lawn nerds. A huge thank you to the mods. What an incredible day with an end with some boring testimony. But with that, I'm going to stay hydrated by my business and definitely go get something to eat. Wait, which ones? All of those are empty. <laughs> it's so good to see you. I will see all of you tomorrow. For those of you that want to stay up to date, please join the text crew at textemily.com uh, for North American residents because the laws can be very difficult elsewhere. And I will see all of you soon. Thank you. We ride tomorrow morning, same time, same bat channel, and I will see you then. It's going to be another full day of testimony, no doubt. Bye. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D. Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube.